All right, everybody, we are live. It's amazing. It is absolutely amazing. We're back doing a live brew day. Can't believe it. <laughs> you guys give me a thumbs up. Let me know if uh, all the audio and video and everything is good. Um, I tested stuff, but I, I think uh, just want to make sure everything is good. So just let me know, please. <laughs> Woot. Yeah, Christian Barreau, happy Saturday. Awesome. Uh, yeah, thanks, Stefan. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. So video's good, all that stuff. I'll show you guys kind of what I got set up. I don't have quite as an elaborate a setup as I've had in the past, but uh, got some cameras set up and stuff. So as you can see, we got the control panel camera down there in the corner. And then I've also got the, let me take a look here and see. What am I looking for? Okay, there we go. Yep, so I've got the brew system camera <clears throat> over here. So we can see the mash tun, the hot liquor tank, all that stuff. Is it working? I wonder. Doesn't seem like it's working for some reason. Let me uh, let me check on this. Do, 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 do. Let me try activating it again here. There we are. I think we're good now. I think that's good. There we are. Ooh raw. Let me. I got to do a little bit of. Uh, adjustment to the video here because it's kind of weird as far as uh, the color the white balance I got a mixture of like daylight uh, lights in the in the brewery here and then I've also got like more warm lights in the basement so the mixture of the two of them kind of gets a little funny sometimes but uh, hey Paskey what's happening Yep, so I got that, and then, uh, like I said, I got the the uh, the control panel camera. Whoop, there it is. All right, cool. Greetings from North. Hey, what's up, Thomas? Hop Rod Garage in the house. Brian Harkin. Hey, Brian, good to see you back again. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Brewing an American Light Lager? Cool. Three Vessel Brew Day. Yeah, I, was just, I mean, uh, you know, this is a system I've had for a long time. I know everybody's kind of into the new... Uh, let me switch this back over to the other camera here. Everybody's... Uh, into the new single vessel brewing systems and all that stuff but i, I just kind of by how many people watching everything I, I think a lot of people like to see the the three vessel brewing system quite honestly i don't know give me a, give me a show of hands for people that like to see the three vessel brew days I, I just think it's there's more to watch in my opinion so you know it's one of those things where it's a little bit more fun um than just a single vessel brewing system there's more to see more uh <laughs> more things to F up. <laughs> so, you know, I, uh, I did a live stream with my Patreons the other night and, uh, thanks to huge thanks to all the Patreons that are, that are supporting us. So we really appreciate that. But, um, I did a live stream with my Patreons the other night and I said that a successful brew day today would be not dumping more than a gallon of wort on the floor. So <laughs> I, maybe the bar is set really low, but, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, yeah, Stephen. The the the, uh, the the fun part about it is watching, and you don't have to clean all the vessels and all that stuff. That's the only that would probably be the only drawback I would say to like a three vessel system is just all the cleaning and everything that has to take place. But you know, it's it's a it's a lot of fun to brew on it. I mean, I really feel like when I'm when I brew on this system, I feel more like a an actual brewery. So it's just it's one of those things where it's kind of fun that way. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, exactly. More chance for a disaster. I said hi. hi. I got your microphone and everything when you're ready, but oh, you're fine. Hi, going on a beer and pizza run. Yeah, she's <laughs> time got away from me this morning. Love you. Love you. Time got away from me this morning and I was going to go get, uh, get some, some pizza and some beer and all that stuff. Um, we do have, uh, we do have, um, uh, some stuff on tap, but I just wanted something a little bit lighter than that, like an IPA or something like that. So you know, so she's going to go get that and then also going to do, going to do the, get the pizza. So we always like to have pizza on the brew day, which is yes. Pepperoni is, is what it will be. I almost guarantee you. I didn't tell her, but she knows. So <laughs> it'll be awesome. Now, one of the things that I'm actually doing that you will notice when I get started with everything is I heat up all of my strike water in my boil kettle. Um, I just, I like doing it that way. And I generally heat it somewhere between 
depending on the batch size, somewhere between like 175 and 180 degrees. And I know that sounds a little bit high for mashing in, but what I've found over the years of using the system, if I heat it up to about 175, 180, like today I'm heating up to 175 because of the amount of water. So, I mean, there's going to be a little bit more of a, a, a um, thermal effect of the water. So when I transfer it over to a cold mash tun, the temperature drops. And then when I add the grain in, and usually when I, when I transfer it over to the mash tun, the temperature winds up equalizing because it's a cold vessel. It winds up dropping down to right about mash temperature or even just slightly below, which is no problem at all because, you know, with a Herm system, it's, you know, I, I can bring it right back up to temp. The other thing that I do is I actually pre-fill some cold water into my hot liquor tank. And I do that because when the water from the, the boil kettle comes over at 175 or whatever degrees, it needs to cool down to my mash temperature over here. So that was one of the things that I kind of didn't like when I first started using it. When I would heat up to mash in temperature and had the, hot, the water in the hot liquor tank hot enough to get it to the strike temperature, then I had to wait for the, the hot liquor tank to cool down or add water to it or whatever. And so, you know, it's one of those things where I've kind of devised a system where heating the water up in the boil kettle, like the total volume of water for the entire brew day, and then transferring first into my mash tun, and then secondly, transferring into the hot liquor tank. Now, the, the recipe, the way that the recipe turned out, um, with as much grain and as much water and everything there is, my sparge is actually pretty low. It's only about two and a half gallons. Morning brewing bed. It's only about two and a half gallons, which will be fine. But I mean, the let me switch over to the to the uh, mash camera here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Maybe you can see the herms. The coil is quite a ways up in the kettle. And just in case there's people that haven't watched the channel before or watched the brew day, this is a 20 gallon system. So all all the vessels are 20 gallons. Um, we're doing a 10 gallon batch, but I mean, like right now there's, I put like almost five and a half gallons of cold water in there and it literally is just barely touching the bottom of the Herms coil. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I'll put more water in there and then, you know, that, that differential will help cool it down whenever I transfer it over. So that's kind of what we're doing. Um, as far as the brew day, what we're brewing, we're brewing a, it's kind of a dragon's milk clone uh, that Larry... Larry did the recipe out of the BYO magazine, and then he made some changes to it. So I'm brewing the second iteration of uh, Beer and Barbecue Larry. I'm brewing the second iteration of his, his uh, stout recipe. Morning, Leo. Good to see you, buddy. Um, there's probably some subtle changes to it just because I couldn't find all of the grains and everything that he had in his recipe. But, you know, by and large, I think it'll be about the same. Hey, Shane, how's it going, buddy? So, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things where I think it'll have some subtle differences, but it should be pretty close. And then, you know, I'll, uh, I'll can, cause Larry sent me a can of the beer that he brewed. So I'll in turn send him a can of the beer that I'm going to brew. I don't know if he'll have any left, but, uh, maybe he can kind of compare and contrast to see how close to the recipe I am. I gotta remember to switch cameras back on here. All right, let's see. I'm brewing an old, in an old spa room, going to 15 gallon kettles. Appreciate the shower because yeah, oh, absolutely, yeah. No, that that's true for sure. Uh, started doing the boil kettle strike water in the past four or five batches as well. Yeah, it is it is a lot easier to do. I mean, it's it's one of those things where it's it's kind of a, um, you know. I, it's one of those things where it's a lot easier to be able to dough in and then have your hot liquor tank at the right temperature. Cause you know, I mean, it, I've usually let, let the grains rest for 10 minutes or so before I start doing the circulation anyway. So that gives me enough time. If for some reason, you know, I get the water transferred into the hot liquor tank and it's, you know, you know, and it's, it's too low, then I can flip on the switch and heat it up in, in no time pretty much. So my man, what's going on, beer koi? <laughs> All right, awesome. Larry says he's holding a, a uh, holding a can just to uh, to compare it to mine. So that'll be awesome. Um, no, those are actually the elements are the uh, the boil coils from Blickman, and uh, so I got the boil coil in both of the both the hot liquor tank and the the boil kettle. So 
Um, I don't know if you can, well, I'll have to switch cameras again here. Let me see here. I don't know if you can see down in there or not, but there's a boil coil at the bottom. If you can see it, I think you can. Yeah, looks like it. So it's it's heating up pretty good. I do like the boil coils. They're they're pretty they're pretty uh, efficient and really low wattage density. I've never had any issues with doing any kind of you know scorching or anything like that. I did I did one time turn on the element and wound up turning one pretty cherry red but nothing happened so <laughs> hey thanks Noam. i appreciate it man uh you know this is one of the one of the many systems that that i have but i still i really still enjoy brewing on this a lot just because it's 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 a lot of fun i mean it's this is really what got me into electric brewing i saw the the website uh, electricbrewery.com and then you know i i set about doing that i mean I, the first thing i did was created like a I went with a rim system initially, and then I did it wrong. It was one of those things where I didn't really know exactly what I was doing. I had a really long rims tube, and I had a, a uh, short element, and the, the sensor was really far away. So by the time the element was cooking the wart down at this end, the, the temperature probe didn't read that, and so it wasn't shutting the element off and stuff. And I wound up just about throwing it after scorching a couple of batches. And I just was like, you know, I'm, I'm done with this. I sold it to somebody or whatever. I know now what the problem was. I mean, if I'd had a longer element that was closer to the, to the uh, sensor, it would have been better, but that pushed me even farther with, uh, with doing the, the Herm system. So started out with a couple of different kettles. I, I mean, I, I went with the cheap, they don't even sell them anymore. They were like, I think they were King cooker ch uh, kettles on Amazon. They were 15 gallon kettles and I think, <laughs> I think they were $85 for a 15 gallon kettle. But, uh, hey, Noel, thanks buddy. They were like, uh, they were like 15 or, uh, they were like 85 bucks for a 15 gallon kettle. But let me tell you, they were paper thin stainless steel. I mean, it was, it was so thin. I could take the, I could take the, out the, um, ball valve and the nozzle everything. it's just i mean i could wiggle it around so you know terribly so you know it was one of those things where whenever i whenever i moved here then i'm like you know what i want to i want to get like a an all blickman system so i i uh, contacted them and uh wound up buying the rest of the kettles this is my original mash ton that i had from back then um still the same one been been holding strong no problems with it at all with the amount of grain we're going to do today, I generally don't have any trouble with the stuck spars or anything, but this is, I think it's almost like 50 pounds of grain, really close to that. It, it's, it's almost 50 pounds, like 40 something pounds of grain. So I'm going to use some rice holes in it today just because I, you know, it can get, you can get a stuck mash when you got that much weight of grain pressing down on the, on the false bottom and stuff. So ask Larry about brewing this on his uh, 15 gallon brew easy systems. <laughs> and my, my brew father software said that uh, I needed like 18 gallons capacity to do the mash um, in this. So, uh, you know, the, the water volumes are probably a little bit higher than what he had in his recipe. I just plugged his recipe into brew father and let it do all the conversions and stuff. So I could probably, I could, I may actually cut back a little bit on the, the amount of sparge water that they say put a little bit more water in there or just hold the water in the, the boil kettle until I get it mashed in and see how thick it is. And then I can always, I can always add some water to it if I need to. So yeah, thanks John. Appreciate it. Uh, thought of turning your electric brewery system into a, uh, C CPBI. Um, not really. I mean, I, I honestly, I like, I'm, I guess I'm old school. I like all the switches and the lights and all that stuff. I mean, I've had the opportunity to, to do a bunch of different things. I mean, there's, there's one um, software system called Brew Control, which is really, really high end. I mean, you can, I think you can have, you can run your entire like brewery, you could run your fermenters, you could run your heating, you could run keezers. I mean, you, there, there's like 30, I think you could put 30 sensors in this system. And it's really, it has a really nice web interface and all that stuff. Not a lot of people know about it. It's, it's developed by a guy out of Florida um, that I've known for a long time. And he actually sent me one of the controllers. I just, I like, I like the switches. I like the lights. At least I, it just, I don't know. It's just, just me. I guess I like that tactile, you know, just like you could put, and I know, you know, Thomas, I know, uh, Hop Rod Garage, he's got 
all kinds of automation, which is cool. I mean, I, I like seeing it and it's, and it's awesome, but I just, I like turning the valves. I like, you know, switching the hoses, all that stuff. Cause you could, you could essentially effectively automate the entire thing. I mean, I could put, you know, hard plumb, everything, put three-way valves in a bunch of places with solenoid, you know, with, with, uh, motorized valves and all that stuff. And I could basically, you know, push a button and then let it go. There is a guy on YouTube actually that, um, that has a system like, I'm trying to think of what the name of the, the channel is, but he does uh, low, low dissolved oxygen brewing. <laughs> We're, I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole, but so he, he has a system that's like all closed and CO2 purged and just, I mean, it's, it's, it's a feat of engineering to see, but I, you know, I, I think for me, it would take the fun out of brewing doing something like that. Cause I mean, everything is, I mean, he's got the, the grain mill it's enclosed and purged. And I mean, it's, it's all kinds of stuff. So, uh, GPIO pins are on pie, a lot of room. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm sure that Raspberry Pi could handle it, you know, handle a bunch of stuff. Um, this software, that the software I was talking about and the system I was talking about, it's actually specifically designed as he's got, he had boards made up with all the different headers on them and all that kind of stuff. So, um, I, I had, um, I had the, the controllers that I had on there before were ones from Auber Instruments. And I kept having problems with them. I, I, I had one, I, I, I bought a DSPR, was it DSPR 200 or 300? I'm trying to think of I'm, all these numbers in my head. There's two different models. There's like a DSPR 200 and a 300 or 100, 300 or something like that. Anyways, I bought the, the, the less capable DSPR because it was just, I put it in for the boil kettle because it's got a dial on it where you can just adjust your boil by doing that. Um, and it went bad. It went bad, like right outside of the, the, um, the warranty period. And I contacted them up and they're like, you know, they're like, no, sorry. And so I'm like, really? So I ordered another one. It went bad. And so then I'm, then I'm like, you know what? Then I contacted Ryan over at, um, uh, electric, uh, yeah. Electric brewing supply. I think it is. Yeah. Elect electric brewing supply. And I just replaced all of them with, uh, with those controllers and they work very well. I mean, you know, they're, they're the same controller that, uh, Spike uses in the, um, in the solo system, they're the same same ones as that. Um, they work fine to me. I, I have no I have no problem with them at all. I mean, they they work really well. So, let's see here. Have I thought about an electric grain stirrer? Um, you know, Stefan, it's one of those things that you could, um, you know, do that. But I don't I don't know that all the effort and the trouble and the extra cleanup and all that stuff. I mean, if if you got an extra five, even 10% of, you know, efficiency gain. Is that enough to justify it? I don't know. I mean, I, I saw Brew Your Own Magazine had one that they did a while back. They did an article on it, but I don't know if, I don't know if it's really worth it, to be honest with you. Cause I mean, it'd be a lot of, you'd have to do a lot of stuff and, you know, another more power, all that kind of stuff. But I mean, you could do it. I, I don't, I probably wouldn't be that hard, but it's one of those things. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Modern brew house. Yeah. Yep. Brian Rabe. Yeah, that's him. Yep. Absolutely. Hey, thanks. Uh, Pruk. I think it's Pruk. 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 I don't know how to pronounce that. Hopefully I'm not butchering your name. Uh, Maple Valley Malt and Hops Homebrew Club representing. Awesome. Thanks Patrick for stopping by. Awesome. <laughs> thanks man. It's uh, it's been a long journey. Um, you know, it's one of those things where when we bought this house, I had the brewery built in the other place and this was kind of a chance to reset and redesign and all that stuff. There's only a couple things that I would probably do a little bit differently that somebody suggested, and I'm probably still going to do it. Um, because I've got the, I've got a lift cause I'm, we're below grade and, and the, we have a septic system and all that stuff. The, I have to have a lift pump for the sink and then, you know, the brewer, the uh, bar sink and all that stuff I have to have a lift pump. So what the suggestion from this person was, I don't remember who suggested it, but it was a great idea is that for chilling, there's not really any reason to be working that pump all the time. Cause you know, when you're chilling, you're putting a lot of water through it. What he suggested was that take a, a pipe and actually hard pipe into the outlet to the, to the uh, sump pump in the, in the basement here so that it would go out in the yard, which makes, makes a lot of, uh, makes a lot of sense to me. And then, you know, I could also put a, put the, I could drop the, the outlet for that right here next to the boil kettle. And then 
whenever I'm chilling down, I just, you know, run the water from over there and then, or even I could even put two lines down and have it just a dedicated line there for doing the chilling and everything. So, um, what are your favorite simple and complex brews you'll make? Um, probably, probably some of the most complex ones are like IPAs and stuff like that, where, you know, you're doing first ward hop and, you know, boil additions and whirlpool and then doing a bunch of dry hopping and all that kind of stuff. Um, some of the, some of the simplest ones that, that I like to do are some of the wheat beers and stuff like that. You know, usually it's like just mash in, do your, do your mash, transfer to the boil kettle. You got maybe one hop addition or two hop additions and you know, it, it's something you can break out really, you can bust it out really quick and easy. I mean, I've brewed, I know I've brewed hundreds of gallons of wheat beer and then put, you know, blueberry flavoring or whatever into it. I mean, I, I brewed, I brewed a lot of wheat beer, so, <laughs> but, uh, you know, complex, uh, Stefan is, it's okay. I mean, there's, you know, there's some benefit to it. I mean, I've done a lot of different stuff where, you know, doing the whirlpooling and the dry hopping and all that stuff. It's, it is very, it, you can, you can set yourself up for some disappointment though. Because if you do all that stuff and you do the, you know, pressure transfers and all this kind of stuff and you get some oxidation or something like that and it, and it winds up tasting like crap, it's very disappointing. So, I mean, you kind of you kind of leave yourself open for a little bit of disappointment. But I mean, it's, you know, it's 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 when you when you hit it really when you hit a good one and it's and it's awesome tasting and you're, you're just loving it. I mean, it's, it's worth all the it's worth all the risk when you get that reward. Uh, got some things that will be released very soon. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, it's uh, be good to see you back, Thomas. Uh, stainless steel envy. <laughs> Thanks, Richard Brown. Uh, let's see. Have I tried Theola? No, that is actually one of the things that I need to try. Um, I've seen some stuff on that recently online, and uh, I need to I need to do some research because, quite honestly, I'm I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure what it is and how it works and all that stuff. I'll be honest with you. You know, it's like I I've been been away from it for a while and. When I came back, I've seen several videos from different YouTubers and, and seen them talking about the theolized yeast or whatever. I, I thought it was hops, but I guess, is it yeast? Can somebody kind of give me a short explanation of it? Because like I said, I, I'm honestly, I don't know, you know. And that's one of the things, if I, if I don't know something, I'm just going to tell you I don't know it. So <laughs> I, I'm, there's, no, there's no shame in my game when it comes to brewing stuff. I don't know everything about it at all. I'll tell you what I know, and that's about it. So, uh, Yeah. Omega yeast, okay, all right. Now, what is the, what's the purpose of it? Because theols are like something to do with hops. Okay, did you measure your sparge water with the digital? Yes, I did actually. Um, volume controller. I added the volume controller you have and pre-measure sparge water, including dead space. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's so nice because I I just dialed up seventeen and a half gallons. Boom! I walked away and did something else. Came back. I know it's a little bit risky, but you know, I walked away and did that, and then I put. I've got a, my reservoir is like, I think it's about 20, 23 or 24 gallons, something like that. I don't know how full it is from time. You know, it was full today because obviously it, it makes up the water after I get done brewing. But um, I put the 17 and a half gallons in there and then I turn around and put three gallons in here and I'm going to need, I'm going to need a little bit more probably to get the Hermes coil covered, but we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, hot precursor boost aroma, aroma and some flavor. Okay, I got you. I think it's a good idea to have some plain PIDs, buttons, and lights. Brian, yep, be able to brew beer this way. Just fiddle around with coating. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and and that's a that's a perfect example, Thomas. You know, where maybe have if you have the luxury like you do of being you know involved in programming and all that kind of stuff, where you can have a like a test toy system over here that you can do automation with, but then you have like just you know bare bones flip a switch, turn things on, do all that kind of stuff. I mean, I think that's, that's like the best of both worlds if somebody has that, you know, so kind of, kind of the same for me where if, um, if I, you know, I, I have multiple brewing systems, so I can brew on this, I can brew on a single vessel system. I've got a brew easy, so I can do a two vessel system. So, <clears throat> um, so it's, it's in San Diego. Well, I'm, I would like to try, um, I'd like to try to do that. Uh, we missed it. We, we were going to go to San Diego, uh, when it was going to be there was it, I don't know, I, you know, with all the, the stuff that's gone on, I, I feel like I've lost a couple of years of memory. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> was it 2020? Was it 2019? Was it, tw and, you know, 21, 20, you know, 21, 22 are pretty much just like write, write them off. There's, you know, nothing, nothing really all that great happened then. So, um, <clears throat> let's see. 
Wasn't the Riptide 199? It looks like inflation has some effect on brewing equipment pricing. Uh, I just got to use Blickman brew stand for 15 gallon rig. Cool. Um, I don't. I know it was um, 199 at, uh, for a while there. I don't. I haven't looked at it recently. Um, <clears throat> yeah, right, Thomas. It was just like poof, just gone. You know what I mean? It's like, wow. Um, the yeast supposed to un. Okay, the yeast is supposed to unbind theols. Works great with adding phantasm powder or mash hopping. Now, I mean, now see, you know, I, I don't, I don't know which one of which one of you are commenting from Exit Twelve, but you guys are like getting into some Harry Potter wand stuff with me now. You know? <laughs> I'm gonna have to do some more research. <laughs> I'm gonna add the phantasm powder and alakazam and you know some of that stuff. So I'll have to, I'll have to do some more research on it. Um, I'll be at Home Fruit Con. Oh yeah, Jared, it's, it's, it's such a fun time. It is such a fun time. Um, you will, you will not regret it and you'll want to go back every single time. I guarantee you, uh, Levio yeah. <laughs> Leviosa, Patronum, <laughs> dry hop them. <laughs> All right. So we're, we're inching up to our, uh, temperature here, 175. I am kind of waiting on Kelly to get back so that I can, uh, so she can help me. I, I'm still, I'm, I'm pretty good with my, I mean, I got a nice full range of motion and all that stuff with my shoulder, but um, as far as lifting stuff goes, I'm still trying to take it easy with that. So I can probably, yeah, she'll be home pretty soon probably. So I can probably start getting some transferring going on and uh, do that. So let me, uh, I'm gonna turn this off for right now. And let's get some transfer done here. And switch the hoses around. Nope. Now this is fun. Trying to, I didn't have the, the pot turned the right way. Let me see. Uh, twist this thing a little bit. <laughs> okay. There we go. Awesome. Okay. A little bit of a tight squeeze here. Now, one of the other things I like to do too, um, with regard to filling the mash tun, is I'll actually run the hot water that's in the the uh, boil kettle. I'll run it through the Herms coil on the way to the mash tun. So that way, the Herms coil is preheated. Everything's it's full. Everything's ready to go. So whenever I get the total volume in here that I need then uh, you know i'm not it's not dropping whenever i open up the herms coil so that's one of the other things that i do as well i forgot to say that earlier uh have to stick to my trade for trade shows yeah i mean it'll be it'll be it'll be awesome if you can make it for sure amazing setup cool thanks man appreciate it uh let's see what i miss okay looks like everything <laughs> No, no worries, man. Which one of you from Exit 12 is commenting, by the way, so I, so I know who's doing what. All right, so I got both of them open there. I'm gonna, I've got the... Uh, let's see, how do I want to do this here? Let me, I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera so you guys can see. Yeah, thanks, Francisco. I'm, I'm happy to be feeling better myself, for sure. All right, let's see here. Okay, here we go. Now, I think what I might do is, because this is, this will want to, this will want to start sputtering and spraying everywhere and everything when I go to fill this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, this sparge arm on, but I'm going to put it on upside down so it holds it open rather than closed. So I'll do that. That way it'll go through the tubing and not be sputtering and spraying everywhere. Because this this right here will make a hell of a mess if you try to fill it up without this ball on there or without it open. It just wants to sit there and chatter and go back and forth. All right, let's see. Here goes nothing. All right, there we go. Cool. Everything's looking good so far. Let's see if I got my pumps hooked up properly.
I think I got him hooked up backwards, but not a big deal. I can always switch him around. Um, I like to, if I can, uh, BD Calabrese. I cer certainly like to. Uh, time to match. Yeah, my kid. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Kelly loves to. Uh, Brandon, okay, cool, awesome. Yeah, I saw you guys got the, the uh, 65 liter uh, Brazilla. That's a, that's a nice Berg system. It really is. I, I, definitely, I definitely had some good brew days with that system for sure. Um, you, want, you guys want to leave it on this or you want to go back to the other camera? What do you want to do? I'm waiting on her to bring back some Epsom salts too. Okay, stay here. Okay, cool. <clears throat> I'm waiting on her to bring some brewing salts back too for uh, for the brew day. I ran out of Epsom salt. I actually use it. We had a groundhog problem, and Epsom, they don't like Epsom salt, so I wound up dumping all my <laughs> all my Epsom salt from her brewing in the, out in the yard. Yeah, Paul, good to be back for sure. For sure, for sure. I can get the stuff that I have and start weighing that out. Let's do that. Uh, gotta figure out what my additions are. Actually, you know what? <clears throat> Got Brewfather on my phone. Just open it up there. So I can balance it and have it fall off. That'll be fun. How do I do my multi-camera? Um, I use uh, OBS for my multi-camera feeds. Um, it works really well. You can you can have basically as many as many inputs as your computer will handle. Um, it'll it'll take. Uh, I've had more cameras than this hooked up, but so I've got. I'll just kind of explain to you real quick what I've got here. So this camera right here is uh, a Logitech C920. This camera right here is uh, an old cell phone that's running a program called uh, IP cam so it's basically like a, a security camera software but it runs on a phone so it's, it's kind of one of those things where it's uh, it works well I mean I, you know it's just and it broadcasts to an IP address so it's easy to just plug into the you just use a like a browser source like as if you were going to be displaying a web web page hopefully I'm not getting too nerdy for you guys on <laughs> <laughs> on the technology side of it, maybe you want to know. Uh, need another, let's see. OBS, yeah, those pumps are pretty. Oh, yeah, the riptides are awesome as far as that go. Uh, good to see you. Yeah, absolutely. No, appreciate, appreciate. Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need some new content to watch. You're like, Dad, why do you keep watching those videos over and over again? I can't even watch my cartoons that many times. <laughs> All right, let's see here. What's the What's the what? My God, my, my vision is going bad. Okay, 1.79 calcium chloride. Uh, we're in ounces here. Let's go grams. I guess I need a vessel to put them in, don't I? All right, let's see if this throws the weight off. Nope, it's still balanced. Let's tear it. Come on, Kelly, hurry up with the pizza. I'm hungry. Okay, that's at 1.71, 1 so we'll do. Oop, too much. It's a little tiny bit, I'll tell you what. Start over. A couple 
grains in there. Of course. That's the way it always goes. Try to hit the measurement just right and nothing happens. Story of my life. All right. I'm done messing with it. <laughs> All right, let's see here. We're at uh, 11 gallons, almost 11 gallons. So I think it was, let me see what the strike was, 14 gallons, I think it was. Let's see here. Yeah, 14.78 gallons of mash water. Maybe I'll stop at like 13 or something like that just to see. I mean, like I said, we can always put it back in there. Yeah, see, if you look the at the, the temperature here, it's 169 coming in. So going through the pump and all that stuff is, has dropped it down. Now that's what's actually going through the sensor on the inlet to the mash tun. But if you, if we have, if we take a temperature reading, once we start recirculating, it'll, it'll drop. I'm sure. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So then gypsum is 3.59. Yeah. That seemed like a stout water profile, heavy on the gypsum. There we go. Oh, a little bit more. I'm kind of precise on some of this stuff sometimes. Of course, now there. Yeah, now it decides to read 3.8. So, oh well, it's good. And no lactic acid because I think our pH is like 5.4, so we should be good good on that part of it. <coughs> All right, let's see here. Uh. Well, the, the thing about the Blickman sight glasses is that they're basically, they're based off of like an empty kettle with no boil coil or anything like that in it. So once you add a boil coil and stuff to it, then you get, you start taking up space in the kettle and that can throw the number off a little bit. So I'm going to shut this stuff off real quick. And let's see here. Close my pump down. All righty. What happened? <laughs> was there, was there a, oh, you know, I don't, uh, well, I thought I had them on, but let me see. Let me check and see here. I don't know if I can do that. I thought I had it turned on. Let me check. Telling me to insert an ad. Let me see here. Activation on. Huh. I don't know why. Let me see here. I don't know what happened. Uh, I wonder if it's in my actual, in my channel settings or something that happened. Give me a second here. I'll see if I can figure it out. Um, I usually just buy like a big bulk online um, of... Uh, stuff by the pound. I mean, if you buy it by the pound, it's so much, so much better um, as far as pricing goes. <laughs> Nightbot told you off. What did, what did, uh, what did it, what did it tell you? That's kind of funny. Okay. All right. Here's that. Yeah. For some reason, I get um, YouTube changed some stuff, and um, for some reason, 
it turned off all the super chats and everything. So I don't know. Let me refresh the. I don't know if it's retroactive where it'll do it or not, but let me see if it. Uh, let's see what happens here. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. Well, that's a bummer. Huh. I don't see anything for doing a super chat. Let's see here. Hmm. I don't know. Well, let me go back to my streaming here and see what it says. Yeah, I don't see anything. Darn. Let me, uh, let me do this real quick. Portly gentleman? Hey, what's up, man? Venmo. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yes, I'm using the RO water that I ca that I capture in my um, in my other um, in my other uh, room. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, um, this is kind of a, I'll pin the message up there. So if you want to, if you want to do like a super chat that um, PayPal doesn't get a part of, because they, they take like 60% of our super chats. Um, if you want to do anything, you can do it. I pinned a comment in the, in the uh, comment section. And it takes you to like a tip page or whatever. So if you want to do that, you can do that. Um, yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, I, you know, I forgot to tell her that too. <laughs> oh man, you're right. I didn't think about that. I mean, it's not the end. It's not a ton of. Um, it's not a ton of Epsom salt for the recipe anyway. So I mean, it's not like it's not like it's going to ruin the whole beer or anything like that. It just it does add some nutrients that are that the yeast like and stuff like that. I mean, it's not it's not 100% necessary for conversion as far as the the uh, grains go and all that stuff so that's not a huge ordeal if she gets the wrong one and it's not and i don't use it all right let's see here i think now would be a good time to fire up the old blickman grain mill i got all this grain here let me let me switch camera so you guys can see what's going on Here we go. Okay. All right. Let me get all these grains separated out here because I think, Larry, what what all grains did you put in the end? Because I've got like some, just some roasted grain, like some not totally dark grains like Munich malt and some of the other ones like that, that uh, are not real dark. But did you just put like the midnight wheat and stuff? I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I don't remember exactly what you had because like there's some caramel sixty and all that stuff. Uh, let's see here. White oats. There's the midnight wheat malt. The 120. I think all that stuff would normally you'd normally put in there, right? Wouldn't you? Or don't you? Just the roasted malt, okay. So yeah, so like uh, the midnight wheat. I don't see. I got midnight wheat and the caramel 120. Was there another one? Because I thought I matched everything up. I didn't. This came so late last night, I didn't have a chance to check it all out. Yeah, the midnight wheat looks like the only one. Unless you did you leave, did you leave did you do the one twenty? Yeah, midnight. Okay, midnight wheat. Okay, chocolate malt. Did I miss the chocolate malt? Hmm. Let me see. Let me look at my recipe. Wouldn't be beyond me to screw it up. I have some chocolate malt though. So let me take a look here and see what we got. Yeah. Hmm. I guess I got shorted the chocolate malt. 
Good thing I have some. Ta-da! Oh, by the way, um, <laughs> not, not to not to like throw them under the bus here, but uh, I do want to thank Northern Brewer for providing uh, us with all the grain for today. So they, they did provide us with all the grain. Well, almost all the grain. <laughs> like I said, I'm not trying to throw them under the bus, but uh, almost all the grain. But I had some, so let's see what this is. Well, well actually, yeah, so that's... Hey, look at one and a half pounds, Larry. How about that? <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, let's see here. Uh, says your channel has been uh, doorman for so long with your surgery. Yeah, they probably. Yeah, they, they well, they they changed it. So I guess um, uh, we um, they changed it. They did the the super whatever you know the things the at the bottom of videos like the super comment or whatever. Like not a live stream, but it's like a little heart with a dollar sign on. I hadn't really paid a whole lot of attention if it was turned on or not, but uh, apparently the uh, when I went to the menu for Super Chats, it's like, you're eligible. I'm like, yeah, I was eligible before too, but apparently, apparently uh, that didn't, uh, they didn't, they didn't just automatically turn it on, so that was nice of them, but whatever, it's fine. I appreciate everybody's support, so, all right, so I'm going to, I'm going to dump, I'm just going to do this, like I got two bags of green and this one... This one's the base malt, so I'm going to, 16 pounds of this, so I'm going to, we'll do 16 pounds and then we'll do the other 16 pounds with a bunch of the adjuncts and everything in there, so we'll do that. And you guys over here, you may have heard how quiet the the Blickman mill is, but it's it's really, really quiet. Let's see here. It's on. <laughs> hey, elementary brewing. Awesome. Yeah, midnight weed and chocolate. Yeah, I, got, I found the chocolate malt, so I'll, I'll crush that stuff. I'll crush that separately. And then I'll do the other, the other stuff with, uh, with the other bag of grain. Trash can somewhere around here. All right. Yeah, hey, yeah, Jeremy, Bruce, thank you. Chris Vodica, good to see you, buddy. It's got a dust chute on the bottom, but I like to raise the bucket up so it's almost right on the bottom of the of the uh, the mill, and it keeps the dust way 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 down. So it's always good. They chews through some grain pretty quick. That's sure. That's for sure. So there's the first 16 pounds. Let's see. How many chemicals do you typically use? Yeah, Epsom salt. Yep. Yeah. I haven't used canning salt much. Uh, not really much table. Some baking soda, depending on the the type of uh, beer it is or whatever. But I haven't used a lot of it. Um, really, gypsum, Epsom salt, and your calcium chloride are the two that I use the most. And then. Obviously, if you need to adjust the pH, I use 88% lactic acid for that. It just it makes it it makes a much quicker change. I mean, there is phosphoric acid that's like I think it's like 10% or something like that. But you got to put so much of that in there to make a change. People say that the lactic acid makes you know can flavor the beer, give up the beer off flavors or whatever. But you know, it's it's uh, I haven't had any problems with it. I'll put it that way. And I've I've added quite a bit to some of them. Brian Decker was talking to someone about baking soda, and they think it's a little self-defeating. Yeah, I mean, it does, it does raise the pH if you need to. Like, I mean, if you're, do, if you're doing a dark beer and your water is of a certain content and you need to raise the pH, it will definitely do it. And uh, I will tell you, use it sparingly uh, in little doses to just, you know, make sure that you are that you got what you need because um, it, can, it can get out of hand in a, in a hurry, let me tell you. So, for sure. There's the... I don't know if you can see it or not, but it does a great job crushing. So, all 
All right, well, let me actually should pull this off to do my mash in here. I might get in trouble from Kelly mashing in without her, but I don't, it doesn't feel uh, bad to me at all. So let me switch the camera so you guys can get the mash in here. There we go. Yeah, Brew, Brew Father definitely has a nice uh, chemistry calculator on it. Let me crank on my fan here. Yeah. And then got, let's see. Oh, <laughs> I need to pull out my, uh, my stopper there. Oh. You ready to mash in? Oh, you are? Yeah. Uh, I got more grain to mill, though, so. Not a big deal. Oh, can you get me one? A lot of water, for sure. Of course, we're going to have a lot of grain in here, so <laughs> it does make sense. This 16 pounds is like nothing with the amount of water in here. I'll have to wind up getting the big mash paddle here pretty soon. So there's that. Let me get the other, the other one going here. Yeah, she ran back upstairs for a minute. <laughs> uh, too funny. All right, let's see here. Okay. Let me, um, I'm going to turn this real quick for you guys so you can see the, the mash ton here. I mean, the, the grain mill. Let me, uh, come on, where's my cursor at? Let me do this here. There we go. Let you guys see that real quick. Oh! Hole in the bag. That's not good. At least I didn't dump too much. First, first calamity of the day. Half ounce of grain on the floor. It's okay. Oh, thank you. Okay, give me just a second here. I don't need it just yet, but. What's that? I didn't, I, I can't hear you right now. I was just talking about how quiet it was. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Here's your We'll get it. We'll get it set up in a minute here.
Huh? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Okay. It's louder than I thought it was. Okay. Well, let's uh, mash in on this one. Let's see here. Okay. Let's uh, do the mashing on this. the mash paddle from the from up there okay Lots of grain. You want to take over with the mash paddle there? My spoon's about too small now. Oh, okay, you can. Go ahead. microphone on here in a minute too. <sighs> go ahead, you've got a good skirt. So we don't get a bunch of dough balls. Everybody hates a bad case with the dough balls. Yeah, it's about to, it's about to start smelling really good. You get all these caramel malts and everything in there. It's gonna be smelling good. Why? Oh, for all that, yeah. No, we'll uh. I can sweep it up too. Yeah, no kidding, Larry. <laughs> it can be useful, Brad, um, if you want to get a finer crush without decimating the uh, the holes on the the uh, rice. So, for sure. when you hit it in reverse while it's going forward. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put the oats in here. Yep. Yeah. My brewing assistant's doing a great job. Workout time. All right, Leo. Thanks, man. 
No, he said he's sitting the kids down for dinner or whatever. He said he'll be right back. I'm going to double check this recipe and make sure. Was there four pounds of oats in that recipe, Larry? Two pounds. Okay, that's interesting. They sent me four pounds, so good thing I didn't put all four pounds in, I guess. They must have they must have subbed that for chocolate malt, which I'm not sure how that happened, but hey, whatever. All right, let me. Uh, <laughs> And we'll put in rice holes. Put in probably three or four handfuls, I think, probably, especially with all the oats and everything in there. Yeah, my handfuls, yeah. That would be like two two normal people handfuls. <laughs> and we got more grain. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I will. I'll just keep stirring there. Where's my stunt double? Yeah, right. I can stir for a little bit if you want. Okay. Try not to break. She's a bit the thicker, boys. It's a big one. Okay. I can take over. No, I'm not. Oh, okay. Okay. Now I know. Where's my beer hat? <laughs> All right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, Kevin, she probably doesn't like it, huh? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Blackwood Brews. Kelly actually loves, she, she, whenever I'm brewing, if she's not helping me, she likes to come down here and uh, bring a spoon, like try some grain. <laughs> uh, for sure. Yep. No, she participates in, in, in all, all, all uh, aspects of the brewing. The, the brewing, the consumption. Design <laughs> quality assurance. <laughs> You're right. QA. I'm a lab deck. Yep. Exactly. I'm not even sure. I guess we're winging it today. I don't. I was going to see what the temperature of it was, but yeah. It might be kind of a, it might be a little bit of a protein rest at this point, but we'll bring the temperature up. No big deal. Mm. Yeah. Good. That's what we want. Let me turn this fan off. We want a mash that's going to treat us right. That's right. That's right. No, okay. you're not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, they can't see me sticking this in your Brian. back pocket. <laughs> My back pocket. <laughs> you have no front pocket, do you? Nope. Okay. All right. Well, booty pocket it is. I know. You go with what's on the rack. That's right. I don't have much of a choice these days. Well, I can attach it to your rack if you want. Stop it. All right. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> As long as I can't hear me. All right. Can you guys hear her now? Hello. Testing. One, two, three. The mash paddle girl is in. Say it again. In. The mash paddle girl is in. 
It looks like it's working. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here. <clears throat> it's been a while. <laughs> what? Francisco said the channel's taking a whole new turn. Oh, dear. <laughs> no, not with me. Whatever. Uh, okay. All right, let's get these milled. I think Nessie's swimming around in here. Yeah, no kidding. That's a mighty thick mash you got there. It smells great. It does. All right. Let me, um, I need to adjust the recipe so that it tells me to put the last stuff in. Let me see here. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see. Okay. How can I do this? We need a robot. Oh. Yeah. Somebody was at, somebody was saying something earlier about a, a, uh, AI. No, oh, no. a, a, um, a stir, like today. a mechanical stirring device. Right. I just thought of it in my head. So, yep. Okay. Let's see here. Let me go to the, uh, Okay, this is good. Brewing. Brewing. I am not cold anymore, that's for okay. sure. Let's see here. So we're gonna I'm gonna edit this to be forty five minutes for the mash. Okay. And then we'll know we have fifteen what, more minutes. What hops are you using? Whoops. Hang on. Later. Oh. Now nah, I'll just have to I'll just set a timer on my phone. Whoop, not five hundred minutes, sixty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> We don't need a light. Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> All right. This is good. Cheers. This is good. Brew gear, yeah, step bottom, false bottom. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Row, row, row my beer. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, get a, get a, uh, put a KitchenAid on the side of the brewery here. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fantabulous. I think we're good now. I do too. Yep, looks good to me. Amen. You've done an impeccable job. Thank Marvelous. you. Marvelous. I will put in for a raise for you. Thank you. <laughs> give you a raise at least a high five how much what is the percentage what is 10 percent of zero <laughs> uh, like, what? say what let me get all here and i still got the shaft <laughs> oh i can't feel my arm yeah exactly okay let's see here ow it's hot well, be careful. Come on. Oh. Uh, I get the bigger half of the keg, honey. That's what Beer Koi said. Oh, okay. All right. Well, hey, there's a, there's a trade-off. Oh, Brian Decker said, I think it would need a fairly stout motor. Yeah. See what I did there? <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> He gets the clever award. Yep. Whoop, whoop. It's all clever and everything. Okay, I'm ready for some beer. All right, so let's uh, let's transfer the rest oh, of the sorry. Okay. water. I'm not... No, you're fine. I just need to transfer the rest of the water into the. I worked up. A into the. Um, oh, let me change. Let me change cameras here. Okay. Actually, I don't need to this, uh, to show them what I'm going to do. So, mm -hmm. uh, I've got everything running through the Herms coil as I showed you guys earlier. Now I've got this really short little jumper hose here to go between the, the mash tun and the hot liquor tank or the Herms coil. Small batch brewing said, I can't feel my arms when I'm with you, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> See, I know I can, I can just run this hose over to you the so inlet. Many hose, Brian. I know. Got to knock it off. I don't know how, I don't know how you put up with that. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to put it over here and just let her rip. Let her rip. Oh, no kidding, Bear Koi. We still um, put it out though for whoever's interested out there in the wilderness. What? Oh, <laughs> he was talking about the spent grains put, there, babe. Putting out what? <clears throat> Stop that, please. All right, so I'm, just, I'm transferring through the Herms coil just over into the, the um, hot liquor tank out of the boil kettle. It has about three or four room. gallons of water in it. I got extra pepperoni for the pizza. Oh, cool. They didn't right. have much choice. At yeah, we have we have store. pepperoni up there too, in the oh, drawer. Well, I just couldn't so. take a chance. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm down. Can you have too much pepperoni? I don't think so. 
in my book. I don't think what so. Do you Can you do, put those two gallons of water in there? Yeah. In here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, first. Uh, I had some water for another thing that I was doing, and so I'll have to buy some more water. But I'm like, I don't know if my reservoir is going to have enough water because doing like 17 gallons and then having three or four gallons, and I'm like, holy crap. I'm going to run out of water in my reservoir, so I'm putting spring water over here in the in the hot liquor tank. I mean, it, it's only a small sparge anyway, so it's not like it's a big deal, but it should be all right. Now our, whoops, I need to heat this up to 154, I think. So. Go, 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 go. Do the all grain, how do you guys dry out the spent grains to use for other things? I, for me, I'll be honest with you, using spent grains for stuff is too much of a pain in the ass. I just don't do it. I just don't. I think it would be a good it's thing. It's okay, but I mean, it's like you got really the best. If you want to pull That's off some I spent grains do. to put in bread or yeah. make pizza with or whatever, Recycle. just put it in the freezer and freeze it so it doesn't get all rancid. And then what, when like you go um, to... A very tight seal bag. Yeah, I just mean, like a Ziploc bag is yeah. fine. Yeah, that's fine. And then um, we got about half of the mash tun, the hot liquor, yeah, the Herms coil covered. So I don't know. Maybe put another. Okay. Maybe put another couple gallons in there. <clears throat> I, you guys can see my. Uh, I gotta go turn on my water system here. <sighs> so what's everybody drinking? Put in like another three gallons here. There we go. Oh, it just kicked in, babe. It was already set up for three gallons. <coughs> so in case in case you're new to the channel or unfamiliar with the system that I have, I have a reverse osmosis system in the in the other room in in my other room over there. And um, I need another trash bag. Well. Let's see here. Let me get this back down where it should be. And go get another trash bag. Ugh, this one's full. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. I'll finish what I was saying in a second here. <laughs> Sorry, I got sidetracked. Oh, it went black. Come on. What am I doing? What am I doing? There we go. Okay. Sheesh. Yeah, now we're cooking with grease. Absolutely, we're cooking with grease. Yep. Uh, all right, there we go. So now the the um, hot liquor tank is at 90 degrees, which is probably a little bit lower than what I really wanted it to be, but it'll heat up pretty quick from 90 degrees. It shouldn't be too big of a deal. So put another three gallons of my RO water in the hot liquor tank just to get the the uh, Herms coil covered a little more. Trick to this over the sink faucet is making sure you turn it off every time so that when you, when you go to use it again. <laughs> uh, yeah, hey, greetings from Norway. When you go to use it again, you don't spray water everywhere. Now, I, just because I am afraid of doing that, every time I, before I go in there and program it, when I go to turn it on, I make sure that uh, I've got the faucet over a kettle so it doesn't happen. <sighs> Careful, it drips. Yep. Well, I mean the trash bag. Okay. All right. Let's Sorry. see here. Really loud. I need to switch. You know what? I'm not going to bother with switching the pumps because then I'll mess up the view of the camera and all that stuff. So I'm just going to I'm just going to use it as is here. Okay. Is that, is that. Trash check is done. Okay. Open up the valve. This valve, so many valves. Oh, geez, I guess you gotta tighten. You gotta what? You gotta tighten up the cam locks. You gotta like flip the cam locks so it doesn't leak. <laughs> uh, oh, Finland. Okay. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, did you? Oh, you know what? If you posted a link, I think it is prevent. It prevents links just because of spam and stuff like that. Um, sorry about that, Francisco. 
just done. All right. So let's see here. Let's get the. All right. So we got water recirculating here. All righty. So we're good there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to see where we are with the. Uh, where we are with our mash temperature and see what it's looking like. Okay. <coughs> I'm just going to recirculate through there really quick. See what it shows. It's a little fast. Oh, wow. It's happy. It's like, yay, we're brewing again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you are. Nice. Yep. Let me uh, put a... Mm. Oh, thanks, Larry. Appreciate that. Did it turn back on? I, I'm assuming, I guess. Huh. That's weird. Because the Super Chat wasn't working before. I guess it is working now. Thank you so much, Larry. I appreciate that. There. Thanks, Larry. There you what go. You guys mean? can see the. What does this mean? Hey. Hang on just a second. Well, I'm going to turn that pump off. Oh, God. Oh, oh, somebody messed just because uh, the temperature is so low in the in the Herms coil. I'm just going to let this sit here and rest for a little bit. I almost wore what my does what mean? shirt. What is this? Um, it's it, it's. Um, Their language, but, right? Yeah, it's. I think it's uh, God. Finland, Finnish, uh, God give it all, God hig. Finland. Yeah, so I don't know. God love. I'm not beer? sure what that means. <laughs> Somebody translate for me, please. <laughs> Larry has connection. He can make anything. Happen. Yeah, right. Oh, oh thanks, Stefan. I appreciate Stephen, that. That's nice. How often do I change out RO filters? Um, yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, God loves beer. Oh. I have not changed out the filters yet. I gotta remember that one. According Sorry. to the according to the system that I have, it says I think it says like I'm gonna say like a thousand gallons is what it's rated for, or whatever. Um, so I don't I haven't had anything uh, haven't had anything so far that has been a problem at all. <laughs> um, I haven't. I mean, a TDS meter that I put on it and stuff shows like basically nothing. So uh, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you thank you so much everybody for the super chat that's, that's awesome i really appreciate it really really appreciate it hey kelly can you grab my thermometer out of the the, the kitchen drawer okay thank you i want to check this mash and see what temperature it is Looks good. The mash looks really, it looks nice and uh, not too thin, but it uh, looks really good so far. So that's good. I'm happy with that. I think we're heating here. It'll take a minute to get up to temperature. The sober ones. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> all right you know one thing i haven't yeah this is what i was missing yeah there we go man that's awesome 113 viewers 113 people viewing right now 113 Hi, everybody. sweet thanks for being here this is awesome yeah so we're i guess we're doing kind of a we're kind of doing a Protein rest right now, it's like 132, 133 I'm degrees. Get my new shirt. Okay. Which is not exactly what the recipe called for, but hey, we're brewing, so you know it's one of those things that'll uh, it'll work. <laughs> it'll work for sure. Uh, Gam Dude Brewing, hey, what's happening, man? What's happening? 
Yeah, I know. It's funny because I, I looked, I got on this morning and I, I looked and I saw the, uh, the that um, I think it was four people were waiting at like eight o'clock this morning. It was kind of funny. <laughs> uh, didn't even see what? Didn't didn't see the, uh, um, what am I trying to think of? Didn't see the live stream? 114. Yeah, no kidding. We've been missed. Well, we're, we're feeling the love. I appreciate that. Appreciate it, everybody. And I'll, I'll tell you, because it was, it was kind of interesting. Um, we were like, end of the year last year, we were down here in the basement and stuff. And Kelly was like, man, I miss, I miss, you know, talking to everybody and seeing everybody's chat and all that kind of stuff. And so it was like, you know, I, I was already wanting to get back anyways, but she was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I miss seeing everybody. So it's, it's so awesome to, to have all you guys watch us brewing and stuff. It, it just, it, it blows my mind a lot of times how many people will watch for a long time. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun though. I, I enjoy doing it and I'm, I'm really happy that you guys like to watch. It's so much fun. So much fun. So now yeah, we're getting up there. Come on, heat, heat. I did put pretty cold water in there, so I'm not, su not surprised by that. <clears throat> It'll get up there pretty quick. I think the mash temperature on this was 154. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've, I've, I've taught plenty uh, from my mistakes, trust me. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, the mash temperature is 156, right, Larry? Is that, does that sound right? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. You know what, my, need to plug this in so my microphones don't die. That's the other thing too with, with doing this stuff is you gotta, everything's gotta be plugged in or battery operated or something because you can run out of batteries. Most of your, your um, microphones and stuff like that, they're all rated for a couple hours of use. And, uh, Whoa, I was like, what was that? <laughs> I'm like, what What happened? What happened? <laughs> the lights went out in Georgia. Yep. It's all twisted. Yep, twist it up. All right, let's see, 156. Yeah, thanks, Francisco, I appreciate it. I also do appreciate your support uh, on Patreon too. I, you, Francisco's one of our Patreons and we really appreciate, really appreciate that. And then you have to turn it back on too, I guess. My hands okay. Yeah, Testing absolutely. One, two, three. You know, I thought about getting a 3D printer. Um, can you get more of a donation on Patreon? Well, the Patreon is like a, usually like, it's like a monthly subscription usually. Um, is what it is. Like you, there's different tiers of it. On. So yeah. So it. The, what's mine is mine, and what's Herms is mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Lube, lube, lube tube does. They give you. They give you a little bit. Hey, Kurt, how's it going? Yeah, YouTube does uh, keep a, a pretty good share of super chats. I think it's like forty percent or something like that. I don't know. Whatever. I mean, it, you know, it's like I appreciate you guys. It, whatever you do is fine and no, not required and, and certainly not, you know, much appreciated. There's no, no requirement. No. Mm -hmm. This is actually a, I ca came across this beer. Uh, Kelly got it for me not too long ago. And it, I know it's, it's probably like, uh, it's called light speed. It's 99 calories cause I'm watching my girlish figure, but it's, it's like four, 4.2% 4 alcohol. Um, the, there's a link at the top of the chat, uh, beer koi should take you to a tip page that is connected to my PayPal. So if you want to, if you want to use that, I click, let me know if it works. From Germany. Okay. Yeah. Chemical oil. Chemical, chemical oil. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's a, that's a tongue twister for sure. Awesome. Salud. Salud. How warm is it there right now? Oops, why am I yelling? It's <laughs> <laughs> like he's far away. <laughs> they, they can, well, they are, he is far away, but... <laughs> oh, how is it down there? <laughs> oh, 
I'll never tell money. There's some wood out there if you want to send a smoke signal. <laughs> you know Morse code, anybody? Oh, shoot. Man, you're killing me, Small. Me too. Mm-hmm. Howdy, I've seen that on a beer. Uh, Benvenidos. Mm. All right. Well, we're getting up to temp. Where are we at? Well, we're at 120 right now. Right. We're, Ooh, I guess so we're kind of doing a, a protein rest on here, I guess, for right now. Holy crap. What? Thanks, Thomas. Did you miss, did you double the, did you hit too many zeros? Yeah, he hit, the, he hit too many zeros. I don't know, I don't know what, I don't, that's, uh, that's in, um, I don't know what knock. I don't know what the conversion is for okay. knock. Thank you so much. <clears throat> knock it off. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> dad jokes. Uh, just Who found has some. Dad jokes. Share it. Found some brewing 3D prints recently. Tri Sorry, camp the glass. Joke. Oh, 20 bucks. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Thomas. I, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what the conversion is on that. So, but thank you, Thomas. Much appreciated. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Yep. Oh, you know what? This has been off. What was it? This notification thing. I didn't realize it was off. Well, come on. I don't know. It's like it's, it was off for some reason. Hang on just a second. There's a notification thing for Streamlabs. <laughs> Larry, look what I started. Great job on Twitch. That's so nice. There Thank it goes. You, okay. Larry. There we go. And everybody. Cool. Okay, so it's a it's a notification oh, system okay. that like notifies when people do super chats and stuff like that. Unfortunately, I didn't realize it was turned off. So sorry about that, guys. I'm I'm getting back to it. <clears throat> right. Rusty, rusty, rusty. Is, is this lighting better for you? Yeah, it's not quite you. as bad. I had to put on a lot of blush. <laughs> I tried something a little bit different. I'm using one camera this time, but it's I've got this. It's almost it's like a it's almost like a fisheye lens. It's a uh, it's a, like a 10 to 17, so it's like really, really wide. I mean, it, it, it gets really, really wide, but it's kind of distorted, so kind of pull it in just a little bit. But that's my uh, Canon M6 Mark II. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Thanks, Larry. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, so I'm up at the top of the chat. Like, it, I think you might have to scroll up. It, it's pinned at the top up there. Um, let me see oh, here. I think I need to get wedding dress today. Do you want me to start the oven? So they you can, can if you want, yeah. I didn't put on a very smooth kind of... You know what? I have my sound off. I didn't the button. Let me see here. Uh, well, I can't see it. Maybe. I don't know. Howdy, Leo. Uh, Hamish, the recipe today is a kind of a dragon's milk clone. Yum. It's an imperial stout. It should wind up probably somewhere in the neighborhood of close to 10%, something Holy like that. Cow. So we'll brew it, ferment it, and then we uh, use uh, dark roasted wood chips with Woodford Reserve bourbon, several ounces of that. Oh, goodness. <clears throat> and then, um, thank you so thank much. You, Appreciate Josh. that. Okay, awesome. Thank you, thank you Josh. Thank you very much. Okay. Much appreciated. Stuff in your hot <laughs> as always. That's right. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, what was I saying? I'm trying I don't to know. What I was saying now. Oh yeah. So I'm it's a. Uh, so it's a. Uh, it's Thank uh, you, Francisco. Yeah, there, there it is. Yeah, see, it's showing up now. See on the screen. Yeah, there? I see. Yeah. That's awesome. And if somebody reads off, there's a voice that we can't hear, but they can okay. hear a voice reading off the message. That's so cool. <laughs> I think it's like some woman's voice. Hello, thank you for the super chat. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Francisco. Another one. I mean, Aww. geez. I'm gonna Man. um. 
I'm going to turn this off. It was off this whole time I was talking. It was? Yeah. Because I'm cool like that. Oh, it's on now. I know, because I just turned it on. Oh, okay. They missed my whole thing, my whole oh. shebang. Well, they probably heard you, like, by proxy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Something like that. I'm okay. off again. Okay, it's time to turn on the other. Yeah, no, I appreciate that, Viracoy. Did you find it at the top up there? I didn't. I don't know if you if you didn't find it. Let me uh, let me see real quick here. Send you something something. <laughs> let me see here real quick. Here is. So here. Oh okay. Yeah, that, that doesn't that doesn't cost anything on there by the way, Beercoy. That just that's just connected directly to my PayPal account from the Streamlabs, which is that's what I use for all the, the overlays and all that stuff for like the, the viewer account and all that stuff. So man, thanks Francisco. Thank you so much, Brian. I appreciate that. Have a ten point five and I think I've watched all <laughs> I've a actually have some more content coming out for the uh, the Anvil Brewing System. Um uh, actually have a they're sending me the updated version because it's gone through about three iterations since I did the first video. So I'm going to do another video on the, the latest version. They've, they put the louvered bottom in there, like what's in the, the Blickman mash ton. They've also added a cord. Like there's a, there's a cord now for, for, um, no, they don't take anything from me, Biracoy. That that's just, it's just a link is all it is. They take nothing. It just goes, when you do it on there, it goes directly into my PayPal account. Um, so they they've added a cord that comes off so like it, it's it's wired for you can use it for 240 or 110 without having to make an adapter like i did so um on version 10 now yeah yep yep exactly so yeah i'm going to be doing some more videos on that and uh it'll be it'll be uh it'll be fun so absolutely and then i still have to do the five gallon batch on the the uh 18 gallon because i never did a five gallon batch on that so it was like i'm kind of just fell off a cliff there with some of the content. So I got some things that I want to do with that. And then um, there's some other stuff coming too. So the, uh, the Patreons know, but <laughs> shh, we can't talk about that right now. <laughs> He's a secret. Oops. All right. Checking okay. Version 10 now. This so thing is not cool. playing nice. All right. All right. Come on. Let's get up. Let's get up to temp here. Where are we at? 136. Yeah, 136. So we're getting there. It's going to be a long brew day. It's okay. <laughs> I know. It's better than being at hopefully, work. Hopefully people's we got, got all these you know, nothing people. to do. So 115 people watching. Just a quick question. Who, um, who's new, to, who's never, raise your hand if you've never been on one of our live streams before. I'd kind of like to know how many people are new and like, you know, I know there's a bunch of people that are back from before, but how many people... This There's is your choice. first live stream with us. Raise your hand. <clears throat> Both clerk. So there's a, oh, Hamish. Or is it Hamish or Hamish? Hamish, I would say. Brian Hamish. Decker. Awesome. Thank you. Beautiful. Dumb question. Since I've never done pressure fermentation, is it okay to set the CO2 pressure in the firmzilla and be able to move it from the garage? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's Welcome, no, there's Hamish, no problem. Welcome Hamish, Brian, and Josh. Yep. Thanks absolutely. for being here. Josh. Alone. Uh, oh. Yeah, I mean, so there's and no, Robert. I mean, there's no problem with uh, what I would, you know, my suggestion on the the Firmzilla is just put your your beer in there, put your uh, yeast in there, and all that stuff, and then let it come up to pressure oh, yeah. by itself. That's just let it come up to pressure naturally. You don't have to start it under pressure; it's fine. Like so the Fermentasaurus or McMiddles, we, awesome. We Thanks, guys. Robert B. Josh Spencer. Yeah. Yeah, there's no problem with with just start, McMiddles. you know, put everything in there and then let just it come talk. up to pressure. What I have done in the past is adjust your spunding valve you can either you can adjust your spunding valve on a keg or you can adjust it on the on the actual um, we're at 140. okay you can adjust it on the the um the ipod stall the vessel itself just oh, make sure wow. when you do just make sure when you do your spunding valve just make sure it's preset if you're going to let Stephen's let it come up to pressure all the recordings this is a second live stream wow that's thanks Stefan. appreciate it James, if you, if you watch Jordan, it. <laughs> Jones. Yeah, awesome. That's great welcome, to have some new welcome. people. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Thanks Absolutely. for watching. Absolutely. It is. It is a little bit, uh, a little bit different I of a like system a than robot or something. I'm all plugged yeah. in. I oh just, well. Whoa. You're fine. It's just kind of. Mark Gardner, B for Jones. Awesome. Mark Gardner. Hello. 
If Black it includes a couple of those beers, I'm new. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, this beer is probably going to look like your uh, like your your thumbnail there, probably. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful, perfect for the yep. winter. Yep. Super, super. Watch the snowfall. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Here's a here's a fun fun fact for you. Um, I. Uh, I don't. I feel like I'm right in your way. Okay. Yeah, you know. Oops. I'm way so in the I was, Ooh. I was planning on the, all my brewing ingredients. I was thinking they were going to get here sooner, but I ordered them late, and the guy was on vacation and all this kind of stuff. So it was, it was almost like I posted on Facebook and stuff that it almost didn't happen. But thankfully everything came through, so that was great. Um, but I started panicking because I'm like, oh crap, what am I going to do? Because I, I ordered one pack of the USO five, and I thought I would do a starter, and you know we'll have plenty of whatever. So I actually dug through my stash that I have from NHC, I think it was 2019, I had some Mangrove Jack A24, which is a high, um, it's a high gravity or, you know, a strong ale, neutral yeast, which is kind of like a USO5, same type of thing. Oh. But it was like, it, 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 the expiration was like 2020. So I'm like, you know what, I'm Those just going to, I'm going to make up one of my cans, do a can starter. And I couldn't find my Erlenmeyer flask because I've had to redo a whole bunch of stuff. So what I wound up doing was doing a starter in a um, in a mason jar, and you can see there's a ton of yeast on the bottom there if you can see that. Um, yeah, you just started that last night, right? No, I started it like three days ago. I was gonna say, but I put <laughs> the A24 amazing. in there. You showed it to me with, last with night with with one and a half liter or one liter. I think yeah, yeah, it was one liter, one liter starter, and it took off like almost immediately. So mm -hmm. it was still good after like. That's what you were was, saying. That's why it I was expired more than two years, okay. so it was still good. And then when I got the USO five, I dumped another liter of starter in and put the USO five in there. So it's going to be a combination of A twenty four and USO five, but I mean they're both neutral yeast anyway. So very cool. Two but uh, yeah, good tips there from Stefan, Josh, and Hamish. <clears throat> uh, another hint for the double check the screws on the hand. Yeah, absolutely. They are they are a little flimsy. A <laughs> uh, bunch of videos. My keys are wouldn't work. Oh, <laughs> awesome! Glad to hear. That's Set my awesome. Vermzilla from the CO2 bottle so I can make it sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's not a that's no problem to do that at all. You don't have to, but there's no you know it, it's not a bad idea that way. You make sure that the the uh, yeah right. that everything is in the mm -hmm. correct spot. Yep, exactly. One forty-seven. Let me. I'm gonna bump this up a little bit higher. Oh, okay. Just to because we actually need it. We need it higher than that anyway. So we need to What's, like what, one fifty-six is what we're gonna be mashing at. Oh. Okay. Which is a little bit high. Yeah. But that just leads to a little more body in the beer and stuff. Yeah. Holy crap. Yep. Okay then. Yep. One fifty six. I got to go check the oven in a minute. Okay. See if it's ready. Sounds good. I'm gonna go ahead and crank this back on. See where we are with our. I'm gonna grab this and here. walk this way. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. So let's see where we are here. It's coming up as it's circulating through the, the coil there. Now I'm going to go dropping, check the now oven. it's dropping back down as the... Pizza Patrol will be right back. Okay. Sounds good. Now it's coming back up again as it starts to recirculate. Awesome. Yeah, now it's coming back up again. Yeah, randomly have success with three-year-old. Yeah, Lalamont. It's like I was kind of in a panic. I'm like, I, you know, I got to do something because if I don't do something, I'm not going to have, you know, I'm going to be stressing the yeast out a lot, trying to get one packet to work on this large of a beer. But worked out okay, I think so. I mean, you know, this got a, got quite a bit of yeast. It was it was really, really, I mean, the A24, it, it kicked off within a couple hours. So it was, I'm like, wow, cool. Uh, do, 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 do. All right. Yeah, the so the the mash tun lags about a degree or two behind the hot liquor tank, so that's why I have this the temperature set. And I could I could adjust, do an offset and adjust it so that it, they would both match up. But I'd rather have like whatever the actual real temperature is, and just manually adjust the offset myself, so that way I know exactly what the what the temperatures and stuff are. So it's getting up there. What other questions everybody have? Anybody else got any other questions about anything? Brewing equipment, brewing 
brewing stuff, whatever. <coughs> Let me uh, give you guys a view of the of the uh, mash down here. Um, I have done I've done a rim I did a rim system in the in the past. I was kind of recounting some of my trials and tribulations with that earlier. And um, I had I did do a rim system in the past. I have a brew I have a brew easy, which is t basically a rim system. There's our recirculation. It's uh, it's going doing well. It's not uh, not sticking or anything like that. So I think the the rice holes definitely are helping out with it. So that's good. And we're coming up to temp there. It'll be a little bit before we get up to 156, but I'll start the timer once we get there, and uh, we should be good. <coughs> Uh, Kevin, I'm brewing. Uh, Larry did a uh, like a clone of the Dragon's Milk Stout. Did a recipe based off of BYO magazine, um, and then made some modifications to it. And this is his second iteration of that. I'm using his recipe, um, and we're making a uh, basically a Dragon's Milk clone. So we'll brew the beer today, and then obviously you know we have to do the the um, bourbon wood chips and all that stuff once the fermenting is done. <coughs> but we're uh, we're we're jumping out there and doing a ten gallon batch today, so this is a this is a big beer and a, a big batch. So <laughs> it uh, it's it's not maxing out the mash ton, but I tell you, it's it's uh, it's it's really close to the top, and it's got uh, it's definitely got a lot of a lot of sugar in there. So we'll see. Yep, imperial stout, yes sir. <clears throat> um, not really. Um, you know, I, I don't see a whole lot of difference between brewing on this and brewing on uh, all in one system. I mean, I, you know, you can brew in a, you can do a brew in a bag in a, in a kettle and just do a bag and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know that the equipment necessarily makes the beer better. A lot of it's the techniques and the, the, um, you know, the care you take for your yeast health and your temperature and all that stuff. Those things make so much more difference than, um, than equipment does, honestly. So, uh, my take on low oxygen brewing, I don't know if there's enough return on the, on the, on the, the hassle, you know, I mean, I suppose there is, like I said, you know, there's, there's some people out there that, that do it on some channels and stuff, but by and large, I don't, I don't know that the, the juice is worth the squeeze on that. I've never done it before. So, you know, maybe there's some, you know, maybe the heavens part and, you know, the beer comes down out of the sky and it's, it's, you know, like angel tears or something like that, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that it's worth the worth the uh, the trouble, quite honestly. Um, I have a keyser. I have a, I have two keysers actually. Uh, two three tap keysers, or not keysers, keg raters. Sorry, two three tap keg raters. They're the the um, keg land uh, version. <coughs> um, yeah, and I will. Uh, I'll put I'll put Larry's link to his recipe in the in the description. Then I'll also I'll share my recipe on Brewfather. I think I called it Larry's Dragon. <laughs> Larry's Dragon Stout. Um, let's see, keeping up with all those steps during a brew day. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, Francisco, I don't, I don't print out a sheet or anything like that. Um, I just kind of try to rely on my memory. It's easier if you're not doing a live stream as far as that goes. Um, it's certainly easier to, easier to keep track of everything, but you know, I, I like doing, I like just doing everything kind of from memory, to be honest with you. So, <clears throat> it's not a bad idea for somebody to just start a brewing though to to make sure that they do everything like you know see just like now I forgot to start a timer for for the uh, the mash which we're not quite to temperature yet anyways but that's kind of a case in point of like what I'm talking about there if you're if you're brewing live then <laughs> it's it uh, it's one of those things where it you know it can get away from you easily so I'm gonna go ahead and set a timer on my phone here for 45 minutes so that we can add the dark grains in. And there we go. Now, uh, there's no element in the mash. No, there is not. There is not an element in the mash tun. Um, some, there are some manufacturers. I think uh, SS Brewtech has a mash tun that has an element in the bottom or has a, like a heating pad in the bottom to help maintain the temperature. Um, let's see. Why did you raise the temp in the HLT to raise the temp in the mash? Um, okay. Yeah. So Alex, there's like 
Stefan said there's no heating element in there. There's uh, let me I'll if you're not familiar with what a Herm system is, it's it's actually it stands for um, heat exchanger recirculating mash system. And so basically what happens is the the here's the mash ton. It comes out of the bottom down here. And then what happens is it goes up through up into this other the hot liquor tank. And in that tank there is a coil. So the beer actually passes through this coil over here. If you can see that, I think you can see it on camera there. It's like a, it's like a stainless steel coil. Passes through that and then comes back up into the top of the, of the mash tun through the hose there. And so the, the temperature adjusts in the mash tun relative to the temperature in the hot liquor tank based on going through the coil that's submerged in the liquid. So there, that's your heat exchanger in there. So. <coughs> I hope that ex I, I think that explained it. If not, ask more questions. That's that's how you learn, and I don't have a problem with that at all. It's you know, that's that's the only way you learn. A lot of times is asking questions. So, <coughs> all right. So we're getting up there. We're one fifty-five now. It's getting up there. Looking good. Looking good. It's flowing well too. So I'm I'm happy about that. It's not stuck at all. Um, why aren't you using the brewing feature? Oh, I am. I'm using uh, the what I'm doing, uh, Natanel, is um, I, I could probably add a step in the brew father for adding the dark grains. But basically, Larry, in his last version of the recipe, was he mashed for 45 minutes and then put in the dark grains for the last 15 minutes. So I'm just doing a super simple, keep it simple um, set a timer on my phone and then add those dark grains in at the last 15 minutes based on that timer. So it's just, it's just more simplicity's sake, you know, so that, that's all. <coughs> uh, yes, actually, Brian, that, that is, that is the biggest purpose of, for me anyways, it, th that's the biggest positive of having the Herm system is that the wart during the mash process does not ever touch an element at all, which at the beginning of this stream, I was talking about, you know, different systems and I had a rim, I built a rim system when I first started going into electric brewing. This was like, gosh, 10 years ago. And um, had an issue where I scorched like two, two batches of beer because I, you know, it was really mistaken the design of mine. I had a rims tube that was really long, had a really short element. The sensor was up here at the end. The element was down here. So by the time the, the element kicked on and was cooking the wort, like burning it, scorching it, the it was like quite a while before the the uh, element picked it up and shut the shut the uh, the element or it was quite a while before the sensor picked it up and turned the element off so you know looking back on it now if i'd had a shorter tube and a longer element where they were closer together it probably wouldn't have burned but this way and this was you know after i scorched two batches i'm like i wanted to throw the thing down the street and that's when i said you know what i'm i'm just going to go full herm system take all the, you know, take all the stupidity out of it and just do that and have a, have a Herm system that, you know, it does, there's no possible way it could scorch. <coughs> Stuck here in the office today working, staying inspired. Thanks, David. I appreciate the super chat and uh, awesome. I, you know, I'm, I'm glad that uh, hopefully I inspire you to uh, maybe look at having a system of your own or, you know, brewing with what you got. <laughs> You're done with your daddy. Yes. I yep, he's hanging out here. He's the brew the cat. Pizza. I added extra pepperoni and banana peppers and bacon bits. <laughs> yeah, that's good that you did that. Blow everybody's out. No, I'm sure they heard you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, interesting how us Europeans are dedicated to step mashing. And our U.S. friends uh, make the finest craft beer with an infusion mash. <laughs> it's it's you know it's kind of all about whatever you're doing. Thank so, you, Dave. You know. Where's the MBC? I don't know, Alonzo. We might have to get one of those on. <laughs> um, yet to try step mashing, and I've been brewing off and on for five years. Had kids in lost time. Yep, haven't figured out decoction. I don't. You know, I, I think with some of those methods and stuff, I think a lot of that, a lot of those old methods like decoction mashing and stuff like that, the grains are much better th these days, oh, and so yeah. maybe they don't require so. all of that stuff. Um, and I know there's some, you know, there's some science behind, you know, 
cooking the grain and doing all that stuff. But you but, don't even have to use really grain anymore. You can yeah, I mean, you can use extract, but I'm just mm -hmm. saying they're talking about decoction mashing where you yeah. pull part of the well, grain out under the, during the mash time, and heat it up. And all, yeah. yeah. So I don't know, you know, I, I don't know of a lot of people that are doing a decoction mash anymore, mm -hmm. quite honestly, but you know, it's one of those things where it's some, it's something that you could do, but what, how much does it benefit? I don't know. Awesome, Joe. I feel like the Borg or something with all these wires and stuff coming out for me. Resistance is futile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right, we're up to 153 now, so we're, whoop, whoop. we're getting there. Happy brewing. We're, we're getting there. We're to start brewing as well. <clears throat> Good, Joe. What are, you, what are you guys brewing, Joe? NBC. <laughs> Mandatory beer chug. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> What? I thought it was a man thing or something. What is it, brew cat? Hello? He's like, I need something to chew on. Cameo, Deitch hi, Cameo. Buddy. You gonna say hi to everybody? In there. Yeah, why don't you, why don't you, Come here. Why don't you let him say hi. I'm a mama. He's not. 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 Get him. I goosed him. Do a smash today. Yep. Smash is I'm awesome. Goose you. Watch some of your videos. Help us pick our new kettles. Awesome. 20 gallon spike, spike brew in a basket. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. I need to go get my drops. <clears throat> yeah. I, you know, I, I don't know that. Again, you know, the more I brew and the, the longer I brew, simpler is better. You know, the, the simpler it is, the better it is. That was for the grow lights for the tomatoes and oh, stuff when I started okay. them last year. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, no <laughs> yeah, it would have been fine. I mean, you know, Larry, you still got to come down. I mean, you know, it's, it, the invitation is open. The shower is in the extra room and everything now. So, I mean, it's like, well, we're ready. So, you know, just come on down, man. <laughs> uh, so far, we like it. Cool. Cool. Now, did you, did you get the, um, did you get the, the mash basket or did you, are you just doing like a, like a, a bag in the, in the kettle? <clears throat> what are you doing, bud? What is that? What is it? What's under there? <laughs> there he is, that boy. Oh, he says I'm all done. What's under there? Hmm? You see something? Mice are a problem. <laughs> Basket in the kettle. Okay, I got you. Cool. <clears throat> How's that pizza coming? Good. I added pepperoni, your banana peppers, okay. and um, the real bacon bits. Awesome. I didn't. I only put the <laughs> banana peppers on half. Hashtag more cat screen time. Yep. Right on. <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely. Cameo. Yeah, awesome. Come Let's on. Let's do that. We can do that for sure. You. Bring your uh, bring, <sighs> bring your bring your brother and your microphones, and we'll we'll hook it up. <clears throat> Here we go. There he is. Yeah, I picked him up a second ago. <laughs> he's mm. almost 16 pounds. Yeah, he's close. He's healthy. Say say hi to the 100, 126 people watching. Hi. Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> yeah, he likes I to hang out in the basement when I come down here. Mommy boop. For sure. Boop. He's not into it. He's not no, gonna give me a boop. Not really. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hey, come on down, man. No problem there. What is this? <clears throat> throw it away. That's for the scale. It's oh, in there. Okay, never mind. All right, so we're up to 155 now. So we're, we're getting close. 157. Getting close. Oh, you're talking yep. about the mat. Okay. Yep. Because the hot liquor tank. Let me uh, let's take a let's take a peek at the <laughs> the mash tun here. Oh, I'm glad I did the drops. Now I can see. Oh yeah, looking good. Mmm, smells amazing. It's flowing. I mean, for that much grain, it's. I mean, there's... if you took a bath in that, it'd be good for your skin. Yeah, oh, well, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You'd be all sticky when you got <laughs> got out, but. It'd be worth it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And then here's the hot liquor tank. I got a hose on the mm -mm -mm. on the return there to. Do it's flowing full blast with the riptide. So. That. No. Okay. How <laughs> was he chewing on it? Um, One thirty-six. Awesome. He wanted to chew on a twisty tie. See? Yeah, I'm with you, Francisco. You I'm the the counterflow. It does scare me too. I mean, I, I've I've had too many. I've had too many clogs and all, you know, stuff that I'm like, oh boy, is it gonna, is it gonna clog up and <coughs> am I gonna get some kind of funkiness from having stuff lodged in the, in the chiller? Right. I mean, I have, I have the, the, uh, 
the chillerator or whatever the Blickman plate chiller is. I've oh. used it a couple times, but I'm like, eh. I don't know. I just like Let's being able it. to stick something in there, chill down with that, and then take it out, and I know that there's nothing, you know, it rinse it off. <laughs> there's nothing in there. So they think of speaking everything. Speaking of which, though. I have to get that at some point for chilling this down. Mm. Uh, do you brew on on this system or your brew easy more? I probably beer koi. My wife and kid have too many barn cats. Oh yeah. <laughs> I That's probably nice have stuff. brewed more on this system than the brew easy. It's, you know, it's one of those things that's been, and, you know, I'm not complaining at all, but it's like <laughs> get, uh, system, 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 like people send you systems and stuff to, to brew and test and all that kind of stuff. So, so like, I'm, you know, we downsized. I'm brewing on all kinds of different yeah. stuff. Yeah, we downsized but and then got I, more stuff. The basement <clears throat> has exploded. Yeah, I know. But anyhow, you'll have to do a giveaway. Yeah, exactly. But, um, but yeah, so, I mean, it's like, you know, I, for a while there, I was getting like new systems from people all the time, and so then it was like oh jaded having yes. to you know brew brewing on a new system, and then you know trying to do a couple of brews on it so I could maybe do some videos and see how it worked and all that kind of stuff. I agree and then, with Larry on the chillers. yeah yeah yeah, well, yeah they the, have some the jaded, beautiful yeah um, yep <laughs> giveaway. I didn't do one this time just because it was the first time back for a while, but I will tell you guys just you know we'll organize it. We yeah, were a just, little all over the place, and I slipped in because it was freezing and it was so nice. It was Saturday morning yeah, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> we but, can get it together. But just to let you guys all know that are like, you know, lurking in the shadows and not subscribed, you probably want to because we will be doing some giveaways. There's uh, several manufacturers I've talked to that want to do giveaways, gift mm -hmm. cards, items, all kinds of stuff yeah. like that. So we will be not doing those again in the future. Anymore. What's that? Not just koozies anymore. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Those are fun though. We I will... love my x chillerator, said <clears throat> Brian Larkin. Mm -hmm. Yep. I bought a stainless heat exchanger that is in mine. Basically a jacketed pipe. Yep. Hmm. Very nice. Yep. You four and a half feet, four, four and a half inches long? Inches. 4.5 inches. I have drops oh. over there. Hmm. Okay. <coughs> yeah, the, I mean, the accelerator, I don't mind, I don't mind those type of, um, Baby boy. I don't mind those type of counterflow chillers as much. And I actually had one in the beginning. The reason why I don't mind those as much is because they're, they're a pipe that you can basically oh. backflow, rinse, all that kind of stuff and be more assured that you've got everything out of there. The plate chillers have a lot of like passageways that are really thin and stuff like that. Whereas with a counterflow chiller like the accelerator, they have much larger passages so that you can be sure that everything is coming out. Where, you know, the, I guess the counterflow chiller that I'm not as fond of would be like the plate chillers where, you know, stuff can get stuck in there, so. You experiment, you learn. Thanks, Kyle. <coughs> Beer Koi said feet. Oh, four feet, five inches. Okay. What? Yeah, that makes sense. I, I'm, I'm kind of with Larry on the, like the, the jaded and, and there's, you know, yeah, the, the funny thing about, the funny thing about chillers is um, a lot of people, a lot of people don't maybe understand that chillers Hello, Kyle are Clark. more about water flow, like the amount of water you can flow through them. Okay then it is like the length of the coil and all that stuff like people you know like with counter or with submersible chillers or even counterflow chillers you know people think well you know longer or bigger is better well not necessarily because with a chiller either submersible or um counterflow there's a point in the when the when the two when when the in a counterflow when the wort passes the cold water uh -huh. at some point the temperatures equalized yeah. so if you're not out running the equalization of mm -hmm. the temperature in your counterflow chiller you might only be using 10 feet of it yeah when it's like 30 or 40 feet long if your if your water pressure is not enough mm. same thing with your your immersion chiller I just, if warm. you're not if you're not pushing the water through the the chiller fast enough to outrun the temperature uh, yeah. you know, the heat, the heat soaking of the liquid in, in the, the chiller that doesn't do any good. So like I said, you do have, you could have a 50, uh, you could have a 50 foot chiller and you're only using probably 15, 20 feet of it. If you're, if your water's not very, you know, high pressure. Hi so. Ronald French. Thank you. <laughs> he said, new no, subscribe, love your channel. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jared, the, um, the skilla fits the 10.5 just fine. Um, and oh. it will work in the breezy too. It won't, it won't go all the way to the bottom of the breezy probably and depending welcome, on Ronald. which one you have. But honestly, you don't really need to go all the way to the bottom of your vessel in order to, to make the immersion chiller work. Hmm. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, okay, yep. 
Yeah, but you know, and and Clay Clay from um, Jaded will tell you the same like the same thing that that I just said was that you know, and that's why they recommend. And Larry actually has one, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Larry. So like, if you if you want to maximize your immersion chiller, like it Jaded or otherwise, if you get like a a pump like a um, like a sump pump, that's like really multiple gallons per minute yeah. or multiple, you know, like like Has anyone ever five done or that? You know, like. Do you know? What's that? Has anyone ever done that? Yeah, I think Larry has actually done really? that. Really? That's yeah. pretty cool. So MacGyver beer. Yeah, so I mean, if you really want to maximize the efficiency of it, if you have a pump that forces the water through the chiller faster than what you can get out of your normal faucet, that really is the is the best way Larry's to do it. It, it works better, doesn't it, Larry? I mean, with, with doing that. Oh, and Josh built his immersion chiller watching Larry's video. Yep. It works yep. great. 20-gallon spike to sling blade. So that I could still make five gallon batches. Hmm. You guys know, of course. Yeah. Yep. That's not my bag. <laughs> no, that makes that makes sense. Yeah, because yeah, no, I, I I agree with that completely. You're with, welcome. And that Ronald. was one of the Thank things you. I did I liked about the sling blade is that it's almost like a half of one okay, of those. I need to see what you're talking it's, about. It's it's like a it looks well, like a sickle. You okay. know, it's it's yes. curved. Uh huh. It's curved, which I guess kind I was of gets a name. a name. boomerang kind of thing. It does look like that a little okay. bit. It's, That's it's what I was wondering. curved like a almost okay. like a boomerang can't act like I know what I'm talking about. Jaded children chill just as fast as a counterflow chill. Yeah, with a, and, and the other the other positive aspect to <coughs> a immersion chiller is that you are pizza. you're Sorry. chilling the entire batch of wort. So you're going to get that cold break faster than you would if you do like a, a counterflow chiller and either pipe it back into the into the kettle to chill the whole batch down or if you're just transferring, you know, you're slowing the flow down enough to just get it into the into the kettle which with a counterflow chiller if you slow it down enough to chill it down to like yeast pitching temperature your cold break is actually occurring in your fermenter if you if you use one of those and you're filling up a fermenter you'll see that the cold break is actually occurring in the fermenter and not occurring in the kettle and staying in the kettle so you're going to wind up with a lot more trub from a counterflow chiller if you if you're you know chilling it down and and basically running it through the counterflow chiller one time into your into your uh, fermentation vessel, you're going to see that you're going to get a lot more trub because the cold break is occurring in the chiller and then in your fermenter. So oh, that's my 25 cents on chillers. <laughs> Got to have a hobby. <clears throat> Recycling water. Yep, yep. 20 gallon Blickman Brew Easy. Uh, that's three hours. So oh, that's right. I remember beer quite. Yeah, you told me you. Yeah, I remember you telling me that you have a twenty gallon with the with the thirty, the thirty gallon pots. Yep, that's a big system for sure. Use a plater and always wonder about Stephens those little bits fan. of hops that come out. It doesn't seem to have ruined a brew day yet. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I mean, it's you know, it, it is one of those things. That it, it it may not ruin it. I mean, you know, it, depending on ah. you know, doing well, doing a, a um and a pom -pom. doing a recirculation through the the chiller and sanitizing it with you know boiling wort or whatever certainly cuts down on that. But it's not completely foolproof. I mean, I know there's a lot of people that have done it with no problem, but you know. Ronald, but, he uses um, yep. a cooler and a pond pump. Yep. Yeah. I mean, as long as the pond Love pump it. does yeah, enough, has exactly. enough output. Yeah. The only thing, the only thing about the pond pump though, is those are impeller pumps. So it does, you don't get the full what does that mean? Uh, impeller Inside? is like, it's, it's like a magnetic driven pump with a, oh. with the, the impeller is in there and it, why? Well, it's so that you can cut off. It's just like the, the riptides, you can cut off the flow. Uh -huh. of the pump without it damaging the pump so like if you took like a, a a pump that was direct drive and like cut off the the flow yeah you could possibly damage it because you're stopping it you're oh. you're cutting down the flow uh, those type pumps cool. and pond pumps are impeller pumps so they have a they have a you can cut off the flow or adjust the flow without damaging the pump because it the magnet in the motor spins freely and then the the impeller will can slow down without damaging anything huh. A sump pump is more of like a direct drive yeah, pump where it, that's it what pumps I'm more automatically. Familiar so. with. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Hamish. I'm trying to make you paranoid, but I just, you know, one of those things that, you know, it, it's one of those things okay that. Okay, to be uh, paranoid. You're human. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you care. After watching Party Time, I'm using the Brew Easy for maple syrup production this week. Awesome. Yeah, wow. that's, that's good. Wow, that's <clears> neat. For sure. The only issue with the immersion of my 120 volt uh, claw hammer. I lose boil. So, okay. Yeah, that, that's definitely. Now, here's, Paul, here's a, here's a tip for you that I want you to try next time you brew and you have your, your immersion chiller. In the last, like, at 30 minutes, it's still on. At 30 minutes, 
Oh, at 30 minutes, take your immersion chiller and set it over top of the kettle so that all the steam coming up out of the kettle is actually preheating your chiller so that when you put it in there, oh. it doesn't drop the temperature. So try that. Try putting your, just, you know, hang, hanging your chiller over top of the kettle, like just set it up there, brace it with a spoon or something like that so that the say, steam heats the chiller up so that when you go to put it in to sanitize it, it doesn't drop your wart temperature as much. I've actually, I've actually done it a little bit. Metal clothes things that's on wheels and yeah. hook up there. <laughs> yeah, I've done it. And I'm a MacGyver too. Yeah, I've done it and it actually does help a little bit. So. Oh, magnet allows for slippage when it's looking needed. for a grain recipe. Thanks, Terry. See. What What do you like, uh, Ronald? Sense. What's that? Magnet yeah. allows for yep. slippage. Yep, magnet allows for slippage. That's yep. what I was picturing in my head. Yeah, it's not a direct connection. <laughs> right. Terry, I, Terry, I think is a is a um, an engineer or something like that because I know he's he's posted some pretty pretty uh, thoughtful comments on my Facebook page, if I remember correctly. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. okay, you use a steam slayer. Okay, I got you, I got you. Right. Well, what, what about this? So, um, what, what's the temperature of the, oh. the stuff coming out of the steam slayer? Um, if, it's, if it's hot enough, maybe you could put the, the uh, chiller in the bucket with the, that the steam slayer's dr uh, draining into. Ronald, he's getting ready for a sixth brew, all green, looking for a green recipe. So yeah, what type of what type of beer do you like? What about that AI uh, thing? Mm. Or no, oh, it doesn't yeah, do it good with well. beer. It's just yeah, other it recipes well, like in the pantry. That's Thanks, right. Terry. Did I did I remember Terry? Are you like an engineer? Or so you, I I know that you definitely um, have some cerebral power because <laughs> I've seen some of the uh, some of the posts that you've made, and I'm like, his oh lobe, yeah, okay. His frontal <laughs> You're over lobe, my head a little bit, <laughs> which is okay. <laughs> Uh, do, do you recirculate the whirl, wart like a whirlpool at the same time you use an immersion chiller? Uh, it's not bad. I mean, it's, it's definitely it's it's definitely not a bad thing to do because um, you're making sure that the the wart is flowing through the the coils of the the immersion chiller. Now, clay will tell you that manual stirring beats any kind of whirlpool from any pump or anything like that. So, either manual agitation is the best the number Thanks, one but Kyle. then second to that would be doing like a whirlpool with a with a pump or whatever would be would be fine kyle clark says miss you guys <clears throat> um Netanel, um copper is significantly more conductive yep yep mm -hmm. absolutely and then ronald he's going to do an ipa for his bros but he okay. likes porter stouts the darker beers so, okay um where can they find a grain recipe where do um i don't one? um ronald i don't know if you if you have heard of brew father but it's actually a free brewing software that's very, very nice, very, very good um, to use, and it's free. I mean, it, there's there are some subscription versions of it, but you could use the base version free, and then it does have some recipe. They have they have like a whole recipe database in there. Cool. Um, you could also look up. I mean, I've shared that's a lot of different you, recipes yeah, out there. That's what I was wondering. So you could you could look us up on. You could share the, this oh, one. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to. And then Larry, he said I yep. whirl pull in the opposite direction of coils <clears throat> while yep. chilling. Yep. Am I retired? Terry semi-retired. Good for you. Yeah. Research engineer. No, Larry has Larry has awesome spread. It was kind of funny because I, I inputted Larry's Larry's <laughs> no, recipe. Uh, uh, well, I will tell you, Larry, I input your recipe from your spreadsheet into Brewfather, and like literally everything was exactly like Picture matched perfect. up almost perfectly. Mm -hmm. I mean, as far as the numbers and stuff go. I can't imagine Larry not doing. No, no, I, I, I knew I, I didn't have <laughs> any doubt. Like I'm just saying it's like you know. Perfectionist. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> 40k sub did you remember me hello nice memory dude then thanks <laughs> hey you know i have a i do have a really good memory she can tell you that I, I have a really good memory and i remember people and a lot of things so okay, you know, and larry's like spreadsheet thing. is incredibly <laughs> comprehensive CO. stirring also yeah now yeah i was going to say um, um the stirring and introducing uh oxygenation to the wart you definitely want to do that when you get closer to pitching temperature because of the fact that um, you yeah. know that you don't want to introduce too much oxygen to, to hot wort. Okay, so we're a lot of people here. say hot side aeration doesn't exist, but I, I beg to differ on that. What's that? Um, we're at one fifty two, but okay. Yeah, I, th I thought this? something was going to happen. And there it goes. Oh, you know what? It's the pizza. Oh, okay. I feel it. Okay. It's happening. Let me turn this down one. All right, so we're. Let me uh, let's get another let's get another shot of the of the mash done here. All right, let's take a look at what we got here. 
Oh yeah, that's looking good. And then it's it's actually, if you can see, it's nice and clear too. I mean, it's it's cleared up a bunch. I mean, what we're what we're going to be getting out of this should be nice, good, clear wort. It's kind of brown right now. We're going to add the the um, the dark grains here shortly, and we'll do that. We're going to do that the last 15 minutes. We got 19 minutes to go before we add those grains. So, yep, looking good, looking good for sure. Uh, Larry's doc from Back to the Future is wicked smart. What well, does that now, Beer Koi, Does that make me Marty McFly? What, <laughs> what, what, what am I to Larry's Doc Brown? <laughs> or am I? I'm, I'm Biff, or I'm, I'm I, just tell me I'm Biff, right? Yeah. Why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? <laughs> oh man, you guys are killing me. Hello, McFly. <laughs> that's awesome biff <laughs> thanks brian i knew i could count on you <laughs> or maybe i'm maybe i'm uh don't be a biff yeah maybe i'm uh uh what was marty's dad's name i can't remember <laughs> you are my density <laughs> was that what was his name gosh darn i can't remember now George, that's right, yeah, George McFly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mm. You are my density. Oh, man. Good movies. Good movies for sure. I got to get another beer. Mm. My beer to brewing ratio is off. get a wood wood i got show heck yeah no well, here no it's not from scratch here, let me do this let me put it on the other camera over there and you can go, go over there by the <laughs> max no seriously go over there it's not i didn't make it from scratch or anything no, go over there, show them. okay here we go where right there over top of the match ton okay right there look up it's up right straight up above you there it is yeah <laughs> there it is <laughs> okay we just need some space man this is like awesome can you clear it yeah, let there's me, uh, something. Get this stuff out of the way. We have this I big always make room for pizza. Crap everywhere. Okay. For sure. Good thing they don't see this view. Yeah, right. I know it's Dude. a mess over here. Yep. Okay, cool. I'm oh, showing them that view. Meow. Woohoo! Yeah, no kidding. I was hungry too. <laughs> <laughs> I am too. What what, uh, what kind of pizza square. is that? Mm. Is it like um, a tombstone? It is. Um, oh crap! Because I looked at like four different ones. Yeah, this is a thinner crust. I'm gonna go look because I almost got a DiGiorno. Well, <laughs> well, here's the deal. It's for one fourth of it, it's 18 grams of fat. The other stuff was like one fifth, 25 grams of fat. So anyway, I added fat when I added more pepperoni anyhow. We need to make it from scratch, babe. That kind of it's stuff I could give a less shite sodium. about. <laughs> well, I'm not carrying today. <laughs> Noopy whoopy. <laughs> Yeah, right. Actually, that's a single serving. Terry says that's a single serving dish part. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a that's a personal pizza there, isn't it, guys? <laughs> she definitely doctored it up, though. She put some um, in the uh, in the garden this past year. Uh, we grew banana peppers, and I did um, uh, I did some I pickled them. They were so good. So she put some of those on there, and then more pepperoni and some bacon. So yeah, I mean, I, dude, you can't go wrong with that. So. So we're going to make you a little hungry here, but <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. Right. So what's Kelly going to eat? I, I don't know. She'll, yeah. She's having all these calories per slice and I, you know, I could really help her out. I'll just, you know what? I'll just eat the whole thing and then you don't have to worry about it at all. <laughs> and it's red baron. Mm. I had to go look cause I don't get that that often. Red baron. That's right. Mm. Gonna see that's the old, that's the old go to the right? area soon. It's gonna come and if that's not enough, door. we got a like a monster. We bought a giant box of uh, Totina's pizza rolls from Sam's the other day. <laughs> gotta live. Throw some of those in the air fryer. If you if you never had uh, Totino's pizza rolls in the air fryer, you're missing out. Let me tell you. I'm cutting them in squares. Good, good stuff. That's fine. Because it's fun. Good stuff for sure. 
<laughs> Brian Harkin said, what are you going to eat? <laughs> this. I know. I'm probably going to have two pieces and a banana. <laughs> oh, <laughs> have a man. liquid diet today. Why not? Okay. Yeah, we're still, yeah, we're 157, so yeah, probably by the time you figure the temperature change from the top of the mash to the bottom of the mash tun, we're probably averaging 150, 155, 156, something like that. Oh, thanks, Ronald. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Ooh, the much crust appreciated. came out good. I'm proud. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I lived on Red Barons uh, and pizza tools, uh, pizza rolls for every. Yep, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Nothing wrong with that. Mmm, so tough. Oops, All right. I don't want to crunch. No, nah, that's fine. Crunch, crunch. I didn't even have breakfast. Mm. Excuse me, I didn't even have breakfast this morning. I had a couple. Of I baked a couple of loaves of sourdough this morning. I had a couple of pieces of toast from that, but I didn't have breakfast this morning. I was like, I was hurting for certain. That's all right. I was down here messing with all this stuff, trying to get, trying to remember everything and get all the stuff back, uh, get all the stuff back in place. And I have a couple, a couple of new things like the, the mount for the. Um, for the that camera oh. is new it's like a little mounting arm so it works better than than some of the other stuff so that's good yeah it is good it's got a little heat to it too doesn't it mm -hmm. what'd you put on it what'd you do banana pepper and mint yeah but they weren't hot though were they i did uncured bacon or uncured um pepperoni oh okay maybe that's what it is mm. sure is good yeah little caesar's hot and ready it leaves a little bit to be desired sometimes for sure <laughs> And then, did you? Is this the cup pepperoni, or is this just regular? Uncured. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's my favorite. And the the Hormel, the the Thank cup. You, that's yep. So nice. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, Larry's got a good idea. Pour on some of his hot sauce. <laughs> Amen to that. That's some good stuff. Mm-hmm. I actually drank it our last video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. No, thank you, Ronald. It's, it's uh, it, you, you're doing well. You're doing real well. No, it's it's a lot of fun. I mean, it, you know, you you can see that uh, we have a lot of people that chat and all kind of stuff like that, and people ask. You know, the, the great thing about it is, especially the live streams. You know, it's like. People ask questions and people answer. I answer, you know. I certainly don't have all the answers, but there's a lot of people out there that may know. So you got people on here. Been to the states it. twice and still haven't tried the pizza, even after seeing so much about it. Oh, come on, Leo! Come on, Leo! <laughs> you gotta try it. Whoops! I just crunched. Mm. I'm gonna turn off again. <laughs> We're out of the camera view anyway, so. Pizza pause. You're like, um, you're like home improvement. Where you're, like, you're the, what was the guy's name that was always just looking over the fence? You could just see his eyes. Oh, the neighbor. Right. I don't know what his name was. Wilson or something else. <laughs> mm, that's good. You're heard and not seen. Pizza pause. <laughs> Pizza. There good. you are. There I'm out. <laughs> I just want one more mm. little edge thing with a crunch. Oh, there's my banana pepper. Exactly. Wilson, yep. Well, his name was Wilson. Mm. <laughs> Northwest Small Batch Brewing says, turn your mic off before you use the bathroom, Carly. Absolutely. <laughs> I take the whole thing off and put it on the couch to make sure it's all off of me. <laughs> Not happening. <laughs> you just hear me sing. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, I, I, think, I think I am um, G60 guy. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know of anything else that I would really do to it. Um, well, hold that thought. There's going to be, there will be one improvement. I can't really say anything about it yet, but there will be one improvement that's coming. Um, I'm going to get a new haircut. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yep. That's what it's all about. Now there's, there's something, there's something on the horizon from, from, uh, the manufacturer of this system. 
but it won't be it won't be a drastic change so oh that was good hallelujah yeah it can be nick for sure which as a question nick i don't know how many three vessel <laughs> system owners there are out there but i have contemplated over the last couple of years doing a like a start to finish how to video on brewing on the three vessel system would would you would you uh enjoy that content yeah thanks thanks nick Mm. Stephen said, yes, it is, Nick. Yeah. On your grain mill, uh, is that the small... Yeah, that's, that's the small like stand. It. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Brian Harkin says, yep. <clears throat> okay, cool. Cool. All right. Awesome. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll work on putting that video out. Gam dirt. It's just fun to set. Mm -hmm. Pruitt. Yes, very much. Um, was it with Nick? No, Pro, not, a, not, a, not a bottom drain, Nat to know. Um, who was it asked that question? I'm trying to remember who it was. Um, okay, yeah, Nick. Okay. Yep. Yep, he's right there. Yep. Um, <coughs> the hardest part was so, like, how does this all go together? I felt yeah. that way before. <laughs> yeah, so Nick, one, one thing, and, and I know you, I think you just got here, but if you, once the stream is over, if you go back and take watch the first part of the video i kind of explain what i do i mean that, that may help you out in the, a little bit in the interim <laughs> until i can make the video but um that what i explained how i do it um as far as heating up the water and all that stuff that may help you out a little bit the the hardest part of hmm. the herm system is all the hoses i mean that that literally is the mm -hmm. that's the toughest part it's what you always look at and wish they were color coded or something what a mouse was it a mouse? No, that that fan just went like this. I don't know. We have somebody visiting. I burped and it went like that. Well, I can imagine. It that. wasn't that forceful. You shake the earth with one of those. <laughs> so, G60 guy, is your piece mealed together or outright bought? Is yours? Mm. It's a bunch of stuff. It's it's piece mealed together, so to speak. I built the control panel myself. And I had the Blickman mash tun. I had a couple other really cheap kettles to start with. And then I've recently upgraded to both Blickman boil kettle, hot liquor tanks, and all that stuff. Yeah, right, Leo. Ghost. But um, it is kind of piece. And I, I got the table, shortened the legs, put the wheels on. Um, ben Franklin. Also, because of the fact that it's a, it's a prep table and not like an equipment table, I put... Uh, two by ten board underneath to stiffen it up because it, they they'll sag in the middle if not. So what kind of mushrooms are on that? <laughs> there are no mushrooms, but I know what you're saying. Hallucinogenic <laughs> mushrooms. I know. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Bobby, you're not drinking drugs again, are you? <laughs> Come on, Dad. <laughs> you know hmm. me. Uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, running the hoses is like a puzzle. Yep, I have a 20 gallon yeah, SS Tech system. Yep, with a unit tank. Yep, good setup for sure. Uh, Spike side been looking into electric system for some time, and I think this may be the one. Hang it, Bobby. We're in Hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That is no end. <laughs> oh, hi. Them kids are out behind the trailer huffing that propane again. <laughs> Is that what they're doing? <laughs> I thought they were talking. Oh yeah, that's a that's a Home Depot find there. That Bengals, but I'm not a Bengals fan. But they had them for like a dollar at Home Depot. What I was in there one time. I'm like, oh, oh I'll take one. It's a big thing lately. I saw Cold Crash in with without, without suck back. Um, sick back. I said sick. No, back. I know what he's talking oh, about. Oh yes, okay. Typo. What type of what type of fermenter do you have? I'm like. You can run boiling boiling wort through the riptide, Francisco. There's no problem with it at all. <laughs> no, no, Brookside. I'm, I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a Bengals fan. I'm just. It. It was. It was just a cheap bucket. So. <laughs> I sell propane and propane accessories. <laughs> and you do a very good job. Eh? Mm. Our daughter recently bought a. Uh, box set of that we've been watching them periodically from time to time <laughs> i love it 
Yeah, I mean, it's all stainless steel, too, so it's like there's no there's no problem. And the impeller is, is uh, rated for boiling, so. The only thing with it is, you know, you can have some cavitation sometimes <laughs> depending on how the, where you're outletting <laughs> stuff for your kettle is. She's 60 well, guy. Propane, propane accessories. <laughs> yep. Another fan. Yep. Okay, Francisco said was always worried. Thanks. Oh, I went with the electric brewery uh, recommended. Truick. So, um, one of the things that you might look at would be, and I've done this before, when you get close to the end of your fermentation, get either like a mylar balloon or a large uh, um, latex balloon and put it over top of your airlock. Let it fill up with CO2 from the, from the fermentation and it'll, it'll fill up pretty good. I mean, it, you know, there's no, no doubt about that. And then when you do your cold trash, when it, when the, everything water. contracts inside, it's just going to suck in the CO2 from that balloon. It, that's probably the lowest tech, easiest solution you could find. If you're using a blow off tube, just make sure that you put a, you know, put, put it on the hose or whatever and clamp it down. But yeah, I mean, that, that literally is the easiest way to do it. And I've done it before, no problem. And even if you, even if like you forgot to do it and you're not having a lot of active fermentation, you can take your CO2 tank and blow the, the balloon up and just hold it and put it on there and do that. So yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's no problem at all. And you saw Pruek, okay. And then Stefan, boiling Francis. Francisco. Oh, he was talking to Francisco. Mm -hmm. Okay. I get endless six gallon buckets once they're. Okay. I thought they used clay pots when you were in the military. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's probably the lowest tech, easiest solution that, that you can you can do, quite honestly. Um, uh, brew hardware. Wow, I live at 8,000 feet and yeah. water boils at 197. Brew hardware makes something called a. No problem. Cold Crash Guardian. It's an elaborate setup of a blow-off tube with a with a um, one-way valve that it fills up a, a bladder, um, and then once the bladder's filled up and it builds up enough pressure, then it goes turns into a blow-off tube. It works, but I mean, it's it's one of those things where it's like it doesn't. Uh, oh, Larry, that's so. They're funny. always out of stock and they're we hard to find. To now, I, um, we I did keep apples. I don't know. If, I don't know. Mm -hmm. if, you know, this is recommended or not but I, I did see somebody said that they they use uh Great i guess a, like a catheter Great. bag <laughs> oh yeah hopefully it wasn't used not used <laughs> <laughs> even if it wasn't it kind of ruins the whole experience unless you're desperate <laughs> larry said that was great drink great drink <laughs> exactly <laughs> you can get your swerve on now larry <laughs> <clears throat> um alonzo the my opinion on the bruzella all-in-one system they're, they're good they're good systems Oh, yeah. Nothing wrong with them at all. I mean, I've got, I've got a lot of videos on them, and I'll probably do some more Look, videos at some point. He looks like Picard. Very close resemblance. <laughs> Just don't drink the prism. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't don't drink the prism while it wine. <laughs> uh, no, not a good idea. <laughs> Bobby, don't drink that. You don't know where it's been. Oh, Dad, it looks <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Did you need another piece? Are you good? No, I'm good. Okay. Where are we at? Yeah, you thought the channel took a turn earlier. It's really going going south now. Precisely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you did answer that with a Brazilla all-in-one. <laughs> Brian has the voice spot on. I know, it's crazy. Yeah, I've had plenty of practice. We've been watching Kelly episodes. Tries. It's like, you know. it's hilarious. I have to be a supporter mm. person. Yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you saw that, right? You Did you just answer that one? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's what mm -hmm. I thought. Okay, good. Yep. Cool beans. Bacon funnel. Can't waste it. Whoop. This is a... <laughs> Banana pepper. All hmm. right, how are we doing here? Hmm, interesting. Yeah. It's, it's bounced not, around between right. 157 and 156. That's what I was looking at. Probably due to the volume of... Um, how much grain and Volume of liquid in and the grain yeah. and all that stuff. Uh -huh. This has got a better thermal effect. Oh. All right, here we are. You're going to blow up. We're 15 minutes away from uh, the end of the mash, so it's time to put the dark grains in. We'll go ahead and... 
do, 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 do. There we go. Beautiful. All right. All right. Now, what should we do? Should we just pour them in there, Larry, and just let them let them uh, mix in, or should we turn the recirculation off and and uh, stir them in? What do you think? Maybe you went to the bathroom. I'm just kidding. Yeah, right. I stirred them in. Okay. Okay. Turn off. Turn off the Ooh. water pump over there. Okay. I can't see. Okay. This is water pump. Yeah. I know. It's just okay. my eyes. It's just blurry. Okay. Um, we need. So there's there's not much. It's it's just a little bit. So if you want to stir them in. Yes, I do. Stir, Ooh. baby, stir. Look at that. That is black like coffee. That is absolute. Oh my gosh, that smells so amazing. Holy crap! This is yeah. Oh my gosh. A little compacted there. Oh, I feel like it's bricks. Okay, we're good. I'm doing it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> don't stir down too far because we don't want to disturb the grain. Bed, okay. That's what I was just going to ask. That's so funny. Okay. Uh, just stay on the top. So we're good down mm -hmm. there and just make sure this mm -hmm. just yeah, gets... Yeah, just make sure they're all saturated and stuff. No. Is there any hops in this at all? Mm -hmm. Not, not yet. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. But what is it? What, what are the hops we're using? Um, Col uh, Columbus and Northern oh. Brewer. Wow, Columbus is piney, right? A little bit, but that, it's hmm. it's like the recipe is like 38 IBUs, which is actually yeah, a little bit bad. below style guidelines, but yeah. it's going to keep it from being too bitter. So right, that's that's good. Absolutely. All right, so like let's uh, kind of let's whack this thing back on. Okay, so we're fine. Yep, we're good. I just want to get off the paddle okay. into the mash. Okay. Here, do this. Let's do this. Oh, rinse it. Rinse it off. Yeah. Little trick of the trade. Tricky Ricky. Let me flip it over. Uh-huh. Flip it over. Hit me on both sides. Okay. All right, there we go. Okay, little good. We're good. All right. Oh! Sorry. It's not a party until you hit the lid. That's right. Oh, man. YouTube needs that smell of vision I know. I want to get a spoon. I have to try it. <laughs> That's a paddling. <laughs> hmm. Good. It went black. There we go. Yeah, oh yeah, right. It's because you're drinking the, uh, put a few PSI into Conical to transfer to Courtney's and force carb rocking method room temp through PSI. Did I miss a question, maybe? Yeah, you're, I know your mash was definitely thick. Yep, for sure. Top mashing. Nick said disturbing the grain bed. He said that's that's a paddling. Uh oh. Well, you might want to let that cool a little bit. But. Brian, I know how to blow on shit, <laughs> honey. I far be it for me to mm. ridicule your blowing technique. Brian, <laughs> I'm gonna smack you. You, you opened the door. No, what I, I didn't. Feel like, it's like you a, need so to I'm close not supposed to walk right door. through it. You need to close the door. <laughs> <laughs> Want to try some? Sure. It's really good, and I'm chewing it too. It's really like, mm. oh my gosh! You know, that's like cereal. I could eat mm. that every morning. Yeah, that's good, for sure. It's hitting my hat. <laughs> I don't even want to look now. I'm not looking. <laughs> not looking. <laughs> I said I'm gonna go watch Down mm. Abbey. Y'all, y'all, peace out. He said Nick said I didn't walk through the door. I just crashed through it like the Kool Aid Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, low hanging fruit. I, I, you know, I can't resist. What are you, what are you gonna do? Yeah. <sighs> Over here trying to stay vertical. We got smack of vision. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> A whole other type of channel. <laughs> That's not this one. <laughs> Leo says, I've got to go uh -huh. sort the kids in bed. Okay, all right, all right, Leo. We'll all see right, you. Leo, see you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being here. Tell the missus yep, hi. Absolutely. Tell them kids you have new content to watch now. Brian, stop. Oh, I'm talking about he's, because they, they said oh. that he was, okay. He was uh, <laughs> watching. Oh, mm, those banana peppers. Nope. Holy moly. Good stuff. Good stuff for sure. They are absolutely delish, especially with the um, pepperoni. Oh, it's smelling good. It's smelling mm. good. For sure. Dude. Yep, yep. Huh. 
Oh, where'd you go? We both left the camera. I know. I took the, uh, went to go get the, the Easy Dens. I'm grabbing another brouhaha. I need a... Ow. I need some ice. You need ice? Yeah. For... In a container or something. Um, you give me some ice out of the freezer yeah. there. Yeah. In this. I do cool the sample down. I was just okay. going to take, I was going to take like a oh, free boil, okay. free boil like, gravity reading. When does this stuff normally come in? Yeah. I guess our banter must have run everybody off. We're down to 97 people watching oh, now. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I offended him, I guess. <laughs> mm. No, she's out partying while he's got the kids, uh, Leo said. <laughs> oh, really? Aww. Uh, good night, Matilda. Mm. Mm. How much, Brian? Like, just a fifth? Yeah, just enough to just okay. not, you don't have to fill it up, just because right. I'm going to put some water in there, yes. too. Okay. So. Anyway. No, I'm good. Can you get, actually, can you get some yeah. more ice in that? Uh-huh. Mm. Throw the Anton Parr Easy Dens off the boil, ch boil kettle there. Yep. I'll tell you, the boy ain't right. Here. All right. Time to take a gravity reading. See what uh, see what we got here. A little stir. What's the prediction, Larry? I don't know. I don't. I don't know why um, <laughs> it said you were spamming. I don't know what. The, I guess maybe it was the multiple, multiple emojis or something like that. Sorry about that. I, I don't know what the setting what is on that thing. You want a propane and propane accessories? <laughs> you need to do That's that. That's what I sell. A little clip on the end. That's right. Frosty mug. Beautiful. All right. Here we go. Okay. <coughs> okay, so now for gravity, 1.075 SG pre-boil. Pre-boil? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we haven't sparged yet, so let's see. Right. We'll see where we are here. Where? You gotta be oh, careful, because if this, I can't have like freaking 12 or something. I'm with it. Ugh. I like to enjoy my beer, not fall okay, down right after I sniff it. Oh, shit. Ah. Oh, you want to drink that? I would have. Okay. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Woo, gosh. Yeah. I just tripped over my own. My you want to catch the. It's sticky the on the bottom coming? of my soul, huh? Sticky on the bottom of your soul? You want to yeah. catch the. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, it just, there's a real sticky place right there. I'm a okay. Let me, uh, let me show you where we are that there. That thing is so cool. Folks. Let me set this over here so it doesn't get all over the place. Oh, my neck. I'll, say, I'll show you where we are. Any guesses? Come on, guess away. Mellow man. All right, here we go. 
Ooh, that's delicious. 1.085 is where we are. 1080. I think we should be pretty close. Oh my gosh. Especially if I'm only sparging with like two and a half gallons according to the to the system, but Yeah, that's uh, it it actually I, I chilled I chilled the um, I chilled the sample down, Larry. So it's it was I used the Anton Par Easy Dens. And it's it's uh 83 degrees, the sample's 83 degrees, and it, it came out at uh, 1.085. I think so. Doesn't the Anton Par adjust for temperature? I don't know. It, does, it has the 2020 set on it. What do you mean by the 2020 set? 2020 set? Yeah, it, it's, let us see here. See you can see the the little circle up there. They changed the, the app, the little <laughs> circle up there at the top oh, by the 1085 says 2020. Did you see that? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that was all about. Mm -mm. It was deleted, so. Yeah, there's a there's a new one um, that's a little bit cheaper, I think. That they they I mean, it's still not cheap, but they've dropped the price on it quite a bit. All right. So Larry said, "Oh, there it is." Alonzo would love to have an easy guns, but too rich for my blood. I understand that. I you know I I probably I don't know that I would would it have bought one. I mean, they sent me one, but. Uh -uh. I think Anton Parr just has to be below eighty five. Yeah, I, th I think that's right because you know if you, if you try to take a sample and, and measure it above that, it it certainly um, it tells you that you're outside of the temperature range. So Larry I didn't get a warning on that. So he bought his on sale for Black Friday. Okay. Be patient, a little more month. Yep. Capital LOL. All right. Okay. Larry agreed, eighty-five or less, or it'll be wrong. Yep. <coughs> there he is. Okay. Oh, let me switch it back to the other. There goes here. Terry. Yep. <laughs> this engineering. <laughs> I yep. love it. Thank you, Terry. It's good to be specific. Like it. I was well within the specifications for this here scientific device. Oh, Dad, we never doubt it. Thanks, Bobby. <laughs> Is it weird that I can like relate to a small boy? I don't know. I Maybe it's in my soul. Maybe so. It is kind of weird, but I just love hey, that whatever. Show. Tech support at your service. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you? Thank you. I want to try to. What? Well, well. uh, I'm gonna just want to pour out, out what residual water is in here. Yeah. But I don't want to take that? it all the way over to the sink. Okay. So. No, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna oh, dump you're it. doing it that way. Yeah, I'm just gonna dump it this way. Yeah. The dump way. Yep. I think. Maybe not. Well. No, Maybe not. Um. Well, I'll just do you have it. a straw? I mean, no, I'll just take it over uh, there. Never mind. It's fine. Okay. Larry said same for refractometers too. What's that? He said same for refractometers. Larry. Yeah, yeah, yep. All right, there we go. Oh, Kurt Peck said, have a wonderful brew day. See you soon. Thanks, All right. Kurt. You too. Are, thank have you. a great day. Thank you. Thank and you. I love your icon picture. Yum. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Okay, why am I holding this? I don't know. We don't need it anymore. Okay, I'm putting it over here. I don't know. I it's don't know. It's going to live right <clears throat> here. Yes, thanks, Kurt. Appreciate it. Uh, look at the brew day sheet. 1077 on the pre boil. Okay, I got you. Yeah, I set mine. I set mine for sixty percent. So, yep. Okay, that was assuming sixty percent. Um, I don't I know. See. Honestly, Brian, I, I, I don't 
know what the smart, I'm assuming it's a smart refractometer. I'm assuming it's probably the same type of thing. I don't, I don't know. I have not seen what you're talking about, so I don't know oh, for sure. Interesting. Well, that's what happens. You step away for almost a year and all kinds of new stuff comes out. Um, what's the, Brian Harkin says, what's the difference between easy dance? I just answered Oh, that. okay. That's what I thought. <laughs> I got one for Christmas and haven't had a chance to use it yet. The Francisco. smart, the smart ref or the easy dance? Which one, Francisco? <clears throat> Too hard to keep up with ever changing gadgets and beer stuff. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, smart ref. Francisco. Okay, yeah, I, I haven't. I'll have to look that I up. Haven't I haven't even looked that at yet. that. Really? Okay, uh -uh. me either. But this is your deal. Okay. At Green, okay. Oh, okay, so it measures refraction and the easy den is density. Okay, I got you. Okay, oh. that makes sense. Hence the name, right? Mm -hmm. Easy den, smart ref. You would have one of each, right? Do I have one of each? We would. Oh, I no. mean, you could use one of each. Oh, David, okay. I must not have seen that one. <coughs> of course David did a video on it. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. He did it three years ago, Brian. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Probably did. Let's see here. How much time we got? Did you get enough pizza? Oh. <laughs> Are you full? Yeah. What? It says the mash was complete. Now, Larry, did you do a, did you do a raise for mash out uh, step, or did you just sparge from there? Francisco Thanks, said Larry. it has automatic temp compensation. Yep, yep. cool. <coughs> and then smart ref <coughs> is just a dig refract, refractometer. Easy to okay. use ultrasonics. Well, we'll, we'll crank it up to okay. do a mash out step here. Raise it up. A dig refractometer. Larry said, yes, I did mash out step. Yep. All right, we'll let her rip. And Jana's, how do I say that? Jana's? Uh, wow, look at all the Z's. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure Smart how to. Smart is more versatile since it can be. Zuckatech? Yep. One is, one is Zuckatech? I don't know. One is? Is that I how don't, we I don't say know. it? I don't know if the J is sound or not. I'm not sure. For brewing, the Easy Den seems better. Mm. Having a fest to be there. Makes sense. By oh, thanks, Francisco. Stefan is drinking. Fest. Is that uh, a sour? No, Fest beer is like a... Oh, like uh, a German... Yeah, it's like yeah. a um, Oktoberfest. Yeah, yeah Something right. like that. Delish. There's there's different styles of Fest beer. Than I'm just to be having a light fest, lager. Low there's, cal there's to some that are, pizza. <laughs> there's some that are lighter in color than a Oktoberfest. Mm. I'm having a... I guess it's an IP... It's a Palo or an IP... I don't know what you would classify it as. It's a Brewdog Light Speed. Francisco just yeah. sent a link. Yep. <clears throat> Almond Dex 3. Is it okay um, that you mash temp? That is just, that's just a, a reading, like a set point on Are there. Are you reading his? Yeah, okay. yeah, Almond Deck. Yep. Um, that's just a set point on there. Like that, that PID can be used to control an SSR. That is just, a, that's just a set point on there. So like I can, I can go over here and I can, I can change there. it to like, yeah, I, I can do it to, how the heck do I say that? you know, I can change this and it doesn't do anything, but it has the capability of, it, it's kind of a dumb PID where it, it's just a temperature reader is all it does. So that's all it is. Yeah, see, man, you can see I put it to 163 and it, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't do anything. I could, if I wanted to, change the temperature probe from, um, from the, the um, or change the, the input or output, whatever, of the temperature probe where it read the mash ton for the hot liquor tank. But I like, I prefer mm. having a temperature reading in the hot liquor tank and then one at the, the mash. Uh, input. I like the input better because like the original design <coughs> from Electric Brewery, he has a input at the or he has a sensor at the bottom, like the output of the mash tun. But I feel like that, um, you know, I feel like that it's. Uh, I would rather know what the temperature is going in over top of the grain just to make sure that I'm not doing any kind of you know get, getting overheated. Uh, yes, I am still recirculating through the mash coil. Yep, 
and I'm raising the temperature up basically to like 170 for a mash out. It'll take a little bit of time for the for the uh, the mash tun to pick to catch up, but it'll Stephen it'll catch said, up. Eventually. Glad that style found its fans across the sea. Mm -hmm. Elementary uh, Brewing Company. Us beers are delicious. Oh, I bet they're still recirculating from the mash coil. Question. Yep. Yes. And you can see the the mash tun mm -hmm. PID is flashing, so it's like it, right. it it is trying to engage an SSR, but there's nothing for it to do. That's mm -hmm. why it's flashing. It's thinking it's supposed to. Um, it always makes me feel like something's going something wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Help me. <clears throat> Elementary. Hey Brian, he's back, or he's commenting again. Blackwood Brews. Mm -hmm. Time we got here. It is just oh. finished assembling 30 amp. Okay, cool, awesome. Did you did you happen to use <laughs> any of my video to do that at Eastern. all? <laughs> Out of curiosity. Yeah, I mean it. it it'll be, you know, make sure you make sure you do uh, auto tune and all that stuff. You know, follow the directions on that to do the auto tune and get everything get everything tuned up where it's uh, where the temperatures are accurate and the PID learns the system heating and all that stuff. So, yeah, make sure you do all that stuff and it'll be, you'll, you'll have, you'll have a lot of fun brewing with it for sure. For sure. <clears throat> uh, did you brew them? Oh, in March. Okay. <laughs> uh, what do you think of the spike trio versus the Blickman three vessel system you have? Um, I, 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 I don't, I don't see a ton of difference between the two of them. I mean, there's there's some subtle differences, like, you know, depending on whether you want to get, and even Blickman has the, the tri-clam now, you know, I mean, it, it kind of just depends on who you're a fan of, I guess, really. I mean, it's really the, the only thing I can say, because they're, they're both they're both three-vessel systems. They both do basically the same thing. I mean, you know, I do like I do like the, the boil coil over the ripple element, just because of the fact it leaves you more options for chilling, like if you want to do immersion chiller or something like that, it does leave you a little more options for that. Um, the boil coils are a little less wattage density, not that ripple elements are not low wattage density, but the boil coil is even lower wattage density than the, than the ripple element. So as far as, you know, scorching stuff or whatever, it's, it's, uh, you have less of a chance there. Um, what else? I didn't know if I was a real big fan of the linear flow valves originally on the, the new Blickman kettles, but I actually do like them. I, I've grown to like them. I, I left them on there and I'm like, cause I was going to swap them out when I got the kettles, but I've left them on there and, <clears throat> and I've actually, I like them. I think they're, you know, as far as proportionally being able to control the, the flow and everything they work really well. So, you know, it kind of, kind of comes back to, you know, what, who you, who you're a fan of, you know, that's, that's really, that's about really, the gist of it right there. I mean, what what uh, what company do you do you like over the other? Because I don't I don't think you go wrong with either one of them. Honestly, I really don't. And they both have good customer service. I, you know, I I know I know John from Blickman. I know Ben from from Spike. And I, you know, I don't have anything bad to say about either one of those guys. Both yep, both good guys. So. Yeah, Larry, it's like it's it's something you kind of it takes a little bit of getting used to, but they're they're so infinitely adjustable that it's really nice. Have you used your sling, huh? Sling laser? Oh, sling, sling element, the sling blade element. <clears throat> I've actually done a comparison video on the sling blade versus the ripple elements. Yeah, <laughs> it took me a second there. I got I I, I figured it was autocorrect. Probably took over. Yeah, exactly. I do like the sling blade for the, the simple fact of like the same reason why I like the boil coil. Um, the only thing I think maybe they might would be nice if they would update on the boil coil would be if they would do a non-proprietary connector for it okay. because, huh? The only one that matters is the HLT. Right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yep. No, and the and the you know if you got if you have the, the tri clamp on your kettle or you know you do a weldless tri clamp I think those I mean they they're really nicely you know you can take them out clean them and all that stuff so 
have to admit that I cheat. I have tri-clamp kettles, but use a quick disconnect adapters. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I, you know, I, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I've always thought that uh, tri-clamps are, you know, mainly for professional brewers and stuff, and they don't really have a whole lot of place in the, in the home brewing arena. But, you know, after you have a couple, you take a couple of valves apart and clean them and all that kind of stuff, you kind of, you, you learn to maybe appreciate a little bit of the, the, um, the, the ease of cleaning of tri-clamp valves and connections and all that kind of stuff. There's no threads or anything like that, but it's, you know, it's like, even we're going to, we're going to ferment this in the, in the G4 fermenter. There are so many tri-clamps, <laughs> gaskets. I mean, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, if you, if you tear it all down and clean it all like thoroughly clean everything, it's like an hour. I mean, it's an hour of cleanup. It's, it's unreal. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Especially if you brew. Like yeah. I mean, if you, you know, do a CIP and let it do all that and then you rinse it out and rinse that out and then you take it apart and clean all this stuff out. It's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. It is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. This is the, this is what we're going to ferment in, by the way. The, uh, yeah, right. If you if you notice, I got the the, the uh, chilling coil elevated up out of there. I did that mainly so that the top would be open, and uh, it would it would let all the air out. Because I found that if you clean these things, even if you dry them out and try to let them dry out and all that kind of stuff, they just they still can develop like funkiness in them. So yeah. it's like one of those things where it's like. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Oh. Caught the wire there. Can you just pull it that way? Yeah. Over there. Oh, not that one. No. The other one. Don't pull too hard because it's a USB Ooh, connection. Wire <laughs> Sorry. Now the the cheat code for the chilling coils definitely is the is the quick connects. So like this thing is full of glycol right now, but it's not it won't leak because it's I've got those fittings on there. That's definitely the cheat code on that stuff. Let's see, and I'll, I'm not going to ferment this under pressure. What I'll do is I'll basically, I'll put the spunding, there's a spunding valve that's on there, and I'll just basically use it like a positive pressure system, if you will. It'll probably have like maybe a half a PSI or one or two PSI on there, and um, that'll be it. It won't, it won't, I won't do it under pressure, but it, it'll just work like an airlock without any kind of an airlock. I don't really, I don't sweat the small stuff anymore with doing the, uh, doing beers and things like that. I don't, you know, I just let them ferment and let them go. So yeah, it looks pretty good still. We'll, we'll spray it down with some, uh, right. Star sand and all that stuff, but everything looks good. So it's over there. Put this over here. I'm not ready yet. We'll wait till we get closer to being done. Okay, <laughs> we're about to start. We're about to start uh, sparging here in a minute. So it was good. It was good. Definitely good. Can't go wrong with the Red Baron, for sure. Mhm. Mm it's good. Good stuff for sure. Oh, bump. Let me move it back over there so it's not in the way. Yep. <coughs> um, till it's done and whatever the ambient temperature is in the basement, which is probably about 67 degrees, something like that. So it just depends on yeah. the temperature of the environment. Yep. And, but what, how many days do you think that would be? Or um, would with this beer, it probably it's going to be at least probably 10 or 12 days to just okay. initially ferment. But then with this, with this like high gravity of a beer, I will let it go for probably another oh, week. Time. Just to kind of let everything clean up and all that stuff. Um, I used rice holes. Um, I probably, I might have used, I don't know, maybe a pound or 
pound, maybe pound and a half, something like that. I use like three or four big handfuls. They're really light, so it's not, you know, you know, so it's like I said, it was like four probably. Four giant handfuls is like eight. Yeah. Normal. <laughs> yeah, I would say, for, where's that picture at? Yeah, it's over here. Right there. Let me see. I don't know how many pounds it would be, but probably like two of the two of these full, two of these full, probably two of those. Look at me, because if you look at you know, because I did like four handfuls, but it worked well. Maybe okay. Well, oh yeah, I got to show you this. I got to show you guys this for sure. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I didn't get it stuck stuck uh, sparred so oh knocked it with the uh, there we go and rice balls have no impact whatsoever no no like flavor no nothing like that basically it's the it's the yeah, husk of the rice to add. look at that oh. that is looking mighty fine for and sure it's a ladle and it's contaminated yep now. <laughs> <laughs> looking good Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Dip it in there. <laughs> We've done that before. I know. <laughs> For sure. All right, so we're we're 170 now. I'm going to call that good. I'm going to go ahead and turn yeah. off both of the pumps and all that jazz. Turn off the element here. Close all the valves. Pay attention, Nick. <laughs> uh, close, close every valve. All the valves. Turn the lights off. No, I'm just kidding. Can you hear me now? I just had to turn it up because I thought it was too loud before. Okay. And then, can you grab that picture? Yes. Oh, were you turned off? No, I was on, but it was low because oh, okay. I turned it down a little. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Because I was eating again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then I'm gonna. Pull this out. Okay. So now yeah, I'm gonna hook the we can. Cool. the outlet from the. Oh, uh, Brian Harkin, you're singing my song. Yep. Okay, cool. Thanks, guys. I Everything's just turned off. Me eating another piece of pizza. <laughs> I'm saying. Mm. <laughs> so then, so Nick, I've got the the hose running from the mash tun to the mash pump. And then the outlet of the mash pump is going into the bottom of the Herms coil. I'm going to leave the Herms coil connected to the inlet on the mash tun. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to disconnect the outlet from the mash pump. And I'm going to connect it to the boil kettle. <laughs> and then we'll Make start sure doing the sparking. Yeah. Everything is turned off. Like I said. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Turn off the switches. Turn off the lights. Everything. <laughs> All, well, maybe not the lights. The though. old Victrola. Can you hold that there? Yes. So it doesn't drip everywhere. Now I will use the um, inlet for flow control into the kettle. Generally, Remember you can use the pump too. Remember what we used to too. have before? No. It wasn't the levers that you pushed down. Yeah. It was the. Those are so much nicer. Yep. Exactly. Now the. Are those the, a lot more expensive? No. Uh, no, not really. Just... So and then. Okay, you can take it off now. Okay. You can pour it in the in the. Uh, no, I can drink it over in here. There. So now I'm, I'm taking the hot liquor tank. The hose runs to the bottom of the pump. Then I'm going to take that and I'm actually going to attach it to the Herms coil. And the reason I do that is because oh my when God. I'm sparging, Whoops. I'm running Delicious. the hot water from the hot liquor tank through the Herms coil and basically cleaning it at the same time. So there's like, so when I do that, it's basically like it's 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 rinsing out the Herms coil. So whenever I get done, there's no more wart in the in the Herms coil. What's that? Oh, it's a ASMR. It's like a sound. Um, uh, I can't, it's hard to what explain. What is ASMR? Yeah, somebody explained it. I, I know I what it is, but it's stupid. Anyway, hard for me to delicious. explain. This is delicious. Brian said to pour it back in. I said no. So now I'll open both of the valves up all the way, and I'll use the the Blickman pump to control the sparge. Now I've got the sparge arm in there too, so it shouldn't overrun. But just because I'll be draining everything off pretty slow, that's what I'll do. Oh my God! Brian, you know, look this at the delicious. look at here. This is so right, right good. Just you under have to taste 14 this. gallons. 
I'm trying to explain something here. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, you got it, Dave. Good job. You got this recipe from Larry, right? Mm hmm Larry, mm -hmm. thank it's gonna be good. you. This is so good. It's going to be good. For sure. All right, so I'm going to open up. We've got all the hoses connected. Open up all the valves. Nothing's running out on the floor, so that's good. I uh, knew it. Autonomous sensory meridian response. I knew it. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Not. Of course, that was Terry. Okay, so now I'll turn on the turn on both the pumps. Thank you, Terry. And they're both like, I've got the pumps just barely open. So let me change it over to the other view so you can see. The screen shot of it all. Okay, here we go. So now, what we'll do is I'll, right. everything's, nothing's flowing into here. We're not sparging yet. Nope. So I'm actually going to open up the, the boil kettle slightly. Good so job, So we can honey. start getting the wort from the, from there. Beautiful. Do a minimal flow rate on that. And then we'll open up the valve on the sparge pump just a little bit. So we start getting some flow there. Oh, Francisco, okay. Sounds that make you feel something. Some people get a tickling sensation from the sound of people eating whispering. Oh, God. <laughs> if I was eating, I don't think so, but saying yum with that pizza, I think you would feel that one. So there we go. So we got, Mr. We got Sherman some. Mr. Sherman said that looks beautiful. We got some hot sparge water running over the the uh, grain bed right now and then this oh my god I see the, rainbows in the bubbles uh, yeah. has to be something special the Blickman sparge arm will <laughs> cut off the, the flow soap? if it gets too high why would there be rainbow colors in the bubbles? I don't know who that's knows that's like a soap thing yeah petroleum stout oh shit shoot whoopsie okay anyway I'm turning down just a little bit FedEx guy just rang the bell new CO2 tank keg arrived today woohoo Gotta love that. And we are collecting wort in the boil kettle. Congrats there, Brian Decker. Oh my gosh, that was so delicious. Can I have some more? Just kidding. Not really. <laughs> sure. Kidding, not kidding. Sorry, not sorry. Hmm. I'm trying not to bug you. You're fine. <laughs> I just feel useless. <laughs> just walk over here. Oh no, the beer is gay. What? It's happy. Oh, shit. All right. Well, that's that. Interference pattern from the light interacting with a thin wall of bubbles. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> You're the last person I'd want to talk to before going to bed. <laughs> you have broken. But I would you, appreciate she you. She tells me that all the time, so you've taken, you've taken that, that, uh, you've taken that stance now. <laughs> Like, I don't want to talk to you. I want to see him first thing in the morning, but that's the yep, last person exactly. I want to talk to before I go to bed. Yeah, But exactly. the only person I want to talk to before I go to bed. All right. See, so yeah, we're looking good, man. That's uh, <laughs> black gold. Curious why you decided to put the BK on the right furthest from the sink, thinking you could tip it over the sink. and put, That's a very smart thing. Very good point. I think we are going to rearrange next time. That's a good point, honey. No, because oh. the outlet to the... To the um, the fan is the this is the outlet to the hood right here on this side oh that's why i did it that way okay yep that makes sense too there you go there were some things in the in the garage that prevented me from putting the flipping it the other way around is it better to boil top off or top on you definitely want to boil top off, off yeah because you want to you want to off you want to off gas all the the uh, uh dme and all that stuff to off gas. or not dme dms not dme hi larry larry's back larry's back guess who's back larry's back Back again. <laughs> Don't tell your friends. <laughs> you guys want to leave it at this view for a while? It's kind of mesmerizing. It's yummy. <clears throat> now I'm singing it. Larry's back, back again. I will. Um, That's Eminem, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, I'll move the the uh, camera a little bit so you get a better view of both. I'm popping another one. There we go. I think it's 99 times 4. Okay, whatever. Looking good. 
Is your beer good. warm now, honey, yeah. or what? No, it's fine. Okay. All right, so I started at just under 14. I'm going to go ahead and let it go to... Dude, we didn't polish off the pizza. I know. Except for that. So I think I'm going to go ahead and cut off the sparge now. Because we should have enough. We should have collected enough. Mm, that's beautiful. It smells so good. Oh my god, I'm so excited about this. We have to do a video when we taste it. Yeah, Larry's gonna come down and bring a can of his and, and we'll give taste a, it all together. Give a shout out. Really? Got to leave in an hour to head to Pollyanna Brewing to drink their beer this afternoon. Hey, you know what? That sounds that's, painful, Larry. Oh, the, good luck. Oh, oh, the, oh, the humanity. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Stefan says, Larry, pop one for me as well. Yeah, for three. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm G60. I'm left-handed, too. So it's like, you know, yeah. I, I, do, I do like working from left to right, too. And, and Go, Larry. Either, have a good road trip, man. Honestly, either way, the vessel that gets the dirtiest is in the middle, either way. Absolutely. It's the, the mash tun's in the middle. So I don't, even, whether Kelly's you have it on the left captain. or the right doesn't really matter, I guess. But now i have turned off the obligations i know larry yeah right uh, somebody's got to yeah. do it i guess hang in there man i turned off the sparge water i'm going to try to let this hopefully we're pretty close to what our volume should be when we get oh we got there. a kitty cat audience Let's see what my volume is gonna, what my pre boil volume is supposed to be oh she's such a pudding what are you doing oh geez stop it i made noise it's okay is tabby down here yeah she's just looking around like mm. what are we doing yeah, so boil volume, it looks like it's going to be 13 gallons is what it should be. Yeah, exactly. It still gets dirty. She wants pizza. That's why she's down oh. here. I'm going to throw her some bacon. Okay, here. do it. Here, Tab. Tabby, kitty, kitty, kitty. Oh. Come here. And then when we get the boil coil covered, I'll start, I'll turn the, turn the element on so we can start getting everything hot for that. When we get to 13 gallons, we'll take a gravity reading and do that. She wanted some pizza. Even though you're not you guys still good with this view, or you want to switch back to the overall? There you go. Just a little bit. We don't like periodontal disease. Okay. <coughs> it all gets dirty. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Level is dropping. Ooh. It's still kind of... The little lights just... aren't twinkling, Clark. <laughs> right. Is it moving? Oh, it is. Okay. No, I, I turned no, I it off. No, I mean, it's it's moving. Yeah, I mean, you can see. I just, yeah. Here was the level before okay. down by well, an inch now. So. It's obviously. Yep. yep Man. Yep. That looks like. Looking good, isn't it? <gasps> what is that? It's a cat hair. A cat hair? Oh, we can't have a cat hair and a dragon I'm milk stout? Get some tweezers. What the heck? No one's going to drink our beer now, ever. Yeah, let's see. Okay, uh -huh. I can do something like that, I think. Do, 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 do. Hi, baby girl. There we go. I can, let's see, let's move this up. Where's the Tylenol? There we go. Now we can see all three. Uh, do you always transfer that slow? Yes. Yeah, I do. You, you want to transfer slow so that the, the grains get rinsed Should by the I sparge spray water? This? Huh? It's clean. What Should is I spray it? this? I'm getting that out of there. Oh, no problem. No, it bugs me. Go ahead. Kelly's retrieving the what she believes to be cat hair. <laughs> I am a cat hair expert. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Aficionado. For three vessels, I added silicone rubber pad hobby. under each vessel to create a thermal break at the table. Help with the stability and less heat loss. I had some, I had cork underneath of my original system. And it is done. It, yeah, thank you. It got all nasty and everything. So I don't know. I'm, I might try that to see. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's, it's definitely really good. Um, I might try to get the silicone. Where did you Where did you get the silicone mass? So what What size kettles do you have? I think did you say fifteen gallon? Um, I may try that just because it the table does get hot. So I mean it, it works like a heat sink. So it's like, mm -hmm. but you put I haven't had any trouble with. You put Did you put the wheels on yourself? Mm -hmm. I yeah. did. Yeah. Yep. 
Did you run that hair through some? I know. That's why I said to Brian. <laughs> no, I should have ran the um, <sighs> the tongs. Okay, dish rack pads. Okay, I got you. <laughs> Actually, yes, we spare. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know if I can. Broke. I don't know if I can set yeah. a round kettle on a square pad, That's man. So I, I don't funny. know. It might not. It may not work for me. I guess. Well, I guess I could trim it. I guess, right? So. <laughs> I use plastic dip. Plastic dip. dip. On okay. Oh. Yeah, that would work too. Yeah. yeah. Just get just uh, mask it off and and. Uh, just paint it on there or even pour it on there, I guess, probably. Brian Harkin, right. SS Brew Tech, 20 gallons. Okay. Okay. I'll have to look into that. I've often thought about that. Ooh, I, I, I got to go collect my um, money for my um, okay. poker yep, game. Okay. Yep, I know what The SS pad work really well. Okay, so they have a pad then? Okay. I got you. We'll have to take a look at that. <clears throat> Have you tried? Have you tried it, Terry? Have you tried it with with and without? Have you noticed any different? I mean, a, a measurable difference at all? I'm curious if you if you notice that much difference. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, you guys taught me today. Amazon found perfect size. Okay. All right. Because I looked up, I looked up some silicone. I don't think I looked up dishwashing mats. I looked up something else before, and I didn't see anything that was not, you know, like ten or twelve inches. So, okay, all right, cool, all right, I'm sold. I'll get some. You guys sold me. I am sold. <clears throat> Speed it up just a little bit. <clears throat> um, no, um, Alman, I actually mailed it back. I sent it back to him. He actually, I don't know if I don't know what he did with it. Quite honestly, I, I he he just he sent me a bot or sent me a shipping label and I packaged it back up and shipped it back to him. So I'm not I'm not 100 sure what he did with it, but I am drinking. Uh, Brew Dog, and it's called Light Speed. Mm, excuse me. It's actually, it's a really flavorful, um, I'm guessing it's, I'm not even sure what kind of, what style, pale ale. It's like really, really hoppy, but it's only like 99 calories. Oh, it's a, it, says, it says it's a hazy IPA. It's only like 99 calories and like 4.2% alcohol. So I'm, it's nothing, nothing high test or anything, but it's actually, it, it's a very crushable, Tastes is great. Yeah, it's really good. Okay. SS Brutex sell nice silicone kettle mats. Okay. We'll have to look it up. Look look it up. Hey Zach, how's it going, man? I didn't realize it was you that asked the question. You enjoying that uh, that anvil brewing system still? Twenty one by eighteen pad. Okay, cool. Awesome. All right. I'll look at it. I'll find him. I'll get her done. I guess I could, I have some like uh, gym floor, you know, like floor in, in the gym that's like rubber. <laughs> I could just cut one piece to go all the way across the entire table, one continuous piece, I guess. You wouldn't have to buy anything. If that would work, I, was, I assume it would work. Um, it's not silicone, though. I don't know. Uh, wish I had my first brew dog beer this Christmas since the season. It's been, it's a, oh, it's a butte stout. Okay. Couldn't believe it was licensed for Christmas. But yeah, that is pretty crazy. It was licensed, yeah. <clears> hmm. <throat> I haven't had that one. All right, let's see here. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. We'll take it. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to set it up to like mm, 200 degrees. I don't want to bring it to a boil until we get the, get the kettle all the way full, but we'll let it come up to... 200 degrees, which will bring us pretty close to hot break. Cool. It should be pretty good. Awesome. Oh, cool. Do you have a filter? Avoid getting any grains in your mash tun from your mash tun. Um, your with the kettle. with the recirculation, like the Herm system, the recirculation. Basically, the grain bed is the filter, um, and anything that comes through the false bottom gets recirculated back onto the top of the grain bed. And then basically it's its own filter. So 
Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Welcome. 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 Thanks for being here. But yeah, so that there's oh, no there's no filter needed. I mean, as boxes. you as you see, the the wart is it's completely clear. I mean, it's oh. it's dark, but it's it's there's no. There's just four cat hairs in it. We're good. <laughs> I don't have a filter for that. Mm. Mm. No one's going to drink our beer again, said no one ever. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, darn. <laughs> More beer? for you yeah, and no. me. Oh. So happy No, me. I'll have a dance party down here. Do the hustle. <clears throat> mm. Oh, my God. It smells. My gosh. It smells amazing. Five and it would be. Yeah, it was four. It, Josh says four. We're okay. But if we get a, if we get a fifth one in there, he, Oh, is I'm that just, what it is? He said, I'm going to have to. Terry, is that he said, real? He said, I'm just going to have to go ahead and ferment it out and then just can it all up and send it to him. So, that, you know, okay. that's, I, I just, oh. so make sure that Thank we don't Thank you get... for being there. Thank you. <laughs> Pussycat stout. <laughs> There's only three. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I'm going to get my tongs into A this. very appetizing name for it would be like cat litter stout. That's lovely. I would still drink it, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm just cool like that. Can you grab me another one of them light speeds? Yes. Yes, um. Was that that full before? What? That bottle? Yes. Okay. It just was on its side, so okay. how could you tell? It's a Brian Huntley. Err. Okay, let's go ahead and grab. Litter treat stout. <laughs> oh, Ronald says he'll he'll partake in the disposal as well. Thank so you so much. We got we have three people, so I mean at least it wouldn't be you this know. This is awesome. At least you wouldn't force one person to take it all, so that's good. It is so great to have team effort. I that's know. All I can I know. say. It takes a village. It takes a village to raise an idiot. Oh. <laughs> Whole new kind of addition. Yeah, exactly. Uh, here, go in the freezer and get the eye of Newt, will you? <laughs> the eye of Newt. It goes with the three cat hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Adds a little twang to it. That's what I always talk about when we were doing brewing and yeah. Halloween time. Yep. <laughs> the eyelash of a bat. Exactly. <laughs> it smells so good. Oh, my head. Fingernail of a cheetah. Oh, that's weird. I know. Very weird. Okay. It is kind of bugging me. I gotta spray this. Is it a no-no to stir it? Yeah. Um, oh, during the mash, um, you can. I mean, like on like single vessel systems and stuff like that. It, a lot of times, it will it will increase the efficiency a little bit. It is bugging but me. But with like with this type of system, I mean, you're constantly flowing through the through the mash, and you really don't want to do too much to disturb the grain bed because you you know you you can you can disturb the grain bed and then start getting you know husks of grain you know grain coming through the false bottom and stuff like that. What's that? It dissipated. Oh well, yeah. It'll be fine. It's probably down on the bottom now. So, um, hmm. yeah. At what point in the process? Well, it's like um, at the uh, at the. Ooh, look at that! Mm. The sixty-seven minute mark is when we do that. When you reach two twelve on your boil, do you switch? Yeah, I'll switch the PID to manual mode here in a minute. I've just got it. I've got it up to two hundred right now, just because I want to bring it up, Ooh. but not bring it to a boil yet. Okay, just because I want to make sure you know, like I'm aware of what's going on at that point in time. I'm sure this helps wrinkles. And, oh, there and uh, make sure we get enough, um, get enough wort in there and I all that stuff. I did spray this with Tarzan. I <laughs> it did. doesn't matter, we're gonna boil anyways. It I doesn't matter. I don't care, I'm just staying. It matters not. Mmm, it matters not. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It smells so good, I just wanna, and I know, I know it's just good for jump wrinkles in there, huh? and, and lines and Absolutely. baggy eyes. And, yeah, it's perfect. I feel I'm a movie star now. Look, it yep, changed me. Hmm. I might need to sparge with a little bit more. Where did you leave off? Leave off on what? Who? Which one? Is it Nano to stir the grain? Okay, you did that one. At what point in the process did you put that in? He's talking about the eye of Newt. Yep. <laughs> Just now. <clears throat> so it's three hours and how many minutes? What? 25 minutes when you put the eye of Newt in. Yeah, 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 yep, yeah, that's what it is. There you go, Francisco. And when you reach 212 on your boil. I already answered that. Okay, Brian said, Brian Harkin said dissolve. Almond deck three 
Do you have to switch to manual? Yeah, I already answered that. Okay. Francisco said the pH is scary if a hair is being dissolved. Hmm. <laughs> That's true. I was just kidding. It wasn't dissolved. It just went somewhere. But I caught it. Right. So. I'm a hair catcher. There you go. It's just what I do. Yep, exactly. I'm just putting, I'm just sparging a little bit more because I feel like we're going to not get to our volume. I usually just sparge until lot. I get. That's the most grain I've ever seen I in just, my life. Yeah. <laughs> I usually just sparge until my I get to life. get to the volume, but I was trying to empty out the mash tun a little bit this time because we had so much grain and everything in there. So. Yeah. Aww, Should be good your, though. Your bald head did a little cameo there, babe. Yeah. It's it's nice. Is it blind everybody? Crystal ball. Will exactly. I be a millionaire next year? Yeah. Not likely. <laughs> That's the eight ball. Ask again. <laughs> okay, let's move on. All right, I think we're pretty good. Okay, now. so Alex said, I'm going to brew a Doppelbach for my first time next week. Okay. Have you brewed mm. a Doppelbach before? Any tips? Yep. Um. 3G said, Oh, I miss you so. Aw. I don't think I've ever brewed a Doppelbach. I've, d I've done a. Um, Thank you so uh, much. Cheers. Like a Weizenbach, but I haven't done a Doppelbach. Um, is, I'm not familiar with it's those. A, is that. Do you use, I think is you use lager sour? yeast with that, though, right, Alex? Doppelbach. What's the IB. Like, what's the IPAs in there? Huh? IB how high is that in bitters? Oh, Doppelbach? Yeah. No, they're not very. No, they're like maybe, really? 20, maybe 15, 20. They're, they're not. Huh, I might like that. At least from what I remember anyway. Yep. Sweet shout out. We missed you too. We're back. Yep. Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Okay. Stefan loves Doppelbach. Okay. Yeah. So we I would gotta just, do you know, that make, next. make sure you either, you Let's know. Let's make one of those next. We can. Okay. Make sure either you know fermenting under pressure, or, you know, Lager got a, got some kind of temperature control for it, so mm -hmm. so you get the the proper effect. Yeah, because they it's different than an ale. <clears throat> Looking good. Thank you very much, Brian Harkin. I think that's what we'll do next. That'll be fun. I know it smells amazing. <sighs> Wow, that's a lot of beer. Yeah, it's gonna. There's gonna be more net in there too before it's over. Holy crap! Yep. Oh, oh, it got through. I don't know what that is. Right. <laughs> I don't. Say that. What? It would have to be something from there. Yeah, it's it's like it's some kind of grain or something yeah. like that. Man, that's beautiful. Mm hmm. It is. Hmm. Beautimus, beautimus. C.H. Stephen said, hey. I should try Doppelbach and especially Eisbach. Home brew for. Very cool. Will home do. brew for life. I think, Stephen, I think next um, time we do a live video, we'll do a Doppelbach. How about that? Can we get some recipes? Home brew for life. Hey, you. What bourbon do you plan on using later? Uh, we'll use a Woodford Reserve. Yep, Woodford. Kelly, Kelly will just have to have some of what's left of it. I mean, cause we won't use it all, so. Are you, is that okay? No, it's awesome. <laughs> it's good with a couple cubes in it. Ice cubes! I love it. It's delish. I could drink it warm. <laughs> Looking good. Looking good. Yep. Good dog. Yep, exactly. I think we'll get there now. Ooh, we're looking for, yes, it's. We're looking for 13 gallons. Wow, jeez, we got to give some to my brother. Sure. We're ten and a half right now, and we're closing in on the last of the liquid in the mash tun, I believe. Wow. Wah, wah, wah. Oh. What was it? What happened? Night oh. bot tub. Hang on. Let because me. he put bra. 
No, it's bra. I'm bra just kidding. I know. I'm just, he was just talking. They thought you meant a brazier. Yeah, no. No one matters. I'm just kidding, Brian. We're not having we're not having any um, AI step in. No, we're not having we're not having any uh, any people doing stupid stuff. So no. I'm going to turn it off. No, people are doing great. Yep. Thank you. All Brian, right, guys. I, you I, were doing stupid stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's there's nothing else. There's no nothing running through the the sponge. Brush. The sparge, uh, the we're in bad. How you doing? There's no water running past the... Northwest Small Batch Brewing, H4 Elbra. Your sparge water is cooling off fast on the deck. Yeah, there's no, there's no liquid going past the sensor now, so that's why it's, that's why it's cooling off like that. And matter of fact, I doubt, doubt the, oh the sensor's even submerged anymore, quite honestly. It is so good. <clears throat> um, I have to just like do a little... Hmm? I have to taste the greens, dude. Okay, go ahead. They're probably pretty bland now because we've know, extracted all the sugar out of them. they so beautiful. Looking good. Mm. Mm. Actually, they're still tasty. Are they? Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm. Yum. Better than Metamucil. I mean, it's so sad to throw it away. You don't have to. You can... Spoon it up and mm -hmm. puts lots of fiber in your diet. It's better than potato chips. That's for sure. Potato chips taste good though. For show, for show. Mmm. Mmm, spent grain bread is so good. Brian Harkin, I know. I'm without thinking about. I've, tr stuff I've tried. Like that. I've tried to make some before. It's it's okay. It's just it look. I find it a little gritty for me. I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't mind that. And especially, yeah. well, especially because of the contents. It's yeah. Very healthy. Oh, Ron, I I baked two big loaves of sourdough this morning. I'll go get one. Don't get the one with the tumor. <laughs> it, you just tear that part off, man, and put some butter yep. on it. Yeah, exactly. All. Mm. I made bread before brewing today. Uh, I have a I have a sourdough starter that I started probably um, gosh probably six or seven years ago, and I've had the same starter ever since then. It's uh, it's it's powerful stuff now for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the thing about spent grain, though, too, is if you don't, like, refrigerate it or dry it out or something like that, it gets it gets nasty quick. I mean, real nasty, real quick, for sure. And it's so fun to make your own food, and you can save money. Mm -hmm. So, see? Yep. Yum. There's, there's one of my, there's my bread loaf that I made this morning. That is Sourdough love bread. on a plate. Uh, Welcome to my kitchen. Yep. There's the crumb <laughs> on it. <laughs> I'll be a bread I'll be a bread baker too. <laughs> I haven't uh, I haven't I haven't made that tier yet. <laughs> no, we're still Still drawing out of the mash tun there. We are at. I just wonder if anyone got right the Joanna Gaines gallons, reference. So. Welcome to my kitchen. She's so funny. Yep. Oh my gosh, it smells. Oh, good. thanks, thanks, CH. Appreciate it, man. Oh, it smells so good. Cheers, brother. Thank you. We can start cleaning out the mash tun here in a little bit once once We've, it gets done. Well, I can and whatever. You're gonna point at me. That's okay. You're not pointing at nobody. I do it. Did you already read all that? I think so. What's your feeding schedule for your starter, just to maintain it? <laughs> well, Red, I will tell you this. Open and chop that. 
all the all the videos and all the stuff in print and everything uh honestly to me is a farce as far as feeding schedules and doing this with your doing this and that with the starter and all that stuff my starter now at, at the point that it's at now all i do i keep it in the fridge in a large container and then right. when i want to make bread which is about probably about every other week i'll take it out put equal amounts of water and flour in there set it on the counter let it warm up let it um let it uh start fermenting and that's it and then when i'm done I, i'll you know pour off whatever i need to make the bread put it back in the fridge i'll let it sit i've let it sit in there i let it sit in there for about four or five months one time just wow. stir in the, the it right. gets like a really dark yeah it looks nasty but it's yeah. like a dark it's gross but beer i didn't on throw top. it out i almost did once i know i did almost. you just you oh, just uh, stir Ronald it all French back in is the is the recipe on baker bake mothers huh I don't know. Is the recipe on Bake Mothers? Is that your oh, bread no. recipe? Um, Maybe that's something you watch it. I don't know. I don't, I'm, I don't remember where I got the recipe at. I, I, I got it from an online. I got. I think I got it actually from a, a YouTube video. You watched YouTube, I remember. And then Homebrew for Life said, let's get a super chat train going. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, that's, that's how I do my natural bread yeast starters. Okay. So wait a minute. So you, oh, no, you, just, you just leave it. You, put, you have some in the, you have a starter in the fridge. And then you just add more to it to, to get it going. Hmm. Cool. Well, we're still still coming out of the mash tun here. So we still got stuff still got stuff going on. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. 188 degrees. I'm gonna turn this fan on low or medium. Start exhausting you some have of the. a little dial thing there? Oh, I never even looked at that. In the fridge, I feed That's it. That's okay. really cool. cool. So you yep. have a selection for how strong. Yeah. I didn't see that before. Yeah, it's a three speed. It's, it's a three speed switch. I mean, that's I a. Never even that's a. It's it. brown, actually, but. Um, what? <laughs> it looks okay. <laughs> The switch is itself black? is black. Okay, yeah. The outside's brown. I, I remember picking brown. that out. Thanks, Stefan. Appreciate it. Bronze Lord told me to super chat. <laughs> <laughs> You're under his control now. That is so awesome. Um, dry bread yeast from the store. Yeah, I mean, I, you could, I guess, but, you know, it's like... Okay, I, I get the joke now, Francisco. Okay, your eye is red up here. Is it? You're okay. Is it bugging you? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> like Sorry, just being a wife. Okay. You're well, okay. Well, I had to lift it up to see it. Mm. Okay. Yes, Mister. Yes, Mister. <laughs> Be good. <laughs> Getting closer. Woohoo! To the 13 gazalian. Wow, that's like mark. a huge, huge batch. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's gonna be nice. It's beautiful. It'll be real nice, Clark. Real nice, Clark. Get yeah, yourself exactly. something good, too. It'll be real nice. Wow. Won't even need fumigated. That's beautiful. Okay. Leave one of those cat hairs. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. Oh, I feel bad it's in his eye, but better that right. than the beer, I guess. Yeah. Sacrifice me, not the beer. I know. We do clean down here. What's the <laughs> deal, Pickle? Uh, Maybe. The, the oh, beer. you know what? It's probably my fault. I was holding him. I was holding Daichi. See? Blame it on me. I didn't blame it on you. Oh, you didn't, I was did trying you? to analyze not it. Not this time. I was being Terry. <laughs> Happy shout out. The Terry clone. Has to do with the circumference of the environment yeah, exactly. and the barometric pressure. Right, that's exactly right. <laughs> Who's laughing? <laughs> Half the bra army is here. Right. The bra army. What am I army. doing with this? Why do I have this? I was just handing it to you so I can start scooping out the. Oh. Oh, I can do it. Okay. You want to set it on like a chair like this? Absolutely. But that one, it has a cushion deal. Okay. It's going to make an indention. Well, I don't have any other chairs down here, so. Here, hang on. 
Um, you can set it on the floor. I guess it'll be It's going to be too no. heavy for a box. No, I was going to turn it upside down or this. Wait. Oh, you mean to put it on the chair first? Yes. Okay. Uh, Got gotcha, you, Governor. See if my ripping skills are still with me. She's Ooh. a mad ripper. I'm a mad ripper. Rip it real good. Thanks, Brad. Appreciate okay. it. Oh, One shoot, Brian, you just... Oh, oh it's no, good. it's ruined. No, I just... <laughs> we got to send the other half to somebody now. <laughs> when fermenting in a keezer or keger anyway. with a spunding valve, do you guys leave the door slightly cracked so the CO2 can leave it? I don't think it would be a big deal. I mean, obviously, you don't want to... You don't want to open the fridge and go... <sighs> and pass out from CO2 inhalation, yep, but... I you like know. it. Okay. But uh, I don't see a reason... I don't see a reason why you would need to, honestly. Ugh, I think I'm done. You're done already? Oh. Look at that. Look Would at that. Would you just look at it? I called, I timed that, I oh called that gosh. perfectly. Look, it's just barely over 13 gallons. I added a few gallons. That's amazing. Or maybe, maybe a gallon and a half to the mash tun before we were done sparging and hit the number right on the head. This is so fun. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> this is the only thing about brewing with grain. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. He's okay, like, anyway. bring me the extract beer, kid. Getting through it. I was like, do sing a cadence anymore. song or something and go with the beat. Uh. Jesus. We I'm actually proud of myself, knock on wood. What's that? Oh, that's laminate. Anyway, um, I haven't spilled it yet. Ugh. I'm sorry, I still didn't hear you. This is heavy. Yeah, it's wet grain. I think, no, I really believe it's like three pounds of scoop. Probably. I wouldn't doubt it. I'm going to have a big, beefy, right it's a hot bicep. Mess. Exactly. I'm going to have to switch halfway through, so I'm bilaterally measured. Get a sample of our cat hair stuff Matching. Here. Oh, geez. Thanks, French, uh, Francisco. Man, crap. Thank you. Thank you. That's so nice. We're definitely going to do the um, doppel. Doppelbach? Yes. Mm. He likes those. Okay, I feel like you're going to burn me, so I'm going to go no, over here. No, I'm not going to burn you. And balance out biceps. Oh, my God. Sha. Oh my goodness gracious. Um, mm. Okay. I think I should just take this right now and dump it in the yard and then come okay. back. If that's what you want to do? Yeah. The deer will. Mo power to you. Be happy. Yeah, they'll be visiting tonight for sure. It'll be so fun. We have a camera and we get to see all the critters out in the yard and anything else that goes on. I down installed the yard. a security camera just to watch the wildlife. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thumbs uh, up from Knoxville. Even the heftiest hepatizer never made the fridge explode. Yeah, right. Come on, Thank people. You, Give this live brew day a thumbs up. Did a split I have batch. holes drilled. In, did you read all those? I'm, I'm reading them now. Okay. Did a split batch, split batch with two cornies, but one of the cornies is beat to shit. Uh, I'm turning I off can't my, get it my, oh, because geez. I might cuss Any when I'm about getting it. the new spike tank with the door? Making, yeah, I, no, I, I haven't really thought about that. I did see that they did bottom drains and all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know if I want to go that far, but uh, heading out. Hey, thanks, Northwest. Appreciate it, man. Uh, holes drilled all over the top of my fridge. Okay, CO2. All right, good enough. Uh, time to get time to get Spike to send you one of the new bottom drain for you to evaluate. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Anybody here have a bad story with a digital PSI gauge? Huh? I don't know. I've not I've not tried one. To be honest with you. Uh, I've done a Doppelbach, which is finished right now. Came out pretty decent. Awesome. We'll have to try it. We'll have to try it out. For sure. For sure. Put a little more water in here. This cooled down a little more. Alrighty. Alrighty. Thank goodness. So now I've turned the PID to 100%, so that it'll come up to a boil. When it comes up to it, when it comes up to a boil, then I'll go ahead and 
turn the turn it the percentage down. And I have got to I've got to run to the little boy room for a minute. I'm turning off the microphone now. I'll be right back. One bucket down. Yeah, time for a boil over again. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, I have not tried a reiterated mash. Um, I have not done that yet. Cinderella, Cinderella, every exactly. day. Cinderella. Yep. Holy moly. Is it heavy? It actually feels good outside. Does it? I imagine it's after freezing. being in here. Right. Yeah, I'm dead. Okay, I'm good. All you right. Want me to do it? So, well, it's kind of eat. Like, if I can move this over there. Well, I don't want you to have to do it. I don't care. If I can tip that thing, I can just, like, scrape it out. But you're going to make it messy. See, you already dropped stuff. Oh. I'm a messy boy. There is an art to it. You have to work with the gravity. Right. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it changes for me because I'm taller. Right? It's harder. Honey, is that it's enough? like you're, oh God, no, might as well. No, I mean, is that enough in the, in the bucket? I know what you mean. I'm not ready to go do this again yet. Okay, you want me to do it? Yeah, no, just put it in there and let it sit for jig. a minute. Okay. Let's let it dry out. Okay. It'll be lighter. All right, we'll just let it, we'll yeah. let it aerate. Um, yeah, re reiterate it is like where you mash and then you dump the grains out and then mash again um, with more grain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you heard a bathroom fan and a and a dribble. <laughs> oh, what's the what's the first what's the first hop? Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Okay, so ounce and a half of Columbus at the beginning. All righty. All right. See you, CH. There you go. Oh, yeah. Have a good one, bud. So I have a friend at work, and um, she passed these out. They have a party every year, and you fill it up. You drink from it. It's very fun. Apparently, they walk around, and you fill it up a lot throughout the night. Well, she's Latino, and uh, yes. they do. They, they fill it with tequila. Right. <laughs> it's absolutely funny. I love it. All right. Time to take a pre-boil gravity reading here and see see how we did. All right. Oh. I can put one more in there. This is so much. This is like the most grain I've ever yeah. seen. Larry did this on purpose. I know. He did it to us, <laughs> didn't he? Just kidding. He's like, I'm going to tell him it's great. I'm going to watch him do all this grain cleaning. That would be fun. Yeah, it needs to like dry out a little. Hmm. I don't know, Larry. You might in might be in for a stout stout here. I thought Larry left. What is it? Look six? at that. One point zero eight seven. What's it supposed to be at? One point zero seven one. 
Oh, or no, 8-1? Is it 8-1? Oh, okay. What is it supposed to be, Larry? Well, that's going to be like 11%. Well, it's going to be an Imperial Stout for sure. I know, but... Meanwhile, we're talking about it boiling over here. I'll just smell it. Smell it again. <laughs> Larry, it's all part of my evil plan. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're such a schemer. I'll have to put the numbers into Brewfather, but I think we got a little better efficiency than 60%. Terry Saunders said, I was thinking of using a wet vac hooked up to a cyclone bucket separated speed up. That might not be a bad idea. That is a really good idea. 1.087 is on the mark, he said. Oh, did he? Okay. Yep. Cool beans. That's but that that's a pre-boil. Is that still, is that what he had? I thought he had, I thought his was seven, 77. Maybe not. I don't know. You talk to him. I am talking to him. I know. I don't have to look at the screen. <laughs> what is it, Larry? <laughs> Make sure you yell <laughs> so they hear you. <sighs> oh, Larry just said, oh, sh prep foil was only LY 1.077. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Brian said he <laughs> yeah. thought sevens were in it. Yeah. Brewing bad. Just got my claw hammer system auto-tuned for its inaugural run on monday awesome nice. i'm very excited big step up from the absolutely good for you congratulations yep i'm a deck three i don't think you need the cyclone separator that's for a fine dust collection <laughs> well actually the cyclone separator separates the big particles the fine dust still gets through but cyclones separate like large chunks of of uh okay of wood debris and stuff like that hmm. at know. least from what i understand I don't have right. one, so I can't speak for it. My hippocampus said no to that a long time ago, apparently. That's <coughs> there. So I use my wet vac. On the, okay. Okay, come on. Hot break. Let's get done here. Larry said you have a big beer coming your way. Yeah, what I, what I might do, Larry, is I, I might actually, I may just modify this and just boil for 30 minutes. Just, I, probably have, I probably have some hops in the, fr in the freezer that I can Should we go get some? add in. Well, I don't want to mess up the recipe, Terry. So we well, but I mean, we're gonna we're we're already over the gravity on this thing, so it's like it's so funny because that's. I know. This is the biggest beer brewed in a long time, because it it could it could very well be it'd probably be, it'll probably be ten ninety two ninety three whenever we're oh. done. So, which is within we'll style guidelines still. We'll just drink it with a tablespoon. That's yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Sippy, sippy. <laughs> Just take shots of it instead. Larry said add water. That's what I was thinking. Is yeah, I could do that too. Yeah, that's what I would do. Not hot. Brian used firm cap S for preventing holes. Over. Over, over. What, what is, is it? That? Here, come read this. Firm cap. S for preventing holes. O-V-R-R-S. Boil over. That's what okay. he's talking about, I think. Yeah, that's what. You mean boil over's right? G60 guy? Yes. I think so. SJ pour in the house. SJ. Very cool seeing a live brew day at yeah. SCB. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Yep, thank you. And then Larry said, or let it ride. We're going to need to send some out if we let it ride. I'm just saying. Okay, wet back alone works, but it's a mess to clean. Yeah, separated speeds up, clean up is all. Oh. There. I put some he said, yep. I put some defoamer in there. G60 guy. So what's your answer? Here? Are you happy now? Yes. Brian, use firm cap S for preventing um, boil overs. That's what I just did. Oh, okay. Nice well, he had a some. question mark, so you answered it. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Good. Not usually, but I am this time. So, yeah, it looks like it's working pretty good. Yeah. Good firm idea. Firm cap is a lifesaver. Good idea. You added water. Glad you thought of it. Water? No, firm cap. Oh. It's a, it's a see the boil over. Look of what it's doing I now. Of course I did not think of that. Huh? They did. Oh, they... I didn't. Oh. Yes, yes, thank you. Wow, perfect. Yeah. Oh my God, I have grains all over my pants. What do oh, I no. do out there? She's got her grainy pants on. Right. That sounds really bad. I know. Glug, 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 glug. I love that little cup. Okay, let's see where we're at here. All right, we're at a boil now, so I think we'll put the, put the hoppies in. Any thoughts in. on a steam condenser? Kevin Hill asks. What's that? Any thoughts on a steam condenser? They work. They work. Oh, you mean like for this, for, for this system? You mean for this mean... system, Kevin? Yeah, they can't hear me. 
Oh, sorry. I'm just trying to be a <laughs> person te- here reading. I'm just teasing you. Ronald French, how much fern cap? Like four drops. <laughs> SJ said, you're not brewing if you don't have green flour on your prints. You're right. right. Absolutely. That's right. Um, day 60 guy. It seems like he answered a couple of deed talk. Hmm? Yes. I think you should do this. What is it? I can stir. Do what? A couple of D-tops. A couple of drops. Okay. I put like four drops, three or four drops. I didn't know what a D-top was. I thought maybe it was some jargon. It's stupid autocorrect, you know. (laughs) It's my texting all the time. (laughs) Obama nuts ya. Remember that one? That was so weird. Yep, exactly. Oh, on this system? Um, I thought about it. I I believe... I think we'll probably see that Blickman will come out with a steam condenser hood. I've actually, I, ha- I have the, I have the um, spike steam condenser still that fits this this kettle. But I don't know. It's just one of those things where it's just it's something extra to have to mess with. I've got a hood that has a vent on it, so it's like it didn't really matter. Larry said he didn't like yeah. using a steam condenser. Yeah. That's the other part of it, too, is it uses a lot of water. Nick Kane said, my dog always shows up just in time to eat any spilled grain or flour that I have. That's perfect. Exactly. Our cats don't care. And Priya, got to jump off. Have a great brew. Oh, thank you. Have a great one. Curse these fat fingers and tiny phone screens. <laughs> it's always whatever anyway with cell phones. It's so exactly. hard sometimes. Whoop. SJ Poor, damn brother, you're looking good. And that's Thanks, coming man. from a dude. <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> you got a nice rolling boil going on? Mm. For show, for show. Clean all the little tip for all you brewers out there that absolutely adore cleaning got a little trick for you here says no one ever right well maybe so what i do is as i'm brewing wipe down the inside of the kettle like almost all the way down to the to the wart line and basically what happens is as you get as you your you boil off if you just keep wiping down whenever you get done you basically have no residue above your boil line that you have to clean off that's been steam dried on there. So, what yeast is destined? Actually, I have a mix of yeast because I didn't get a chance to do my starter soon enough. So I've got um, I've got uh, Cayman or Mangrove Jack A24, which is we like a neutral sketchers, yeast, SJ. and then uh, and then. Um, uh, US 05. So it's basically like two American style yeast. SJ was asking about your feet. We got in sketches. Yeah, I mean, I, I put on some better tennis shoes today, yeah, but I, shoes. I do. And I will tell you, SJ, after a live brew day, I mean, it's basically like I almost collapse on the couch. I know, we're There's ready like to go so to bed. There's so much stuff going on. Six and o'clock, we're like, we're out. Talking to people and Good brewing night. and yeah. <laughs> I love it. For sure. Though. It's so fun. For sure. Oh, yeah, no, it's, I mean, I'm, I, I'm not complaining about it. I'm just saying it, it just, that's how it is for sure. Larry's like, yeah, my back and feet kill me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I haven't dropped dropped a rag in yet, but what it what it does do, I mean, you can you can see if you let me let me blow that up and you can see the the kettle. Hang on. I'll, they I'll do, see. Larry, but they're wonderful. We love your live brew days. They're fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. That shit really does not keep her lip. Dirty rag stout, got a ring to it, or cat hair stout. Yeah, so take a look at the kettle. You can, and you can even through even all the steam and everything, you can see how clean that is. Because I mean, it's basically it, it's it's kind of steam cleaned almost. But it'll and it'll stay that way as long as you don't like stir and have a bunch of Likewise. hop debris or anything. But even <laughs> if you add more hops and then it and it it uh, hmm. foams up and gets a little bit dirty, just right. wipe it down again, and uh, it it works great. I mean, are you I'm, doing a focal thing with that? Hmm? No. What are you doing? I oh. was I was zooming it up. Um, Terry Sonner said, "Ever use Imperial's Darkness yeast?" No, I have not. 
doing a porter in a few days and going, to, ooh, cool, let us know how it worked out. I've heard, I've heard it's I good, though. I mean, I've, I've heard people talk about, you know, We did a dark how chocolate good it is, raspberry yeah. porter, and it was amazing. But yeah, so, you know, Ronald, if you, if you do that, and this works on all, I mean, any brewing system, all-in-ones, everything. If you wipe it down as you go, it's really easy to wipe it down when Thank it's you, steamy, steamy wet. So It's so nice when someone says, hit the like button. Yeah. Like, for you. That's yep. the coolest no, that's ever. Awesome. Got my own, got my own uh, okay, what? publishing That's so great. Group. You got your own agent in the crowd <laughs> next to Larry and SJ. What did you set the PID power? Um, it is set to, if you can see on here, it's set to 85. Is what it's set to. See where it's set to 85 there? And you'll see the, you'll see the, the light thank going you, on and Stephen. off. I set he it to 85%. He likes your video. He likes your video. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. I could probably even turn it down a little bit more than that. I'll do like probably like 80%. Wow, 85%, as Jay said. Oh, Larry, yeah. He installed um, the rubber flooring livestock mat. Yeah, no, that would work for space. sure. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely, like the kitchen yep. mats you can put in your kitchen, but yep. better for, for down sure. here in the biggers. Are those what work, do you what do you turn yours down to normally, ones, SJ? You know, the workout one. Oh, 95, okay, with the warthog. Okay, I got you. Yeah, I mean you could and you could see the boil. It's it's plenty vigorous. I mean there's no there's no issue with the so boil at all. So is that for a sure. good price, Larry, for livestock mat? My garage is lined wall to wall with them. Yeah, we should have that in our garage too because mm -hmm. it gets slippery. Yeah, I mean it would be good in front of there for sure. Yeah. For sure, it's, for it's sure. It's probably a better price too than the um, workout ones. You know the puzzle. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. What does he say? What is he talking about? Oh, Terry, I may report it. Oh, he's making a porter. Okay, yeah, Talk yeah, no, definitely. Shoot. Oh, the, cool. Sh I shoot me, a shoot link. me a link. I'll, I'll put it on my Facebook. Absolutely. Or you can, you can post it on my Facebook group, Terry. I don't care. It's fine. Yeah, no problem at all. Post it on my Facebook okay, group. Okay, that's why I was wondering, Larry. Thank you. Because it's mm. really scary to have such a slick cement floor when your feet are wet. Mm-hmm. Good footwear helps machinist. Yep. Sucks getting old. <laughs> Gravity sucks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Older. exactly. I'm a woman. I know. Yep. <laughs> right. That's why I got those eye patch things. Yep. And then Ronald's a machinist, so he knows about good footwear. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. I worked for I worked for Sandin Thanks, back Sandin like back a bunch in the day. Of different qualities to it. And Terry said, okay, if you're okay with it, thanks. Absolutely. I wasn't a machinist machinist, but I worked for Sandin back in the day on a, on a you know, line doing, making uh, pulleys for mm. automotive Keen, air conditioning compressors. What's that? Nick Keene, he's the clean floor mats. Old. Old what? Oh, <laughs> just wait. Yeah, right. No, I'm, I'm not looking forward to that. Trust me. <laughs> So SJ said, um, "What is your boil off rate?" Um, I'd have to look. It, it's in my, it's in Brewfather that I use. I have it set in there. I couldn't tell you right offhand. It's about, it's, it's a little over a gallon. Apparently, Ronald doesn't think you're old. Yeah. McDonald Douglas. 16. Oh, and by the way, I don't know if Larry's still. Yeah, Larry's <laughs> still here. Oh, by the way, Larry, I, instead of a ten gallon batch, I did a ten and a half gallon batch too. By the way, so, the I think my efficiency was pretty good. Oh, well, that makes sense then, the volume. So it would, it's larger. Yeah, but I mean, I use the same grain bill is, as his, yeah, but increase the batch by a half gallon. Huh. It's so. because of where we are with the equator. Yeah, exactly. Ask Terry. He knows. Yeah, he'll tell you. <laughs> he'll do the math for us. He'll have to do the hypotenuse of the theorem. <laughs> Divided by square plus exactly. three. Exactly. XM equals MC squared square boot. times two. Uh, let me get this star sand in here. Nick Keene, as a former restaurant employee, I can tell you that cleaning floor mats are way worse than any boil over brew light. Oh, oh, no doubt. That and um, ball pits. <laughs> I 
I, when I was in high school, I worked at, at Burger King, and I'm telling you what, you have never, you've never cleaned anything more nasty than a ball pit. Trust me, it is, it is unreal the, the kind of nastiness that, uh, that winds up in those things for sure. It's, it's unreal. It's crazy. Oh, come on, spray bottle. Jiggity. My brewery floor is brick. Ooh, wow. Yeah, no doubt. How often do you remake your star sand mix? Um, yeah, no, this is just this is just for sanitizing. I, I do CIP. Um, I just don't feel like getting out the pump and all that stuff. I just made this star sand up. I, it, I used like distilled water, so it'll last for a long time. I've never had any problems with leaving it sit for a month, something like that. But uh, yeah. I see IP when I clean it. I mean, I, you know, I definitely do that, but I'm just, I'm spraying some star sand on the surface inside it. This thing is thoroughly, it got thoroughly cleaned and all that stuff, so. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, grease traps. Yeah, no doubt. We're getting into, we're getting into micro dirty jobs territory now with that stuff for sure. Yick. Here's the other way I combat Brew Day's SJ. Ugh. Grab a seat. <laughs> uh, they say it doesn't last. I don't know. You know, I mean, I've, I've heard of people talking about doing pH test strips and all this kind of stuff with with the uh, with the star sand. But you know, I, I've never had any trouble. I'll put it that way. I've let it sit for like a month or so, and it it still it still has plenty of power, from what I can tell. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, once it gets cloudy, it can, it can start losing its uh, losing its potency for sure. Talked about it in my bourbon. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I gotta get, I gotta order some uh, some toasted uh, toasted chips. <coughs> yeah. Why don't we do it right? Exactly. <laughs> I do. I try to every so often because I'll be I'll be hurting for certain if I try to stand all the whole time. This is. It's been now. Yeah, so three o'clock. I started at eleven, so it's been it's been four hours so far. So, yeah, craziness. And that was what I was saying too, like with the with the uh, the microphones and stuff like that. I have a little battery power pack that I have to plug them into so that they last for the entire entire brew day. Oh, it's fine. I'm just having the seat. Okay, that's fine. Fine by me. There we go. Brew mat. Nice clunk. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. And then the next edition's at 10 minutes. So. I brew, I'll brew tomorrow, playing around with uh, recipes today and also drinking homebrew. There you go. So <laughs> they are expensive, but the Viper stools are amazing. I've had a bad back and having one in the garage. I have not seen that. Oh, it's a backrest. Okay. Yeah, that's, that sounds nice for sure. I need one for my, I need one for my shop over there. Yeah. For sure. Yep. Now I'll do it for sure. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I don't feel good. I feel good. Oh. Wow. You're amazing. Yeah. Dusty jeans. True, true. Yes, backrest is definitely key for sure. So somebody told me that um, uh, Homebrew Con is in 
uh, San Diego oh, really? in June. Huh. Yeah, maybe. I don't know how close it is. <laughs> Plus, I'm putting together Harbor Freight. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely want that for sure. Um, make sure you get a, a ratcheting uh, hoist if you do it, though. Uh, I have like a folding stool. I don't know. We'll see. We're definitely in a ratchet, I'll tell you that. It just depends on the flight amount and, you know. Oh, are you t Stephen, are you talking about this like this beer here? Uh, let's see. Mm, 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 mm. The hopping schedule is an ounce and a half of Columbus at 60, an ounce of Northern Brewer at 10 minutes, and then a half an ounce of Columbus at uh, 10 minutes as well. So, yeah, so the, the final hop edition is at 10 minutes. And Larry uh, would love to. ounce of Northern Brewer, half ounce of Columbus. Are What's you that? going, Larry? Is he going to the HBC? I don't know. 600 stools. Ooh, $600 stools. Holy What's moly. That? Well, Nick, I guess he looked up the stools like 600 oh. bucks. But you know what? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, as long as it lasts, I mean, there's there's Plus definitely PA. some there's definitely some good, you know, there's 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 value in getting what you pay for, you know, if you buy a cheap stool and you got to replace it every couple of years, then it's just like a purse. Some women get coaches. I don't know about all that. Do well, some women they buy the coach purses and they're you know they replace right. them for free. I just nice, Ronald. Drop two hundred bucks on it. It's definitely a great hobby. It's awesome, and it feels so good to do it yourself. Yep. That's the thing. Yep. For sure. Princess go, hey, I did say expensive. <laughs> <laughs> he did say it was expensive. Oh. Yeah, airfare, hotel costs, all that stuff. Yep. Right. Yeah, no doubt. It's plus <laughs> what will you actually get there is the other question. <laughs> what? You know, will you actually get there? That's what with I said. All the airline they stuff have to going replace on. their uh, thirty year old system, the computer yeah. system. Bunch of crap. And get pilots. I mean, it was yeah, like a hundred thousand no dollars sign on. Yep. I'm like, I think I'm going to become a pilot, Brian. And I mean, talk about your feet and back being tired. Try flying there on your own. Your arms, arms get really your tired. Your arms would get very falling tired. Off tired. Yes. Flying, it's it's hard. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Twelve ounce curls, SJ. Twelve ounce curls. <laughs> Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, the, the, the stool is cheap, the cheap part of the brewing system, right? <laughs> right. No, I think it's a very good choice. You can, mm -hmm. It's mobile, too. For you sure. can put it in different parts of the house. Yeah, 22. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. <laughs> absolutely. And then, I mean, it, you know, you can do high reps and the weight kind of diminishes, and then you just you keep starting back over every every set. You, you, you can know, do squats reset back to, yeah. While you do curls. I yep. mean, it's a multi-function process. Yeah, absolutely. You get out the step. You could do step with it. It's more about the rest. <laughs> Chads are exactly. using crawlers. What is that? Chads are using crawlers. Well, you know, that's the like Todd's, you know. Todd, oh, oh Todd. gotcha. Like Karen. Yeah, Karen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. The, female, the, the male Karen. High reps. The air traffic computer crash happened the day my mom was leaving from a oh. week of visiting. Definitely panic. <laughs> Go home! <laughs> <laughs> what was that comedian about that liked the Chinese buffet? You've been here for an hour, you go now. <laughs> it's a test from You've God. You've been here all week, you go now. You go home. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Mm. Oh, shoot. Grain by the sack. Right on. Yep, that's, that's the way to go for sure. Especially if you can... If you can get it uh, locally or whatever, and you don't have to pay a bunch of shipping for it, that's definitely get yourself a good meal, get yourself some base malts. It's a way to go for sure. Did you want more pizza? No, I'm taking the beer though. Mm. For sure. You're on. I didn't want to be because I'm chewing yeah, right, pepperoni. Exactly. They sell whole bags of grain for free? I mean, they ship, not sell. Ship whole bags of grain for free? I did not know that. Who? Oh. <clears throat> I 
I did not know that. I am actually using the Blickman grain mill. It's actually like made for microbreweries or whatever. It's it's their their two roller six inch motorized grain mill. It's uh, it's overkill for home brewing, but it works well. Let's see here. Got another one of these from Moi. There you are. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyway. boil volume was 13 gallons. Pre boil gravity 80, oops, 1.087. Yeah, I'd say my, my mash efficiency was like 66%, which is not bad. I can't complain about that. I uh, need to figure out how to set my system up in Brewfather. What system do you have? Is it, you said, you said a spike uh, three vessel system, right? Okay. That's not bad then. I mean, depending. So, are they? What are the, what are their whole like whole bags of two row? What are the what's the pricing on that? Is like fifty five or sixty bucks, something like that. Okay, SS Brew Tank. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it, a lot of it's just a matter of just making doing measurements. Really, I I have a video on it uh, where I I have a bit a video on measuring all of your vessels and everything it was made for uh wow. beersmith but you can use the same video i think there's a i think i have a spreadsheet a google sheet the google doc yeah. sheet that you can measure all of your Whoa. like your losses and stuff what i was doing i would put like two gallons of water in the in the hot liquor tank let it run down the manufacturer may have some um may have some numbers for like what they're what the the left behind is or what what uh what the dead space is in the kettle like what the the tube the dip tube won't pick up oh. and you can use that to input the numbers um and then you know as far as boil off it goes just it's just a matter of you know doing a quick boil off do a quick boil of water or something and see what see what it is and same way with your mash tun you know fill it up with some water see how see how much is left behind when you drain it down it doesn't have to have any grain in it, just put water in there and I use a hose all the time because if you, a lot of times if you use a, just right out of the, out of the, um, the ball valve or something like that, it won't give you all the suction to get as much out as you're going to get when you're brewing. So make sure you connect a hose to it and then you can, you can uh, do that. Um, you, I, you don't have to really, I mean, you can if you want to, but it's so negligible. I mean, hoses don't hold, but maybe uh, you know, I mean, unless you got really long hoses or something like that, but I mean, like all these hoses together, they probably <sighs> hold a pint or less. So it's not, you know, not really, not really too much. And then the other part of it is I personally, I don't sweat it too much. If I'm a little under or a little over or whatever on my volume or whatever, I don't, I don't sweat it too much. You just make a note and then adjust a little bit next time. But you know, it's one of those deals where I don't sweat it too much. I mean, I, you know, I know people that want to try to be like completely 100% precise and get it down to the exact, you know, tenth of a tenth of a pint. And it's like, you're not having fun anymore. At least I'm not. <laughs> Maybe they do, but I'm not. It's supposed to be a fun hobby, not a stressful one. What? I was like, holy cow and holy crap, and it came out cat. Oh. So anyway, it's freezing out there. Ugh. I was wondering when you'd come back and finish your job, woman. <laughs> I'll 
I'll kick you later. I'm just kidding. All right, exactly. <laughs> oh, dang it. I had some spillage. She done kicked me in the buttocks. Oh, Dad. You deserved it. Um, it's hard to say because I usually will clean out, you know, the mash tun is, gets cleaned out like today. And then a lot of times I'm so exhausted from, if I'm, if I'm brewing live like this, I'm so exhausted by the time it's over. <laughs> I, I, uh, I usually clean it the next day and it, it, it doesn't take too long. I mean, it just, I usually I pizza, put, so I'm working off calories. Yeah. I put PBW in there and let it circulate and heat up and all that stuff. So it's like, you know, it's one of, one of those things where. You know, it doesn't take too long, maybe a half hour or something like that. This is um, the most grains I've ever experienced. Yeah, this is a this is a this is a full this is a full batch here for sure. Larry's a demon baby. <clears throat> yep. For sure. Watching about the floor mats. I am on my as I'm on my feet. Uh, most of the days locksmith. I found mats at Woodcraft. Okay. All right. That's cool. Closed cell foam, okay. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, so like almost like a neoprene kind of thing then. Cool. I'll have to look at that for sure. I always overshoot my gravity by 10 points since I use White Labs enzymes. Okay. Well, I mean, that's, you know, I mean, unless you're trying to brew to a specific exact style or whatever, you know, it's the beer, it's beer. You know, I, I always say it's going to be beer. So, you know, and if you, if you overshoot, just like what Larry was saying, you know, I could add some water to this. Will I? I probably won't, but. You know, it's one of those things where I could add a little bit of water to it and bring the gravity down, but I'm like, the heck with it. Just leave it. Well. We don't need to dilute it. Well, it's not going to be like, you know, a pounder beer where you take, you know, where you drink. This is one of those beers you six smell. Six cans. Yeah, you exactly. Smell. It's 6%. <laughs> it's a whiff. This is a beer you smell and you go, woo. All right. Going back up. Uh, okay. And turn off okay, my. Cool. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with it. Yep, absolutely. Oh, that's not bad. 20 bucks. That's not bad at all. <laughs> I can do that. She's working out. Maybe I, what I can do, Larry, is I just I won't add the I won't add the bourbon to it. I'll just add the chips. <laughs> I could do that, I guess, but I think I'll I'll probably. I probably want to add the bourbon in too, just for the for the flavor of it. But she's going to be a thick one, that's for sure. I do wonder too if the the lower how the lower mash temperature in the beginning when I had the the goof with the the hot liquor tank and it was mashing at you know 130 140 degrees. I wonder if I'll get uh, a little bit more attenuation from it. Maybe um, we'll see. I don't know. I did the majority of the mash was at you know, 156, 157, so we'll see. But it's possible that could have helped with the conversion too, I don't know. Uh, never thought about carrying the mash ton in batches. Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it definitely saves on your back for sure. Uh, what are your final thoughts on the Spike Solo? I really want a 15 gallon system. I really like the, I really like the Blickman Compact. I will tell you personally for me, Anthony, I have had issues with the basket sticking, the mash, and I, if Larry can chime in on this too, he has one of the spike solo systems. And I think if I'm not mistaken that Larry's had the same issue. I, I've had a lot of trouble with getting stuck, stuck sparges, stuck mashes in it. And I, I don't know, I don't know what the, the deal is with that, but you know, um, Stefan will be adding the whiskey and the chips to the fermenter. Um, after the, after fermentation is complete. Uh, I've emailed numerous times to see if the 15 gallon system in the near future, I haven't received any response to my inquiry. Spike is my next choice. What do you think? Oh, I'm, I, you know, I, I like I said, I, I've had some issues with, with stuck mashes with their basket system. Maybe they've fixed it. I don't know. I mean, I know that they did adjust the width of the bottom of it, but I've had some, I've had some st stuck mashes. So, you know, no, I, I do have, I, I did have the, the prototype one was the one that I had Francisco. But I do, I, I do have the, the production model basket, and I had some of the same issues with that. And quite honestly, you know, I, and that's probably the answer is doing rice holes. I mean, I, I've had, I didn't do rice holes in all of them, but that's probably the answer, quite honestly. Um, 
to, to fix that problem if you have it. But I've seen on their, I belong on, the, I'm on their Facebook group and I've seen quite a few complaints about that very thing. So, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to disparage them, but I, that's just one of those things that, you know, I've experienced and I've seen people complaining about it. So either, either uh, rice holes or, you know, something else, I guess. How's it going? Good. All right. Good deal. I'm Paul Bunyan. There you go. Paul S. Bunyan. Um, I don't know what the percentage is, quite honestly. Um, probably maybe like half a percent of whatever your 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 grain weight is, and then if you if you're doing like a a hazy with a lot of flaked adjuncts and stuff in it, I probably would do 1%, something like that. But, yeah. Heard the same thing. Did you know Blickman? I don't, I haven't heard anything about them releasing a 15-gallon a uh, compact system, quite honestly. Um, try to, didn't take the noun. Kind of <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, You know, it's, it, I, like I said, it's probably, you know, maybe a half, half a percent by weight. And then if you're doing like a, you know, like a, a, a grain, I mean, a beer with a bunch of adjuncts and stuff like that, then I would do probably a, Larry. you know, one percent, something like that. It's like my fourth trip. <laughs> <laughs> the well is run dry, Larry. I don't mm. even have a buzz anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Drink more. Mmm. <laughs> What I'm thinking I'll probably do with mine, Larry, is I'll probably just dump the yeast off and then just leave it in the in the fermenter. Oh, Paul, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, is your mic off? Okay. That's why her mic is low again. <laughs> no, I had it off so you couldn't hear me cussing. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Trudging through the snow out there, dumping the grains. I just turned it off because Son I'm of a up the steps, mm. I'm opening the door. Can you hear I don't me? know how long Ari, uh, Ari, Larry aged the the beer for. I'll probably I'll probably leave it in the in the uh, fermenter after dumping the yeast off and for the putting, bare the, minimum. putting the uh, chips and stuff in there. I'll probably wind up leaving it in there for I don't know maybe maybe a month something like that probably I'd say would be fine. I have to wait a That'll month. Let all the yeah sorry these things need to age. I'm man. working hard here. I know you are. I'm thinking a couple weeks. Yep, see, he thinks he let his sit for three weeks or more, so. Just kidding. That sounds great. <clears throat> there is a sampling valve on the it's fermenter, though, so. <laughs> There's a sampling valve on the fermenter. Oh, the rest, are you just going to wash down the sink or what? Yeah, no, she she just put on a coat. <laughs> I, There's snow on the ground I'm outside, Paula so. Bunyan. And it's like, what, uh, what 20 like degrees. 20, 20 degrees outside, something like that? It feels good though. It's yeah, a buzzkill, sure. but it feels great. I'm sure. Okay, I'm gonna. Yeah, Stephanie, I, I believe he let it just sit in in one of the one of his um, pressure vessels in the basement at whatever that temperature is. Probably, probably mid to upper 60s, wouldn't it be, Larry? Something like that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Fourth good? trip. Okay. It's done. I. Okay. What are you gonna do with the rest? You can wash it down, that? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna transfer the rest of the water from this. No, I mean this. the rest of this. You're just gonna wash it down. Yeah, yeah, it'll wash down. It won't oh, block I'll, it we'll up. Put, I'll put it in the bucket. and We'll dump it outside. Okay. Right now. No, you want to dump this first because it's gonna no, be. No, I don't. Okay. I'm dump it. <laughs> just kidding. I'll be back. I'm turning okay. off the mic. What is all this? You got grain everywhere. What is this? No, that was you. Oh, okay. It was me. My fault. Yep. Your light is off. This little light of yours.
two feet of snow and it's 55 degrees. Holy crap. Can't make up its mind, huh? There are some benefits to having uh, a little more water in the hot liquor tank than what you really need, for sure. I'll put some gloves on for this part, or at least one. Yep, snow 20, 20 feet, stout weather, for sure. Let's get another one. Okay, my mic is back on. This what? is how much grain is in this recipe. It looks like four small graves. <laughs> That's more. Four, Fresh four, graves out four, of the Four graves. That's <laughs> funny. That is pretty funny. Drop the bucket. Oops. There you go. Like dropping the mic. There. Actually, I'm very excited. I think this will be wonderful. It'll be amazing. Yep. It will be. Oh, it smells so good. Woo! It will be amazing. Man. Amazing. So amazing. Go there. Still, oh. Snow 20 feet. Ronald Brown, she must be in. Holy cow. What's that? Feet. Ronald French said, snow 20 feet, stout weather. Absolutely. Yeah, I saw that. That's crazy. Good book and some stout. Yep. Every weather is stout weather. I believe that too, Stefan. I dumped all my grain outside last time, and I woke up to 15 or so deer eating it, I know. That's yep, what, for sure. That's what's going to happen. Yep, for sure. As long as it's not coons, but they're cute too, even though they scare the crap out of me. Yep. Um, okay. Just a little bit will go. I'll just use this. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. No sticky here. Oh my heavens to Betsy, I'm awake. Loady, loady. It's beautiful out there. It'd be a great day for a walk. <sighs> Get some snowshoes, honey, and walk. Beautiful. guys it's looking amazing it is looking amazing the amazing the bear thank you sorry i would have done that it's okay i wish i could do it with my lower extremities it would tone up better um this is so yum yep larry thank you for the recipe i'm so yep. excited it exactly. smells amazing it's going to be amazing uh, Lordy. For sure. Yeah. Wish we had some of that weather here in LA, lower Alabama. <laughs> what is it? I guess Ronald's in lower Alabama. He calls it LA. Okay. Thank you, Larry. Yeah, Bama and Georgia. Yeah, 15 deer. They're scary because it's, it? um, it's Oh, with scary. all the, yeah, the, the tornadoes. tornadoes. Yeah, no kidding. That is Are very you scary. Doing okay, Ronald? Whew, not good. 
Not good at all. No, that's very scary. Yeah, I can't complain. Ohio's kind of tucked away. We feel kind of safe here. We have some stuff, but... How you doing? You all right? Yeah. Fine. Hanging in. Don't yep. hurt your arm. Yep, yep. I'm a hanging. Can and will you do a side by side with Larry's version? What's that? Um, can and will you do a side by side with Larry's version? I'd love to. Larry's got to bring it. Larry's got to come down and bring it with him, and he could. We could What's do a real side by side. Tom? Huh? What's that? Oh, nothing. We travel all over. Then we can do a real side by side. Right. Larry said, tasting, you bet, road trip. Right. See you. I still have some of his left. He still has some of his left. You're right. IFC sponge. Yep. A lot of cleaning. In the Midwest. What's that? <laughs> All right. Good job. I'm proud of you. Yeah. Getting her done same day. Check, yep. check. Yep, yep. I got the rest of the house tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, drive for three hours, have some lunch, and drive the rest of three. Right. Six hour drive ain't nothing. I've driven across across country here. Got stuck in the Rockies with all the snow and thank God for the semi that saved me. Guided me through it. Well, Thomas, that sounds amazing. <laughs> What's that? You guys are ever in the northern Kentucky, Cincinnati area, I would love to have you guys at my brewery, Braxton Brewery Company. Okay. We love that. Do you guys have food or you got a, like a food yeah, truck? I think I've had some beers from Braxton. I I've heard of it. I think I have. <laughs> Absolutely, hmm. Kyle Clark. The Midwest, where drive time is measured in hours, not miles. It can be very flat. She's a flat. And you see where you need to be in three hours, and you're like, oh, my God. Yeah. Audiobook. Um, you want to keep them entertained for a second while I go get the chiller? Yeah. Okay. I'll Do let it. them entertain each other. Do it. All right, Nick. Why would you fly? It's only a 14-hour drive. Uh, it comes me off to Milford that I sometimes miss. I would prefer flying instead of a 14 hour drive. Actually, I'm the person that loves to drive. Brian does not. Ooh, that's nice. 
I love tacos and pizza. <laughs> Three tap rooms. That's beautiful. So, um, Thomas, you like support the locals or are all the taps yours? Sorry, I'll stand here, but I then I can't see. I should have brought this in. Yep. Before now. Doing, doing, doing. It's like frozen. Oh, shoot. It's cold. Well, I, mean. I hope it doesn't snap. I'm just kidding. Nah, it ain't gonna snap. I know. It's cold, so I'll run some. And that's from Jaded, right? Yep. We gotta show everyone. This is not the, not the proper no. size chiller for this system, but it, looks it works. Small. Brian just brought in the Jaded chiller. What's hey, that? You. I said you just brought in the Jaded chiller. Yeah, the skill, the skilla. This is, you. I use this for the Anvil 10.5 and. Brusillas and all the other ones. One chiller to rule them all. All right, Larry. You take care. Enjoy your brewery visit, Thanks Larry. Thanks for being here. Thanks for taking one for the team. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for hanging you out with us today, man. You must. Much appreciated. He's going to go exercise, you know, 16 ounce. Exercise? Curls. 16 ounce curls. Yeah, I was going to say, that's what God, you're so what strong, Larry. <laughs> I know. So much willpower. How do you do it? Okay, so Thomas, he said all the, I don't know if you heard Here this, you Brian, but they have three tap rooms and plenty of food and pizza and tacos. Okay. And then. Sound um, like a day trip. Well, I asked, are they all his taps or their taps? Or, oh, they probably said, have. Um, all the taps are ours oh. except for large events. So I was wondering mm. if they, that's wonderful. Cool. And the large events will give a shout out to the local. All right. The rest of the hops right and now. the chiller. Why well, timed that perfectly? Did no, it's the, it's the chiller now. So I set a timer for forty-five minutes. Oh my gosh, y'all, you gotta try this. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's that good. You could pour this in grape nuts and eat it in the morning. Forget yep. the milk. I mean, it's so delicious. For sure. That's good. Oh, it's, it's peeing. I wondered. We'll let it pee in there. Give mommy a kiss. You know you want to. <laughs> I love you so much. You <laughs> cat, cat, cat meo again. <laughs> SJ said, had to step away. Is that the Hydra? What's that? SJ said, had to step away. Is that the Hydra? Uh, yep, uh, it's a chill. It's a skilla. Skilla. Ow. Yep, stepping. Son of a. Woo. Are you okay? No. Oh. Burn my damn fingers. Brian needs some QDs on that chiller. I know. I'm lazy. Thomas Darnell, I've been following you guys since before you guys moved to the new house and built what you're in now. Very well done. Love the content you guys are making. We missed you the last year-ish. Thank you so much. What is it? Thomas Darnell. You did not hear what I just said? I heard part of it. He's, okay. I've been following you guys since before you guys moved to the new house and built what you're in now. Very well done. Love the content you guys are making. 
we missed you the last year-ish. Well, thank here? you very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. That is so awesome. Thank you. Yep. That's so yep. awesome. My cat's meowing. He says thanks, too. What are you doing? Get down off the counter. <laughs> I know. He's you like, Daddy, you've going. been down here He's too like, long. You've been here hours Get up and on hours. the couch. Just Our cat off. is meowing at Brian. What? Our cat is meowing at Brian. That's my boy. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it looks like it's flashing. Ah! Yeah. It's wonderful. That's very clean. Woo! That's amazing. Nice. Yes, yes. Doing good. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, just switch to the jaded hide. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. you told me that. Um, and you, you're enjoying that, uh, that chiller? Jaded knows what they're, they know what they're doing with those chillers. Oh, yeah. And the copper and the whole yep, bit. Yep, sure. Mm. Yep, yep. Should be time for some more hops here in a minute. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very nice. No, Daichi, don't eat the pizza. Uh -uh. It's not for you. It's not the droid you're looking for. Return to Oz. Okay, hops time. Hmm. Oops, sorry. What is it? Oh, Columbus. Time for, hops. Time for the rest of the hops. Columbus in the Northern Brewer. Some there we go. Whoops. Whoops. Let me stir it. You can if you want. Yeah. I want. Fine by me. What, bud? What are you doing? Hmm. I definitely want to taste that in a minute. Huh? I definitely want to taste that in a minute. Yeah. You will. Are you taking another reading? Not until we're chilled down. Okay. Then we'll take one. Like one more. Yeah, it actually works really well. Um, mm -hmm. It does. It does drip a little bit. I've got so I've got an idea to um, the hood. put a a drip rail in here it's that would very light. would um, collect everything that runs because there's like on the edges here. There's a little there's a little bit of drippage. I mean, it's not it's not bad. It's not it's not like it's getting everything wet, but. Francisco says, it darn it, missed the chiller. Had to step away for a moment. Oh. <laughs> How long to chill? Um, like, that size batch will probably take... Yeah, 20 minutes. A little while, yeah. Maybe 20, maybe 20 minutes at the most. What's your thought using a hop spider? I don't mind using them. I mean, with, with, this, with this size of a, a batch, with, the, with what little hops I put in there, I don't, you know, it's another thing to clean. So it's like, you know, one of those things where... Try to be simple with as, as simple as possible. Um, yes, I do have the. I do have the link. Let me see here. Let me go here to the recipe. Where? Oh, there it is. Share. Let me see if I can let me see if I can jump into the stream here and put it on there. Come on. Hmm. Oh, it smells so good. Mm. That is the best part of brewing when you have the mm -hmm. result, you know, and you can smell yeah. it and yeah. look at it. It's so <clears throat> yep, exactly. Just need to let it sit. Hmm. 
Ciao, Kyle. Here we are. Let me know. Terry's cat. Let me know if um that comes through. Thanks, Terry. Take care. Let me know if the recipe shows up. Terry says. Yeah, thanks, I. Terry. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, let me know. Let because I don't have the the recipe is not public yet. What are you? So using? it's laminate flooring, right? Yeah. Kevin Hill. Yep. Yeah, yep. laminate flooring, Kevin Hill. The cheapest laminate flooring that I could find. <laughs> Now, I did, did have to wind up gluing glue? it. I had to glue, yeah. I had to glue, not grill the glue, but just okay. like glue. Because um, it was cinder block behind yep, it. Yep, exactly. Yep. Well, we live out in the country and our neighbors are a little ways away, so. <laughs> not far. We know our neighbors more. Yeah, I mean, they're not, they're not that far. But. We're on top of each other more than suburbia. We all know each other. Yep. We're like, did you hear that? Not shared or is deleted. Okay, let me see here real quick. Check it now to see. Let me see. Hang on. Just. It makes you put a. Put a uh, description and stuff with it. We do have some angry people. Recipe that. must have an M. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm trying here. Try it. Try it again. Wink. Link worked through. Huh? Link worked through. Oh, the link worked. Okay. It isn't shareable. You mean you can't share it yourself, or? I just tried to. Maybe that's not a good idea then. I just share. I just made it public, so hopefully it'll work now. But I don't know. Okay. Well, let's move on. Okay. Well, I'll. I have to. Cause like I said, you got, you got to put a, an image and all kinds of stuff in there. So I'll have to. I'll have to. I'll make sure it's. I'll make sure it's uh, in the description of this video, and I'll also make it public so you can search for it. And it's gonna. It's gonna be called Larry's Dragon. <laughs> Just be ready to use your biceps. Yep, I'll have to. I'll have to get on the computer and put an image and stuff in there. So. <clears throat> awesome. Oh my goodness. Back to being that kind of channel, Larry's Dragon, Francisco. <laughs> A few minutes left in the boil, what's that? Back to being that kind of channel. Uh, Larry's Dragon, <laughs> yeah, exactly. How to train Larry's Dragon. <laughs> oh, it does look like four small graves in our backyard right now. What's that? It looks like four small fresh graves in our backyard oh. right now. <laughs> That's how much crane is. Yeah, the... the uh, we're gonna have like what's a herd of deer? Is it a herd of deer? It's a herd, I think, yeah. yeah. A murder of crows. Yep. Exactly. <sighs> yeah. I'll and that's an L. I'll have to, I have, like I said, I have to go in there and I have to put like an image in it and a bunch of other stuff. So I'll make sure that it's linked in the description of this live stream, which the live stream will still be available after, after this is over. I just, you got to go in there and do a bunch of stuff to it. That they, that, for whatever reason, they make it so you can't add a recipe to the, to the public with, without an image and stuff. So I'll, I'll take an image, I'll get an image of a stout and do it. So I'll get it up there for you guys. Fun. I'll get it done.
Oh my gosh, it's so amazing. Come on, get off of there. And you said you're leaving it in there for three weeks? Something like that. Yeah, because that's what Larry was. Well, I mean, that's after it's for, after the fermentation is done, because we've got to add the bourbon and the wood chips to it. Right. So. Is that a... a what a one week marker when are we adding that well after probably after 10 to 15 days okay. of fermentation something like that cool it smells so good it's hard to stay away yep it's good stuff <laughs> smells good mm. for Amazing. sure Amazing. So amazing. Still yep, there. Exactly. The what? <laughs> oh, winding down. Ronald said, in the same um, primary fermenter. What's that? In the same primary fermenter. Yeah, I probably, well, since, I, since I've got the conical, I'll be able to dump the, right. the yeast and stuff. If you don't have a conical, I'd probably recommend dumping, the, dumping the yeast. What's it? Um, G G60 guy, th these type of beers is not nearly as critical um, to avoid the CO2. Um, Thank you so much, as, Patrick. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. It's not nearly as critical for CO2 exposure. I mean, oxygen exposure on these type of beers. Thank you. Uh, in my experience, at least. Now, I can if I want to. I could put the... Uh, I could probably put the the chips and the beer and everything in my... I have a big that big sight glass that I can, um, you know, open up and dump them in there with it oxygen-free. But I'm not too worried about it with this beer, honestly. I'll probably just put every pour the pour the <coughs> bourbon in that's been sitting in the chip that's been sitting on the chips and then put the chips in a bag and put those in there. It'll be fine. <coughs> Very nice. Yeah, stouts and stuff like that, porters and those kind of things don't really get affected mm -hmm. nearly as much with uh, as oh my like gosh, hoppy it's beers so do. So nice. <sighs> yeah. It's delish. Matter of fact, sometimes. A little bit of oxid is, oxidation is, is uh, normal in larger beers and stouts that age for a while. Mm. So. We're bo boils over. Okay. It's over, Johnny. I wondered. It felt like it. That's why I looked yep. at it. I got this spidey sense thing. That's hot. Yeah, are you okay? Yeah. You already burnt Fine. your hands no, once. I'm good. I'm good. I'm going to sanitize the pump here. Okay. How much bourbon would you add? That's what I was wondering. Uh, I'll have to look at Larry's recipe. We have to look at Larry's recipe. Larry left us, so we can't ask him. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it, it wasn't. It was just like a little bit in a mason jar. It wasn't a whole bunch. A little bit in a mason jar? Do you yeah, I was like maybe, like maybe a, a pint or something a, like that. It wasn't a ton. A what? pint? Yeah. So you mean a full mason jar? Yeah. Well, okay. You're talking about ten gallons of beer, though. I mean, you're I not understand. talking about. I understand. No, I was just trying. You said a bit in a mason jar, kind of thing. Yeah. And we're like, like a mason jar, like a pint. Where do you, did you print it out, or is it on your phone? What's that? I would like to get him an answer. Is it on your phone or is it printed out down here? What's the matter? How much bourbon? I don't know. I'll and have to go back and look at Larry's video. I don't that's know. That's why I was at. Oh, I don't know. it's from I a don't video know. that you're doing this? You memorized his no, video. No, he has a recipe, but I didn't copy the whole bourbon part of it into this recipe yet. So I got to. Did you print it out? No. Is it on your phone like a 
No. A list. Okay, no, so I, you memorized it's it. It's on the computer over there in a PDF. You but I memorized it from... I used his recipe, yeah. his PDF recipe, to input all the numbers into Beersmith. I did not put any oh, of the numbers okay. in for the, for with the, the, Beersmith. For the, for the like, other stuff. Dang, well, no, I his, his spreadsheet. His, I used his spreadsheet to input the numbers into Brewfather. I did not put any of the numbers in for anything in for the bourbon yet. Okay. I got to add that to it. Okay. Now I was just pretty amazed. Okay. I don't have it right now. <coughs> and there's that. Just enough to cover the wood chips? Question mark. Did you hear that? Huh? Just enough to cover the wood chips? So you're yeah, yeah, sure. it's pretty much, yep. Yeah, yep. pretty much. That makes sense. Hang on, I'll, I'll, I'll get it. He'll get it. <laughs> you guys are killing me. Well. Well, I'll get it. I'll get it on there. Thank you. Wow, that's amazing. Let's see. You can tell it's cooling it very well. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. it's too good. Yeah. Getting an idea here. <laughs> G60 what? guy, relax, don't worry, have homebrew. <laughs> That's right. Okay. So. It's just important. Yep, so. Um, Woodford Reserve Bourbon. Okay. And I'm trying to see how much how many how much wood chips he did in there. Soak oak chips and just enough bourbon. There you go. How many? Well, I'm trying to tell you how many oh. how much oak chips. They want to know exactly. Oak chips, four ounces of oak chips, and then 11.7 ounces of 90 proof bourbon. So four ounces of oak chips. And then 11 ounces of 90% bourbon. And then he let that steep in the jar for, let's see. And 11 ounces? 11.7. Of the bourbon. Yeah, it says, um, let the oak chips soak and these are these are um american heavy toast by the way and then let those soak for at least two weeks or longer in an airtight jar and then after fermentation's over like probably 10 15 days you know total fermentation should be just about done at that point and then add the oak chips and everything and let that sit for like three weeks american heavy toast chips. yep and then for how long Huh? For how Two long? weeks. Let sit for two weeks. getting there beautiful yep <clears throat> oh, so nice it's so amazing how that yep so cool that's the cold water yes yeah, it's, so it's not fast. even that hot yet now coming through there mm -mm. Feel it. not too bad it's nice 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 real nice <laughs> for the to transfer right. what's that i said right yep it's amazing the their chillers oh yeah they work really well sanitize this thing
Exactly. Sanitizing. Yep. Use this to transfer it in there. Oh my gosh. That's so nice. Yep, yep. I have to taste it. I'm going to put it from that to the contaminated label. Huh? Ladle. What? <laughs> the spoon we did not contaminate. Oh, okay. I have to taste it. Can't help it. Tasting. You want to taste some, right? Yeah, I'll taste them in a little bit. It's hard to do it with a ball cap on. I mean. Yep. No, I understand that. Ooh. Wow. I can tell the Columbus is in there now. Yep. Yep. No, that's Once good. Once it Ooh. settles, it'll be Man. better. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're down to 107. Yeah, maybe it's long. Maybe it's quicker than 15 minutes. Didn't take too long. Give it a little, give it a little extra stir here with the. Hey, Chris. <laughs> That's so awesome. If you want me to do it? Let me know. Yeah, we should wind up. Yeah, we should wind up right around the uh, thirteen. Right around ten and a half gallons. Oh, okay. I thought you said thirteen. No, wow. that's what I started with was thirteen. It's four, so hmm? it's been five hours. Yeah. Woo. I know. It feels like a Jerry Lewis telethon. I know. It takes a while. <laughs> you know, we should do that. We should do a brew day and raise money for a charity. Sure. Why like not? Like St. Jude's or something. Or yeah. Jerry Lewis telethon. What do you guys think about that? If us do a brew, if we do a brew day and raise money for a charity, <laughs> sure, do it. Right. Francisco said, "Love that idea." So do I. I just, if you got leverage, use it and help. Yep, absolutely. I truly don't you can, you, care you, about there me. Is act, there's actually a, a, a fundraising button on the on um, the YouTube, like in the studio that I set the stream up with. I could actually set up a fund and yeah, it would show it as I a fundraising do that. Event. Like St. Jude's. What are some of your ideas? <laughs> Kevin Hill said, I'm in. St. Jude's is so into my heart. I walked into a treatment center where my sister was going through cancer and there were a bunch of kids with cancer. Oh. We were reading a book to them, and I about fainted. Do it on National Home Brew Day. Oh, that's a great That'd idea, G60 yep. guy. Yep. Find a good Catholic charity because they won't go out of business. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, no, I'm a lover of St. Jude's. St. Jude's. Getting down there, 92 degrees now. Wow. Try to get it down in the, I think our groundwater is about 40 degrees, 40, 50 degrees, something like that maybe. So. <coughs> One priest at your church home brewed. Yeah, they drink wine too. Oh. I grew up Catholic, Catholic Episcopalian. Find a good quality, <laughs> good, good Catholic charity because it was <laughs> right. No. I know. <clears throat> sure. Not a bad idea. 89. When is National Home Brew Day? It, it just passed, I think. Uh, it's in, I think it's in November or something like that. That's what I thought. It's in the latter part of the year. Hope I can so. tell you guys, just looking at this wart, it is thick, thick. <laughs> I'm gonna be, I'll be I interested to see. I figured Francisco. I bet this is, I bet this May 6th? is 1095, 1097, something like that. It's, it's probably, it's it's up there. It's up there for sure. Larry. It's going to be high I'm test. <laughs> yeah, right. Blame it on Larry. Blame it He's on Larry. Blame it on the Larry. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Nick. 85. Yes, yes. I absolutely want to do that. Mm-hmm. For sure. 50 weight. G60 guy said 50 weight. Yeah, something like that, for mm -hmm. sure. 
It's just thick. <laughs> it's thick for sure. Let me see. I'll, let me see if I can uh, pull this up and I'll show you. Oh, it's yeah, I know it's, it's crazy. It is absolutely amazing. <clears throat> let me. Uh, I have to pause. I can bring this up here. I think you can see in the look at the world look at the whirlpool you can see you can see how thick it is just by the whirlpool I think I mean if if you can tell it could be motor oil yeah I mean look at this look I know at, it's beautiful the, that's why how, I would taste it too I look know how, it's look how thick crazy. it is crazy it's like milk <laughs> see, chocolate see it really can you see beer factory. can you guys see how thick it is it's like thick Larry's back in. Hello from Pollyanna Brewing. <laughs> Larry in the house. Look how thick. Look how thick that beer is, Larry. Larry's back. <laughs> back again. Oh my gosh. We're brewing his beer. It's not thin. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> look at that. Look how thick that is. It's awesome. It tastes so good, Larry. I tasted it like five times. That is. That is. That is some thick. Thanks, Ronald. It is amazing. You got to do this, man. Yep. It's worth the muscle getting the greens out of the house. Oh, gotcha. Getting closer. We can get down into. Hope I can, hope I can get it down to the 60s, but this is man. the fermenter is cold, so I want to get it down in the 60s so we can pitch right on it. <clears throat> I'm almost positive the fermentation is going to get going as soon as we do. Yeah, it looks great. Only on chat. I have no audio out here. Man, I just sang huh? a tribute. Larry's oh. only. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. What are you? I'm trying to do something here. Oh. <laughs> You're messing me all up. I all right, now go talk. ahead. That's so funny, Nick. Trying to steal the mouse from me. I was stealing the mouse. That's right. 74. I'm getting down there. Larry's the new Slim Shady. <laughs> yeah. How you doing? Good. Good? Okay. Yep. Good, good, good. Okay, Ronald said I have to figure out the scaling on BF for a 5G batch. Just put your recipe, just put your um put your equipment profile in there and then it'll scale it for you. It'll ask if you want to scale it and it'll scale it for you automatically. You can just feel it has pulled it down. This thing is yep. amazing. It is, yep. I mean, Imagine if did I had the it right take size 20 one. minutes? No, yeah. it wasn't that long, I don't think. No. And we don't even have the right size one. Right. That's how awesome they are. Okay, here we and go. And they dance in the background. You know? Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Your video is so funny. Anyway. Wow. 1.097, ladies and gentlemen. Holy cow. So we overshot by just a little bit. <laughs> Not bad. Which is okay. That is all right. <clears throat> it's fantastic. I can't believe people are still here with us because this is the most Crazy. boring part of the whole thing. I know it is. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> no, we're absolutely going to do a charity okay. brew day. And we'll do a doppel. How about that? Whatever. We'll do a doppel. Do a doppel of Daisy. For a charity brew day. That's right. I'm excited. Yep. <laughs> That's crazy. That's the biggest beer I've brewed in a long time for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and that's before Next, the bourbon, by the way. Yeah, well, exactly. Well, the dark chocolate raspberry Oop. 
quarter, remember that? That's probably the biggest one before this that we've ever done. Hmm. We're gonna have to bottle some and send a bottle to your paper. <laughs> you know what, that's a great idea. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, Francisco. I think perks are inevitable. Yeah, yeah exactly. Inexperienced with it. But, I have not had any experience with that. what about cat hair? Yeah, exactly. I don't want to get <laughs> a sued. A bottle of, five of live stream batches. Yep, exactly. Yeah, maybe we just add that to the current one of the current tiers. All right, we're down to 67 degrees. I think I'm, I think I'm pretty good there. Let me uh, turn this stuff off. Do anything? Hmm? No, I'm just gonna okay. spray this down so I can sanitize it, and then we'll transfer into the fermenter and sounds great. Dump the yeast. <laughs> can you move that bucket? Yes. Move this out of the way. Oh. Now comes the tricky part: transferring to the fermenter without spilling it. <laughs> right. Well. Now nah, I'll be fine. Dang, this should be easy. Don't lock them, it's fine. Oh. He's fine. Okay. Let's see. Wanna mop the floor with our beer. You're right, exactly. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> this will give it a bunch of aeration too while we're at okay. it. Okay, I'll go over there and look at this stuff. Okay. Okay. You sure you don't want the brakes on? Huh? I'm fine. Cat hair is a secret ingredient. <laughs> That's true. Larry said, undrinking an imperial milk stout. Oh no. Aged <laughs> in a 10 year Templeton. Rye barrels with coffee. Oh my gosh. I'm going to put you suck. That's it. <laughs> you suck. Yeah, exactly. He can't hear us, so. Yeah. Son of a Larry. There you go, Larry, because you can't hear us. Exactly. <laughs> Francisco says it's all about getting the pH right to dissolve the cat hair. He's really into that. That's right. Get you another couple points of efficiency. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't make any. Yeah, right. I didn't make any pH adjustments, which was interesting. I know. With dark beers, I generally don't have to do much. Oh, really? Yeah, I this cat. Sure. I mean, I didn't even take a reading. I'm so confident in. That's how, because yeah. of the water that. Yeah, it's RO water. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Then I added some stuff to it, but yeah, I mean, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm so confident in how that water is that I don't even, I don't even bother sometimes to take a pH reading. <laughs> what? You should call it Dragon Whispers Stout or something. Dragon <laughs> Whispers. Yes, Bourbon Stout. That's funny. That is great. Careless Whispers. Can you turn off the faucet over there? Yeah. I put yes, and so Larry can have some options. <laughs> I had to type it. He's hearing impaired right now. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Woo. Good Dude, stuff. Where's my car? That's can like you turn amazing. that water pump off? There's the green, yeah. the green light there. Yes. Do it now. Perfect. It's teeny All tiny right. writing. Yep. Exactly. Wow. All righty. <clears throat> now, okay, precious cargo for sure. Yeah. 
Look at that. It the foam is all the way to the top. Holy moly, that means it's living already. Yeah, it's right. like it's alive. It. It's alive. I'm assuming you guys saw that on camera there. The foam. <laughs> we had foam action. Yeah, exactly. So put this put the lid on. The lid strap. Strap her down. We're definitely having a charity event for yep. this one. Love it. <laughs> All right. You're going to be sleeping like a baby. I know. Day. All right, so we got our two liter starter here. Let's go ahead and pour that in. You can see all the yeast in the bottom there. Look at that. Look at that big old yeast cake in the bottom there. Wow. Beautiful. Get it all sloshed up here. This will be some happy yeast here in a little bit. For sure. All right, that's that. Spray this down really good. Oh. All right. Why not descent before pitching? So they're, oh, I could, they're I could, wondering I could, about I, decant. Yeah, that's there's a thought. you know there's a lot of active yeast cells in the in that. Uh, it's so funny. In that I slurry. Was thinking that too. Huh? Nothing. Go ahead. Decant. There's a lot of active yeast cells in that slurry. Yeah. And so I prefer just to put the whole thing in. If if I'm going to decant, what I would do um, is I would actually chill that starter so that all the yeast as possible could drop out. But the other thing that occurs with that is you're kind of putting the yeast to sleep, which it doesn't defeat the purpose of the yeast starter. It just, it retards it a little bit because of the fact that you, you've chilled it down and the yeast kind of go dormant and then you drop them in a bunch of wort and you ask them to tear into, into wort again. Whereas if you put your starter in there right at the, right towards the end or even at the height of fermentation in the starter, the yeast are active and they're gonna be much more aggressively eating the sugars. So that's the reason for that hmm. for me. So and it won't hurt anything. I mean, it's, you know, two liters. It, it didn't dilute much, if any at all. So it's all good. Very cool. Great question. Yep. Drop the spunding valve down to just about nothing. And okay. I, I, honestly, I won't even put a blow off, blow off tube or anything on this. I'll just let it, I'll just let it ferment and it'll hold positive pressure with the spunding valve. Probably won't even move the needle, but. It'll, it'll ferment and it'll be fine. So. Okay. Relax, don't worry, have a homebrew. Right. Or change the color. What's that? Or change the color. No. I mean, you're talking about a 10 gallon batch. It might make it purple. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You're talking about a 10 gallon batch and yeah. you're talking about like two liters, not even a half. But that's a good question. Barely a half a gallon. I mean, uh, you know. When would it change the color though? Um, if you if you did a starter that was like maybe that's leaking by the way. Uh, um, if you did a starter and you had like maybe a yeast slurry from uh, a darker beer, okay. and you had a bunch of dark, you know, yeast like a, some leftover wort from that in there, then it may change the color. But for the most part, it really doesn't. I mean, and the funny thing about it is like that something that tells you that. Is, uh, he said not on this one. Right? Yeah. What's that? Not on this no, one. No, not on this one. So here's the interesting thing, though. Um, if you guys know who uh, Basic Brewing is, they've been around forever and a day. They actually did a watermelon wheat beer. And here's the crazy thing. Oh, that's right. They took watermelon and actually extracted the liquid from the watermelon. So, I mean, we're talking about red watermelon juice. Yeah. 
when it got done fermenting, the yeast had eaten all the sugars and everything in it, and it was literally, it was Blue? almost clear. Oh, clear? It, it had just a pink hue to it a little bit. Oh. That was it. But oh, it completely, that. yeah, so I mean, wow. the yeast do crazy things with the sugars and stuff, so. Yeah. Yep. I think it's split the mutant malts only because I had enough of both on hand, not okay. enough of one. Okay, whatever. Okay. Yep. Uh, no, no, not not at all. I mean, I, I'll keep I'll keep a little bit of positive pressure on it, and plus I, I also use the firm cap in the boil. So, I mean, it's gonna What's it's also gonna keep clogging? the crowd the huh? What's a cross and clogging? If that means split. He's talking about like the the foam from the fermentation what, okay. clogging up the, the spunding valve. Okay. There's I mean it's it's probably the, the wort is probably like down here somewhere. All the time? the I don't know. what you saw on camera with the foam <laughs> the foam was up quite a ways, but yeah it'll be fine. I mean if and if. I start having a little bit of trouble with Krausen, you know, like starting to come out or something like that. Then I'll just crank up the, just just screw the spunding valve in a little bit to pressurize it, and that'll push the to Krausen keep it down. Back yep. down. Yep. Okay, because you need that. Yep. Okay. Exactly. Cool. Good so. question. Yep. Absolutely. Well, guys, oh. I mean, I, I know a bunch of you have been here the entire we time with us, and it's been sixty-two people here. That's absolutely so awesome. amazing. I mean, I know a bunch of people bailed at some We're point. We're gonna but fall down and go to sleep. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> But I really appreciate all the super chats, all the all the chats, all the questions. I mean, it, it's always yeah. it's always so much fun to do it's this like because a fan. yeah, because you get questions and everything, Ross, and it's just fun to talk Ross. about the process and yeah, yeah, all that stuff. So certainly do appreciate. We're not we're not gonna you want you guys watch this clean the mash tun. We're not gonna make you make you watch this clean the the boil kettle out. So we'll <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely thank uh, you, Francisco. We'll keep you posted on the on the charity brew day. We'll we'll do that for sure. Yes, we'll definitely do absolutely. that. We may do it around the the. Um, Thank you, Nick. The, Thank you, The Ronald. homebrew day or the national homebrew day. Thank you, Jenna. But, uh, yeah, I didn't absolutely, say that right. absolutely amazing. Everybody's everybody's awesome. Thank you so much, and we are going to say good night and probably Blackwood crawl Bruce. into bed. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> All right, everybody. Take be care. Be good to each other and uh, be safe out there. Take care.